Hulk, then he'd be here. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk fan club. We are the uh, incognitos. What are we? The um, uh, avertidmentia, ivermectin. That, what are we? Intelligentsia. Oh, yeah. Intelligentsia. That's what Oh, we intelligentsia. Hell yeah. Yeah. It was nice oh of Nunta God. to put on that Dude, voice. Dude, the of quotes his. from those members. Ooh. I can't wait oh, to talk about man. that. Oh, these it was like females. I was staring into a goddamn mirror. <laughs> oh yeah, no, dude, I hated it so much because I just related to it. God, I was like, this is. I've entered into femoid space. <laughs> In the wise words of Sienna Fuegonassis, we often uh, hate those who remind us of ourselves. Exactly. Man, I just, you know, I just want to call women females, but now, now they've exposed that. I, I think I'm not able to get. In a few months' time, we won't be able to address them at all. Old betters alone. You will not be able to. It's like in the olden days in kingdoms where you weren't allowed to touch someone of royal blood, right? You won't even be able to refer to a woman. Yeah, you and do the thing where you touch them and it goes, tss, and you're like, ah! Ah, ah, ah. Uh, oh, that means that the first sound they're going to hear is me making noises. Well, this time I managed <laughs> to do it all though. without failing something. I'm kind of proud of myself. You can those happy ghosts well, we can... floating around. Oh, yeah, that's right. We can begin the episode with me making weird noises. And, of course, Fringy can bookend this uh, stream with him uh, with his flump noises. Fringy's um, not here at the moment. He's going to grab Shad because they're, they're in Australia. He's going to run down. Mm -hmm. uh knock the chad's door because you know it's australia i, I think they might even be closed. like it might even just go to a different room in the house because like, australia i'm pretty sure is not a country right yeah, it's like a street yeah. or a house i can't it i think <laughs> i think so i think it's a country it's a that is a street, it's street country <laughs> yeah yeah that's how rhode island got its name because it was just a road and then they built an island around it the big reveal was uh shad was doing like a late night stream and in the background of his camera you could see this green guy walking past and it was like wait a minute Wait, green? that's a that's a bird. Yeah, what's that big green bird doing? Uh, well. Bring his back. Where's Shad? Hey, look, all right, I'm I'm tired. Okay, I don't have all the answers. Oh, not even oh, one right. answer. That's an odd way to answer that question. That's fair enough, though. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, what what things oh, we talked about Dios for about mio. five ten minutes? You know what I'm gonna mention is is that new movie that's come out, Black Adam. Anybody here mm -hmm. looking to see Black Adam or has seen it? Adam I of saw color. a little bit of it. What last we? Night. Afri it's African Adam. Is what I you don't to be. care because I am a gate. I'm a maverick. I'm gonna call him. Ooh. I well, it's Teth Adam Black actually. Adam? If you were Black a true Adder? fan, you'd know that. Black um, Adder. Black oh, I love Black Adder. Anyway, you said you watched a bit of it. What did you think? What you saw? Um, Me? Some... <laughs> no. You know. Okay, I was making sure that I just I wasn't was... being set up to fail. I was annoyed by the fact that The Rock didn't have an accent. It was really stupid. Like, there's some stupid shit. Oh, he's totally like, just it... playing himself. Like, he doesn't... Yeah. I don't want to be too mean. Totally... He's Because he's clearly trying to play some form of a character. I just... Uh, uh -huh. He was not... Mm. He's. If I were to compliment Black Adam, it wouldn't be because of him. No offense, to The Rock. <laughs> like you, you were there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I actually. Uh, it was weird. I when I came out of the cinema, I was like, "Hmm, I didn't hate that." Huh. Yeah. Weird. Like in the beginning, it made me laugh. This kid was like, "Well, I think it was him as a young kid or whatever." He's like, "We don't have to be slaves, Dad." And he just swiped this jewel and ran off, and I'm like. Kid, you have to have a plan before you do yeah. something that's stupid. <laughs> oh, I was just like, well, so he's dead then. <laughs> and then he, I think he was, right? Find he, your death warrant with your jewelry. They were going to kill him, but then he teleported or something. It's very strange, the oh origin. Oh my god, don't spoil it for us. I'm sorry. We have to... Oh my goodness. But, this um, is a spoiler-free zone. A lot of people making fun of Black Adam for being camp and goofy. Um, I... I think that's probably fair. I, I I would have just called it cringe. There's lots of cringe in the film. I would have uh, just mm -hmm. called it cringe. The the part particularly where they sort of ape um a Mexican standoff sort of moment. That part was not only really bad for like special effects, but what are you doing? Ugh. You'll know what I mean if you've seen it. Um, but we might we might just cover it because I find it really interesting in terms of where's the DCEU going next. And yeah, I get the impression. Mm -hmm. 
um, like before I wish it, it was, out. I wish the answer to that was the garbage can. <laughs> just I fucking hate the DTU. I hate it. I mean, yeah, it's terrible, I but they're like never they going to stop bottle. trying to make money about it. You know, they're never going to stop trying to make yeah, money from it. I am fascinated that this is where we're at now, like the next era of the DCEU. And uh, funnily enough, I think that uh, Piers Brosnan as Doctor Fate was kind of cool. It was kind of fun. It was a yeah, long character there like that was people. interesting. So, wouldn't mind talking about that too. Um, though I don't think I'd recommend the film if anyone's wondering about that. I, I, I don't know if I want to go that far. <laughs> like, yeah. The San Francisco Chronicle film reviewer uh, said it was possibly the worst movie ever made. I <laughs> The way he wrote it, uh, his opening line was, the film doesn't deserve a bad review because that would imply it was a movie oh. instead of something else. Oh. It was like, Man, like, So it sounded to him like it was just hollow, just completely pointless. Well, so the, th the impression that I, I get, because um, I've yet to see it, the impression that I get about like what Black Adam is going to be is like, bad in the way that films used to be considered bad like with thin plots you know or like some yeah. stupid elements, as opposed to sort of the chasm where we're at now <laughs> like for how bad superhero yeah. movie can get it kind of did you feel know? like a, uh, it should have come out in phase two of the marvel cinematic universe right that, whatever that may mean you know what we'll we'll try and get some people to see it so we can all talk about it because it's a weird one it is mm -hmm. a weird film there's some there's some humor in it as well, where I was just like, um, pretty sure that's ripped from, you know, I, you yeah. know what, yeah, you know Terminator what? 2. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely Terminator 2. Uh, it's really hard to separate that out. Oh, and the kid, the kid's acting, I've seen people complaining about it, he was awful. Um, yeah. I, I feel bad for pointing it out about child actors, but this one was noticeable as hell. I was like, ah, uh, when he did like... There's a part where he delivers like a big, big old rousing speech near the end of the film, and I was just like, "Stop, stop talking! I beg you, please, just say one word. Just go like, we'll, we can do it. That's all you need to do." Because, uh... anyway, <laughs> we've got to be fair. I can't even waste time talking about anything else because we've got three whole episodes of She-Hulk, and my God, the last one is dense. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watching these three episodes is the longest month I've spent in my entire life. Yeah. Uh... Well. She-Hulk episodes might be dense, but do you know what is not dense? What's that? This dick? It, it's this thing you need to show for me. <laughs> it's the what? It's, the, it's this thing you need to show for me. Oh, right. I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a video done, like, maybe, like, tomorrow. I did the copyright check and everything, and I was able to, uh-uh. So, like, after EFAT, I'm going to be, like like rendering it and finishing it and if all goes well it'll upload tomorrow can you believe that can you believe that shit that's know, insane right? that's uh, nuts it'll be two and a half hours hmm. what is this madness okay. what ab absolute madness insanity this is the regs bluesy he's not the dense he's floofy very nice yes to rub your face very against important. it that you won't be yes. hurt it is the Rags 2.0 plush from Makeship. There are 15 days left, and after that, it is gone forever. So please click the link. Uh, where where is the the link? I don't have I don't have this kind of power. Is it in the? Oh, it's in the top of the thing. Look at Whoa. you go. See, this is why you pay the big bucks. But uh, I re I would really appreciate if everyone gave a look at it. It looks great. It's a little bit different than the first gen one. He's got his little uh, uh bottle of uh, make the movies better. And he's got a really great expression. He's all loungy. He turns out great. And um, you will see him pose next to the Rags 1.0 plush uh, in a video that may or may not be releasing tomorrow. Probably will. But who knows? I don't want to promise things. But it's cool to see him next to each other. And of course, um, there, yeah, again, uh, appreciate anyone who gets them. I would really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh... Rags or dog bites? No, Rags. The, the official Rags main channel. Two and a half fucking hour video. We're doing it, boys. Long boy. It's happening. It's happening. We're making um, that. What are we? Friends. Making friends. We're making friends. I would say that's true, making yeah. Friends. So making we friends. will remind you making about green. this wonderful little plushie here and there. you got some time left, but you know, when it starts to close, it's like, oh dear. Every second that goes is a second that you will not be able to acquire again mm -hmm. later in the future. It is a very limited terrifying. time offer. It will be terrifying. Yeah. If you don't Wonderful. buy it, then you you are a you 
Mm -hmm. God. Well, I got mine. I'm gonna, gonna yeah. give them a that is good. Up. You're not one Likewise. of those. You're not one of those. Likewise. So that's good. I'm doing yeah, my part. always come out when I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, if fuck. you can make, if you have 15 days to make some amount of money, so if you can do that, then this could be yours, and you could put it next to uh, uh, Mahler and Fringy. I hope Those someday are... EFAP starts scheduling good. streams so I can listen from the beginning. I try very hard to start them at 7 p.m. BST Saturday every single week. Just rewind, nigga. We, <laughs> we start <laughs> them like every week at 1 p.m. Central. Yeah, it's always the same. For, we've I been just... doing that for, I think, literal years. Literally is. I think you're right. Yeah, I just don't put them up before going live. That's the one thing I don't do, which I don't know if I should do. I've never really known if I should be doing that. Um. Mm. Anyway, yeah. listen, anyway. I don't want to delay our, our wonderful guest from able to talk about a show they very much enjoy. I feel bad. I'm like, oh gosh. He's a good man. He's a good man. So, good um, good wonderful man. to have you lot back. Can't say that um, this is going to be easy. <laughs> this is, and it's going to be progressively harder, too, because the first episode is cringe. The second one is like, ugh. And then the third one is just, <laughs> there's no words. It was a nightmare. And so I was uh, not expecting it. I suppose we should get started, and I'll 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 set it up by saying the last time we covered She-Hulk, uh, precious precious chat, you'll know that we talked about a wedding, and it, and there was just this guy who was perfect in every way, shape, and form, telling uh, our main character how perfect she is, and uh, very satisfying to watch. And then she threw up, and then she beat someone up. Remember all that? That was another episode where it was just like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> We've got. This episode, which is possibly the most filler episode of the whole season, uh, they really it waste with, time. It begins with a a, a downwards um, viewing angle of a toilet, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> cinematic language yes. for this show is a toilet. That's kind of a compliment. Uh, that's true. A toilet is, is it serves a very important societal function. That yeah. is very true. There's yeah, utility to a toilet that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus it's too it's nice a of a toilet. <laughs> oh, she gets that thing. Hitchcock. Because you hit your cock on the rim when you're pooping? What do oh, you mean? No. no. I think it was a Hitchcock movie when they first, in the, <gasps> first, Psycho. the first time in cinema, yeah, they showed a flushing toilet. Which, that's yeah, right. to be honest with you, cinema has never been the same right. since. They kind of ruined it. <laughs> that's right. I think it was the first flushing toilet. That's what we call degeneracy, I, okay. Speaking of degeneracy, I'm glad you brought that up because I think, and I, I've heard this, I don't know if it's true, if Fred and Wilma Flintstone mm -hmm. were the first couple to be shown in bed together on TV. Oh my God, really? I think so. It's, that that is hot. what I've heard. So it, first off, it is hot because if it's drawn, that makes it even hotter uh, as opposed to the real thing, of course. But that's what I've heard, so I don't know if that's real. But maybe someone could uh, you know, tell me I'm wrong or that I'm... Uh, right, or that I'm just handsome and pleasant to be around, but we can carry on with our toilet show. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's just good to know these facts, I think. It keeps going, you know. Um, so, what else can you say? We get a montage that lasts real fucking long. It's like, yeah, she showers, <laughs> she dating. puts on music, she gets dressed, she drinks, she he arrives, they go for like food and, and like a drink, she did they go home, uh, then they're texting while she's in a meeting, and then they're close, but then no, and then they're another date, and then they see a movie, and then they finally fuck, and it's like, okay, fine. <laughs> this is this is responsible this... dating. You only enter a woman's abode or domicile. After the third um, date. Or, yes, after the third date. It is, it's a, that is the Disney-approved amount of time that you need. And Am, am I right? That bullshit. <laughs> there, there was no, uh, there wasn't even like a kiss until that third date either, right? Yeah, I think or so. Or was there a kiss on the second date? Well, Disney goes zero to sixty really quick. No, yeah, no kissing like, or retouch. You straight. You, the the night you kiss him is you. You better be fucking him. I think the crazy right. shit about this is like we waste so much time and then we skip through an entire relationship. It's like, why didn't you have him being built up through the season so that it actually matters when he. Steals her blood without her knowledge, by the way, which I thought was hilarious. How do you do that? How do you? How, how do, do you he... do that? <laughs> how do you puncture yeah. the skin 
to didn't wake her like, up. Dr- didn't bother her. Oh, they had a... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Without waking her up, I don't know. Because, look, I know lots of ways to steal women's blood without, you know, <laughs> oh, of their course, consent. Uh, that's <laughs> why we've had you all today. We all, have our, we all have our favorite methods, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Me and a friend of mine oh. had a theory that she, they, she he collected her blood going down on her when she had her period. Oh, no. <laughs> because, oh, because, it, because it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense the other way. <laughs> I mean that. I mean, logistically, I assume that that would actually happen. I assume that She-Hulk menstruate. Well, I guess it's only Jen in this instance. Would it be green? We do have a vampire later <laughs> in the episode, so thematically, <laughs> it does line up. It's not well, that far fetched. Really. Oh. Now you, you make the, it everybody came in. You make it everybody vomit in chat. Okay, we gotta stop. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to garlic you. Oh. Um. Yeah, and so Bringy, how do you feel about the blood question? I'm not talking about that. He's not a vampire. <laughs> Very right along. Very right along. Uh, but wait, is but this does bring into question if Jen, in her human form, is she invulnerable like She Hulk is essentially? Well, is so she, well, remember in, in uh, the last episode, she got punched by Titania, super duper strong. Yeah, she Titania seems invulnerable. Flying, and she was fine. Oh, okay. Uh, Bru- so it's, Bruce is. It really is a set. Bruce got hurt. Remember, Bruce, yeah, Bruce got, got hurt in the car crash. Fish. And She's... started bleeding. Yeah, but they just pretty, ignored oh. the fact that effectively a sledgehammer swinging into her face would would destroy the skull of a normal yeah. human being. Uh, excuse you, this is a fun lawyer show, so that's not what happens in fun lawyer shows. Also, Neither of those two things are true. Just <laughs> so like, why would you lie to me like that? <laughs> so her green form, her green giant form with the large feet, that's just aesthetic, purely. There's no actual utility oh, to uh, her being large and green i think you're right yeah because i'm pretty sure social she, element right i'm pretty sure she still has the stress well because they imply she doesn't right in the first episode where it's like you gotta she hulk up and help those people and it's like couldn't she just help them normally um well, maybe, maybe she, she keeps have... her in vulnerability but doesn't have her strength maybe i don't know which is confusing yeah it's, it's a confusing thing that you have yeah. to yeah or i guess yeah Oh, no. you guys made a big mess. You're looking for consistency. I'm that's sorry. Not that, that's not real. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, after the end of that montage, she sends him a message saying, that was fun, I can't stop smiling, and then he doesn't reply, and she's getting incredibly upset about that. And I was just, I remember when I first watched this, I was like, you're not serious that this is the plot line. He fucks a guy and he doesn't call back. Like, yep. oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's a woman. Yeah, she's like, a woman I, in I, a I will, I, show. Guys can be very, very clingy after they sleep with someone. They could, like, they, then they're the one texting. Cra- this is. Well, yeah, and legend. if it were that, I'd be just as pissed. I'd be like, this. why is this. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you sleep with a guy and, and he never responds to you ever again, and he took your it, blood. And he took and he took your blood. <laughs> he took those Some, cheeks. He's up to no good. Okay, he is up to uh-huh. no good. That is, yeah, that's one of those red flags. Uh, red because of blood. That's how that works. Red because that's ab- yeah. absolutely. Uh, so yeah, she goes to work, and the fucking first thing we get is like, oh, you didn't tell me you were nominated for female lawyer of the year. <laughs> 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 Wearing the most clown outfit I've ever fucking seen. I just, I was just like, God, the show is such a joke. Like, <laughs> she's been awful. <laughs> she's been actively awful as a lawyer, but she's winning the the female lawyer award. If anything, this is a damning indictment of all female lawyers in this universe <laughs> she that she rises all. to the top. She was better than the rest. And, uh, yeah. Imagine how bad they must be. The only thing she seems to have done is win one parole hearing. Everything else was done by other lawyers. Yeah, and that one parole hearing was an absolute disaster. Like, uh, it was really bad. They literally portaled in their witness, who then became a criminal and ran away. <laughs> like, yeah. And then she represented him the next week or yep. whatever day or whatever in mm-hmm. a court of law. Some people believe that may have caused problems. Remember, today. He kept like talking about sending what's his name to like a hell dimension. The the sorcerer guy. Oh magician. yeah, either that or just trap him in the mirror dimension. It's chill. It's yeah, because I guess that's like Wong's priorities. It's not like Wong is very dutiful. Like mm-hmm. it actually very much by the book. <laughs> well, I mean, from what we got of it, it did seem like his main problem was how he's upset and jealous that the guy is operating. Yeah, not that it's like because unsafe and shit. We just do whatever we want with characters, despite their pre-established traits. Yay. 
Well, you see, this mm -hmm. is a different format. It's a different genre. It's a different creator. They should be allowed to do whatever the fuck, okay? Shouldn't be so critical. That's such a weird argument, isn't it? It's a different genre. It's like, it's the same continuity. Yeah, I guess they didn't realize that serious characters exist in comedies as well. Yeah, exactly. Or in this universe. They actually provide a really good jumping off point. You guys remember Idris Elba in The Office? Quite serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, she's like distracted, I guess. And she's like, oh no, you're not going down a rabbit hole on that intelligentsia site, are you? And then she's like, what? No. I don't care what a bunch of losers say about the odd line. They can't even say it to my face because they know they'd get Hulk smashed. I find that utterly <laughs> bizarre. Like, it's just a scene. It, it, I, I think this, this might be, like, one of the most insecure shows that I've ever seen, yeah. like, in my I life. I don't know what yeah. would be in the... Yeah, I don't know what would compete with it. This show is reeking like, of insecurity and this need the, to self-validate. There are so many scenes in the show that are, like, written for Twitter... And, like, just think about, like, that scene. They couldn't say it to me, a fictional character, because I would beat them up. Like, what is that? I don't know. They would never insult me because my reaction to that would to be using to them. Like, she's violence. fictional. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like when people on Twitter would be like, ah, ha, ha, got him. It's like, she's made up. Like, what? <laughs> well, not to mention, <laughs> she's, not real. she's already packaged in the justification. Like, so you're telling me you'll kill them if they say it to your face. They should probably say it yeah. online, then. Isn't well, yeah. that toxic I don't masculinity? Blame a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she's the one who's displaying the toxic masculinity, if anything. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what she said, yeah. It's hypocritical. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I got you. All right, all right. Crush, kill, destroy whenever I am criticized. Um, which, yeah, it's... Well, I say that, obviously, the, the people we're talking about in this universe are people who make a site where they're just like, she's a, she's a female. That's evil. We gotta stop it. <laughs> well, right, because you get the big bombardment of all that in episode 9. Yeah, we'll get to so much. <laughs> As as we'll get there, it's like, dude, the places we're gonna go, chat, oh my god, you're not places ready. Places we'll go. The chasms, the abysses, the, yeah. the depths to which we Dr. must Dr. Seuss is rolling over in his grave. Um, and so, yeah, we got another, like, montage of her just being like, man, you won't call me back. Wah. It's mm. like, yeah, yeah, okay, just keep it. Um, and then she gets a call. Emil Blonsky's inhibitor has malfunctioned, and they can't check with him because they've allowed him to be without any internet connection, like, off the grid, essentially. So if ever his... So they can tell whether the inhibitor is working or not, but they can't contact him in any way, shape, or form because that wasn't stipulated at all, that he has to be in a place where he can be contacted within a certain amount of time. Right? That is absurd. He is abomination. Yeah. And so they he have to a... send someone to check if he's abomination. <laughs> it made a ton of sense to me that, that they would have an inhibitor that presumably works off of a cell signal with no cellular service. I mean, that, that was perfectly reasonable. That gets well, yeah, even dumber as fuck yeah. in like five minutes from now, but we'll get to that. I mean, you, you'd think because it's the government, they would have like overhead like surveillance, like helicopters flying over his compound every few you hours imagine. or something. A drone Especially or two, just because it's parked, this yeah. government. It's this fictional government that has a giant facility for yeah. housing um, super villains, superheroes that when, when uh, spoiler alert, when they show up to arrest She-Hulk or whatever, they've got like pulse rifles that will presumably be a danger in some yeah, way like to... Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, otherwise indestructible things like abomination can be shackled by technology but they don't have they don't have a little bit of money to like you know they don't even have, have anybody they, check they, on anything they don't even have drones they, <laughs> they yeah have. for anyone who's wondering they call jen because he needs muscle basically and it's like well but he's the government and he says yeah but there's no resources to spare like, for, no, for abomination? abomination. <laughs> Come on. I, I assume you could move around a few. You just you know, it's, it's, and... it's half it's a day's work, to... too. It's not even like you go there and check. You just check. It's a tick or a cross, basically. Um, and some, yeah, somehow the government is just now this guy. <laughs> it's like, that's all they got, okay? Um, absolutely fucking ridiculous but whatever fine this is the fate of a it's only gonna get worse for abomination okay guys i'm sorry in every way you can imagine mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so i think it's absurd that they would have set him up in such a way that he doesn't he's not allowed any wi-fi you'd think especially in this day and age for in universe like nick was saying they could get wi-fi anywhere um 
not just like in general, but also set it up any way they want. I would assume satellite, yeah, internet. Um, so I, I don't I don't know. It's hard to believe, especially because th- what even year is this now in, in universe? Uh, like 2024 or five, I think. And they've comboed up with like Stark technology, Wakandan technology. Oh yeah, because everything was more technologically Based. advanced even at the beginning. Like even in Iron Man, there's you know there's a bunch of like the the suit, right? Like the suit is not something that's achievable now. There's like, always been future tech. Now, allegedly, that, we attitude. don't know what they're hiding from us. Not with that attitude. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's weird too because um, is is this not like a government mission now that she's does she decide something? She's like going as as muscle to possibly prevent a supervillain from annihilating people. You know, it's just so casually done. It's just like, well, who cares? And this guy is going to bring her along because I guess that's just how things work. Whatever. Well, treated well, like. Well, I mean, she woo-hoo. she should be there. Like she should be there as his attorney. Um, although. It shouldn't have been the government calling her as his attorney to let her know. It should have been him calling her saying, oh, government's coming to my house. Uh, I need my attorney present. That, I mean, that's how that should have gone. But I mean, her being there isn't, isn't that weird. Her, him then relying on the attorney who's invested in the client and represents the client's interest in all things to save him from the client is exceedingly stupid like it's a, yeah. it's like the government imagine uh you know you there's a suspected murderer and the government wants to go like some guy's supposed to go search his bathroom and the attorney is there and it's like look if this guy gets out of hand and tries to stab me with a coat hanger i'm gonna need you to back me up the attorney <laughs> the attorney's like yeah <laughs> don't worry fam i got you like what what are we talking about this is oh, oh God, sorry i hate this show i hate it well, hey, you're only gonna. We're getting all the bad stuff out of the way, right? It gets better in the. Uh... Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, the last episode is. It's, uh, it's only uphill from here. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. I'm excited. You're excited. Oh, he arrives at Emil Blonsky's place, do some abomination wrangling, I guess. Um, and hey, there's the Jolly Green Giant joke. That's that's something, right? Yeah. 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 That's, that's, a, and... <laughs> that's something. Uh, it was a joke. Vaguely self-aware, I guess. Yeah, uh, it turns out Emil has not turned into, quote-unquote, I guess I should say apparently hasn't turned into the Abomination. It's just a glitch. And again, I want you to think of Abomination, and then I want you to think of Emil Blonsky being the character who, and it's, it's thanks to channels like Jay Longbones and others that I, I'm even remembering this, because like some of this stuff is just been so long ago that I need to rewatch it to actually understand, but he's not a nice person. Yeah. Oh, you you might remember in the the Incredible Hulk. He's a, he's a bit of a meanie. Yeah, you could say that. Um, you yeah, know, ego driven. He's, he's not very nice. Power he, hungry. He, he wreaks a lot of havoc in uh in in New York. Happily yeah. kills several people. That's, fun, people. that's yeah. a fun joke. Is that he has changed? All, ah, <clears> right. <throat> he's changed from somebody who his pure motive was that he wanted to have a fight and to prove how strong he was. And he was willing to cause that much damage for absolutely no cause. Like, and now look at him. He's reformed. He's yes. good now. I'm He's sure it's not a really... yes. and... <laughs> We're I mean, Given, given that he even broke clothes. out of prison. Broke out of prison to go to a fight club. And but we, we pinned all that on Wong. <laughs> like, that and was, then Wong, that ran was away. Wong. Yeah, And then Wong ran away and he was never apprehended for that. Um, still fling justice. If you see this man, please dial your local law enforcement. So yeah, the man who would he shoots dogs just for making noise. He'll like beat up anybody who's just getting in his way. That's and, just like, wow, hyper. that's an evil. That's, kills, that's, evil. that's how yeah. you know he's super evil. Um, you guys, this, 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 the, his, the reason his inhibitor went off because his favorite chicken, Silk Feather, was stuck in a fence, and he wanted to save it. So he got shocked. Okay. He doesn't seem like the sort to have an electric fence to keep his chickens in. Nor a favorite that chicken, doesn't, but I, well, doesn't maybe. sound you know, very. The thing about Tim Roth's performance is like he comes off. There's some parts where he comes off very sarcastic, and I'm thinking, is Tim, does Tim Roth not give a fuck, or is he going to? He be must not give a fuck. Abomination, like yeah, that's why I figured. Like he just doesn't give a fuck. Like, Clearly, by the finale, we figured that out. He was that Tim Roth's <laughs> performance was just him not give, not caring. But it's like just weird performance beats like that. I'm just like, wait, 
I think you should do something with this. I always assume maybe... they've been promised more. Like, it's like, oh, Tim, if you do this series, which is a bunch of bullshit, it'll take like a few days, uh, we'll get you into that, the next Hulk movie or something. Mm -hmm. I always which I'm about sure that. everybody's more excited for than ever. Um, um yeah. <laughs> well, I'm very excited for the next Hulk movie after the new Hulk character has been introduced. Ooh. Oh yeah, Hulk Scar. <laughs> yeah, that's that's quite a tease, isn't it? Hulk fan because, Scar uh, is joining the MCU. We'll show and, you what he looks like nobody eventually. Nobody was happy. Nobody was happy about it. No. <laughs> Not a single person. Um. So then. Jen's about to leave, and other guy has already left. There's a reason why they make him leave in a hurry and not her. But then there's some guy who's like a bull, and some guy who's definitely not a matador. And they they are fighting, and they happen to destroy Jen's car in the process, so she is forced to stay here now. And I remember when I found Thank that out, I was like, oh god, we're spending the whole episode here, aren't we? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to learn more sucks. about this incredible place, and don't you want to... You know what? What if Josh calls back? You know that's you know that's really important, back. guys. Yeah, that would progress the plot or whatever. Why doesn't a boy like me? <sighs> <laughs> so um, all he wanted was my blood. He sees this guy called Man Bull, and and he just goes, "I'm Man Bull. I'm a weird lab experiment. Don't ask." And I had a thought when he said that. I was like, "Uh oh." You know. Uh oh. We've kind of hit the point now where, like, there used to be a bit of a, well, let's, let's call it a decent focus, a vested interest in continuity to some degree, only to let, like, bits and pieces through. Um, sometimes big pieces, I'm not going to deny it. Like, you know, in phase one, two, and three, yeah, they'd be like, kind of just like, like oof, you, you fucked that up, oh, game. fucked that up. But um, you'd even get, and this is really crazy, sometimes you'd get films that try to repair it. Sometimes oh. they try to put things back together where other films pull, pull them apart. And you're like, okay, cool. I would call the world cohesive to some degree, at least at some point. I think mm -hmm. everybody would pick a different time, but that's totally fine. Um, it is impossible to describe it that way now, and it kind of seems to me that it starts out as like a few cuts and bruises, let's call it, to uh, to the, the continuity of, let, let's say, the world. Um, until, like, some creators will just make some big holes, and then some others will make really big ones, and then some of us will build on the big holes, and, and everything just gets like break broken open. Um, it's like um, it's like a Jenga tower being assembled with parts missing. The further up it goes, yeah, like think of you know the super soldier stuff, time skips, um, people's ignorance of time skips, like always treated, and then like events like the blip, and obviously all the horrendous yeah. moral stuff that loads people are doing that has huge implications on countries, and that nobody ever cares about um there's just like no connections to anybody in any way anymore or contact with with other powers and stuff and there's no more commentary of like how things are going with i was about kind of funny to say it's like with law with, in the law show well, i could say that I mean, like there's that, no fucking the clue show, the show thinks it makes a couple of attempts at exploring interesting questions but yeah um <laughs> <laughs> no. Who knows what's going on with like freedom and safety in the world, uh, in terms of or what policy. the you average no person clue. thinks about anything. Like, what does the average yeah. person feel really and truly about the nature of superheroes? Not just as like a meme about how they're orphans or something. Like, what do they actually believe about the superheroes and the role they play in this world? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then put the multiverse on top of all that, and it's just like, yeah, everything's blown apart, and yeah. shredded. Um, so in, no, in the hands. Oh, sorry. So no wonder we're like. We can just look at some random guy called Man Bull, and he just says, "I'm Man Bull. I'm here now. Don't ask questions." Because <laughs> that in Phase Two would have been like, "What?" But nowadays, that's like, "Yeah, that's chill. Fine." Mm. Are you kidding me? We've no, blown up the universe, the multiverse. This guy's chill. Like, <laughs> who cares if he's a Man Bull? You can just invent oh, superheroes willy nilly. It's it's by the way, it's worth showing people who might have missed it in the last coverage the incredible visual effects work. Um, oh yeah, like the I... incredible, the incredible <laughs> scene with the uh, the fight. Well, if Man, I can they find had it no too. time. They had no resources. They just did not. Well, yeah, well, as evidence by, I set. think we pointed it this out as well. But look at the look at his leg. The uh, the hair prosthetic. Oh, oh, so gross. No, that's not that. We have a we're gonna have to nip this in the bud right now. That's not a prosthetic. They just shaved everything else, all the rest of his hair, except for that. Well, wow. so that's totally natural. <laughs> Same thing on his arm. They just shaved all of his hair except for that spot. That's know, why it looks weird. 
I That's have why a feeling they dug this out of some drain after several months. Of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not working. He, you, you he got, just slapped it on with some Elmer's glue. Oh, hey, Elmer's. Because it has the ball the icon. Product. More like Elmer's you bud. I shall, don't you agree? Oh, that looks bad. <laughs> oh, really no, bad. no, 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 no. You, wait, hold on, just wait. Oh god, the momentum's all wrong. <laughs> it doesn't. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make. It's just not like it's not right. It's, it's just, like they, it, they it's did backwards. choreography in in front of a Is green that frame? screen and then sped it up. You see the yeah, frame, where, frame he, where he it... flips. Yeah. 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 Look at they that. They sped that shit Boom. up. <laughs> it's added really some, funny. And it's a motion blur. Oh, so whatever happened is either they did it, either they did it wrong on set. Like, or something just went wrong, uh, or they didn't have time. It's like, you have two days to finish this shot or something. You think it his leg bends? <laughs> yeah. It's, oh my it's just god. Totally... It's so rubbery. You, just, you see him like this, he's clear <laughs> in a position, and then boom. Well, bulls have rubbery legs. It's a well-known oh, wow. well oh, fact. Because the thing is, is he stops and he starts rolling. Like, it, he's not, the momentum isn't carrying through. It changes. He changes directions. Like it, yeah, he changes. He ch like it's it's just all wrong. Like it's not right. It's it's not right. <laughs> well, and she looks awkward as well. But I think his badness well, is kind of overshadowing. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I guess that's the thing is like the the, the visual effects for like She Hulk are it, it's so remarkably inconsistent. Like I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's fine, and then other times it's really like awkward and noticeable. And I mean, it's, I mean, we know the like it, it gets addressed kind of in, in episode nine, but oh, I guess yeah. we do that. There's there's plenty to be said. Yeah, we there. Um. So yeah, it's uh they've destroyed her car now, and so she's gonna have to hang out here while it gets fixed. Um, and then in a rare moment, uh, I guess I I relate to Jen the most around about here when he goes. That other guy's like, I'm not a matador. I know who I am. I'm a swashbuckler. And then the other one's like, you talk about it like it's a job, but it's not. And then the other, uh, I think Tim Roth is like, Manbull sees everyone who tries to stab him for, for being a front to nature in not matador man, and there are many who want to stab him. Like, okay. this is the weirdest like pseudo homo narrative I've ever seen. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, because these guy, guys, these guys kind of like each other a lot, right? That's that's a payoff or something. A little bit, yeah, yeah, a little bit much. They're like codependent or something. Co yeah, codependent, but he still doesn't want to be stabbed by the swarthy, uh, possibly Latino man. Yeah. So he or wants to be stabbed well, by him. They think it's hilarious that uh, we might think of him as a matador when he's not a matador. That's like the joke. Like, okay. I, I do think there's a latent gay joke in there too. Well, like mm -hmm. the, oh yeah, definitely. Like I'm totally yeah. not gay, sort of thing. It could be allegory. You never know, you know. And then you go. Um, if... Jen says, "Wow, so much unnecessary backstory from two people who just destroyed my car." And I'm kind of like, "Yeah, let me just deal with that. Fuck the backstories. I don't care. Pay for a car, <laughs> you assholes." <laughs> I mean, everybody's an asshole here, so I guess I don't know. he specifically did run into that car or throw him onto that car. Or... Yeah. It's, I'm it's... just sorry. I was just thinking, like, oh, I'm I'm manbull. I was a, a lab experiment. Don't ask me questions. It's like, yeah, you know what? In this world, it really makes sense to repeal the Sokovia Accords, doesn't it? Yeah, we wanted to create human stakes in a lab. Oh, dude, it's become clear that the world is in absolute chaos. It's the a horrifying There's world no where yeah. magicians can yeah. sue people for when they set like they send them to a demon dimensions, and nobody seems to really give a shit. It's just like, yeah. yeah. And also, there are experiments that are creating crossbreeds between man and animal that are that, that, that then end up in like retreats for therapy. I don't. I have no Baller, idea. Would you want to be? Look at how much damage animal DNA. Would you want to? What's the animal longest animal? animal? Like, uh, uh, it's probably well, kind of blue like, whale, right? Anaconda, like, is the longest? Or, oh yeah, blue or whale. A blue whale. I'm pretty long, sure yeah. a blue whale is the longest. Would it be relative I guess to it's, um? It's, I guess maybe it's a tapeworm. It Ooh, yeah, what, what, tapeworm. Now, Google says blue whale. Um, oh, yeah, but yeah. I was going to say, like, relative to their, um, you know... Uh, so, oh, so they're not... 
like too thin. So what what you mean to say, Mauler, is you don't want an animal that is necessarily large. You want an animal that is long. long. So you would say relative to like the size of their head. To, I like, think the so. Rest I'm not sure them. how you do it. Right, just the size of their something. Ah, uh, would well, probably See, be an anaconda I, then, right? Yeah, I, that's. What, I think you should go with an anaconda because they are very long and they're not like they're, they're not too thin, but they're very strong. So, yeah, they're kind of chill. And they're, they're, they're kind of chunky boys. I'll be a Molokonda. Yeah, yeah, Some people are yeah, suggesting yeah. giraffe. Yeah. That'd be chill. So, like, I, oh, I yeah, do expect cool. to see do expect to see a meme Molokonda. the end of this stream that is Mola, but an Anaconda. Molokonda. <laughs> and I'm not saying I expect you to do it. I just expect it to happen. Like, I, I expect it. And I'm sure it'll be very amusing. Mm -hmm. He'll yeah. have, like, a little snake tongue coming out of his, like, mask thingy. Just like, look at me. I'm I'm a Molaconda sitting here in the Amazon. They're in the Amazon, right? Just Probably. I think so. What, yeah, they're in the doing room. what snakes do, they which is basically being inert for like ninety five percent of their lives. They're in movies totally with uh, inert. they're in movies with John Voight. That's what. Oh yeah, there was <laughs> that anaconda. The anaconda. Wasn't yeah. a, wasn't wasn't a, what's it? Oh my god, uh, what's the name? Ah uh, uh, no, I've forgotten. Uh. Um, Jennifer What's Lopez? That? Yeah, Daphne, that's right. Like... But she was in one of those, right? Yeah, yeah, Jennifer Lopez was in there, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ice Cube. I would swallow, I, I would swallow <laughs> Jennifer Lopez whole. What? If I was, a, if I was an anaconda. Swallow her whole or swallow her whole? Yeah, I, you know, I, I here's the thing. <laughs> if you, here's the thing, if you do one, you do the other by necessity. Or I, su I suppose, right? Well, yeah. I don't we'll go know. with yes. Uh, Anacondas are big. Yeah, I'm just looking at. Yeah, pictures of I Anacondas. thought they were like 30 meters, 30, 40 meters. They long. are. Yeah, that's uh, and they're thick. What does it mean they're... when they put reticulated before, like python or whatever? Uh, like reticulating I... spleens. I don't know. What does it mean, reticulated? I well, have it's no says... idea. You're a lawyer. You should know when you have to defend. I know it's true. Anacondas. Reticulation is a legal term. So it, <laughs> according to the uh, Wikipedia site. Uh, yes. The reticulated python is a python species native to South and Southeast Asia. It's the world's longest snake Ooh. and is among the three heaviest. Ooh. So you'd be a chonker. You'd be a real chonky boy, Ooh. which is which is fine if you're that size. It's fine. Like no one looks at a whale and you're like that fat ass. Like no, it's <laughs> big, right? It's gonna weigh a lot. Like a python like this, you're like, yeah, that thing ain't fat. It's just it's big and it's kind of terrifying. Yeah, I, apparently is... Wikipedia says a reticulated python is one of the few snakes that actually preys on humans. Neat. Well, I don't think that's neat, but... I think it's neat that nature is allowed to do what it wants. I'm not for restricting it. I'm just like Tolkien. What? You're just like Tolkien. <laughs> let nature run its course. Um... It, was, um, it was added to the Lacey Act. Uh, which prohibits trade in wildlife, fish, and plants in the United States that have been uh, illegally taken, possessed, transported, or sold. Well, because you can uh, get, like, a pet snake. I presume you can't yeah. get a pet reticulated python, though. That sounds like a... Mm. That sounds like a... People uh, have snakes, yeah. yeah. The snakes are chill. Yeah. They're, 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 they're um, very chill. That's the thing about snakes. They, like to, they don't like to... Move and work around. Well, it's kind much. of it's the meme with much. a lot of animals, right? Like the the like the animals, like a lion. You know, people are like, oh, a lion, so fierce. It's like ninety percent of its time is just spent sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, because it's so that, fierce. Even. Like it's so fierce that it just sits one, around. Like one roar and the jungle knows. They know. That's, that's right. The lion is true. the king of the jungle because that's where lions. Except live. he's the king of the savanna because they live in the savanna. Well, well this is all hearsay, of course. Yeah, I mean, propaganda. Mufasa. I've seen, by the way, several answers in chat that are like, oh, well, it relates to how their muscles come together. And I was like, oh, okay. And then someone else said it's the pattern of the skin. It's actually how the bones are connected. I was just like, okay. I... <laughs> Some of you if have you... to be wrong. <laughs> if you are a maybe you're all, right, dude, all yeah. of the above. Let us know. Is that what it's called? A snakeologist? What's the Latin name for snake? It would probably be that ologist, serpens, right? Serpens, right? I think serpens is uh, the Latin oh, for that snake. that makes a lot of sense, actually. But yeah, they'd be herpetologists, point. right? I, I, okay. like I said, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on the terminology. It says uh -huh. herpetologist is someone who specializes in the study of reptiles and amphibians. Hmm. Frogs. 
Frogs and snakes. From Latin, from because they all have herpes. Nice. That's pretty cool. We learn a lot on this stream. Yep. Uh, we really do. So, yeah, um, we're now going to spend the episode getting Jen some signal because she's still trying to see if her, her guy has sent a message back. That's that's where we're at. Plotline, guys, just making sure you're up to date. Um, this is such an excellent commentary on a woman. God, <laughs> just so good. It's like so empowering that her entire life has been taken over by a guy she slept with uh, one time after three dates and one brief meeting at a uh, at a wedding that like now she's like, oh, I've let you into my world. This is so empowering. A wedding she only went to when to show you, off herself. And, and you have a meal. Yes. Trying to push her to find meaning in life that goes beyond her phone slash this guy. Uh, this is like, oh, and the phone you is make kind some of interesting choices. The, yeah, the show's kind of pooping on him for it. Oh, it definitely like, does. Even though like a quack, he says some stuff that I think is just absolutely correct, and the show definitely makes a joke <clears> of him. <throat> um, but whatever, they do that a lot. Uh, so they asked to just push the car away, and yeah, she's uh, oh god, do you remember this where they're like, help me push it, and he goes. Do I look like a mechanic? My name is Man Bull, not Mechanical Bull. Oh god, that's terrible. Man, like, you know, the first the first draft of a joke doesn't have to be the last draft of a joke. They know, fixed like, it though, can... because when he says it, one of the characters is like, you were working on that for a while, huh? And I'm just like, the writers were working on that one for a while, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah like, oh my god, it's like, they're actually sitting there working on it for a while, it's like, Fuck! Like, oh well, what if we just have them acknowledge it, that we're you can, working on it? You a know this happened. One of them was like, "He's a bull." You know, mechanical bulls, and there's a car. There's something there. Maybe, like, if he comboed up with a car, he'd be like, Mecha maybe a mechanic. Mechanic. Maybe, well, the car needs fixing. Bowl? Oh, I'm almost there. And then they start writing notes. They're like, "Oh, this is gonna be so good." Then they say it, and the rest of the team are like, "Ha." <laughs> it's, <probably> like, <laughs> it's moments like this. I am reminded that the writer of this started off. Uh, working on Nickelodeon shows. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Nickelodeon. <laughs> Maybe. What? What did they do with all that slime? I don't know. Bring it a form. Like, is slime a form of goo? I. Are they related? I feel, I'm pretty sure we talked about that. I'm. I'm not. Sh I. I imagine that they're like adjacent, but they're not quite the same thing. That like slime okay. and goo. Which or is more glue. viscous. Well, may maybe goo is like the overarching category, and slime is like a type of goo. If you oh, think about okay, it that like way, maybe I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not I'm, saying. I'm just mm -hmm. curious where all the goo went with the Nickelodeon stuff back in the '90s. They were being very liberal with their goo dispensation. I was just wondering where the I think it's uh, I the soil of the slime, isn't it? The accountant who's tried to do it, it's like you got to cut back on the the budget for the slime, right? It's killing yeah, the slime the stuff budget. <laughs> His numbers, is man. Not this like is they, not cheap. We have to go through a portal no. to like this crazy dimension to get it. Like it's not. You gotta. It's you gotta. This be world and you're spraying it on kids. He's got to account for all of the goo, and so he has to hunt it down. Like where did it all go? Where did it all hide? Who's been hiding it? And there's lots of like goo merchants and goo dealers. Uh, yeah, slime. like <laughs> you got like a, a scruffy character of the world, like the janitor, who's secretly collecting some of it to trade, like to make money on the side. <laughs> it's like a oh oh with a oh, grease. oh oh wait wait wait. Wait, so in the 90s, if you tried to get illegal goo, you'd have to go to the GAC market? <laughs> you guys remember, hate, do you remember I, GAC? I hate that joke more than the mechanical bull joke. <laughs> 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 GAC is great. So anyway, Rags has a plushie out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you Fun squeeze it, maybe he'll Remember say a when more incredible cute. jokes like this by buying my plushie. <laughs> uh, so These things I, aren't cheap, people. Um, we have incredibly low stakes and easy to do drama, and yet they fuck this up because she says her primary concern is that she wants to check if she's been texted, and so she needs service. So it's like you know, I think the highest that the stakes have been in the show was when She Hulk threw Man Bull up in the air. Yeah, that's about, that's about <laughs> the height. Unless she jumps at yep. some point. Uh, yep. So it's weird that she can't get any cell reception when we've just established she has to do something here for a couple of hours because the tow truck isn't going to arrive until the afternoon or later that day. Them. And I, yeah. yeah, I was just like, 
How did you contact the tow people? I wonder. <laughs> Because it wasn't through the internet, they have no Wi-Fi. You must have oh, called or them. It was it by, via telegram? Yep. <laughs> it was Morse code. Like, it puts out its own signal or something. Well, the car broke know. and just said they'll be on the way. Is that, is that what we're supposed to... I mean, I know there's systems Maybe that can involve that, but... Well, then yeah, but use the landline. The landline what's the point of everything? Like, <laughs> they talked about it. And they never, yeah, the they never allude to that, too. But even if he, uh, he had a landline, that's a solution right there. She Mark hates single. the fact that she's stuck here. <laughs> Why doesn't she call a friend? She could even call the, um, the, the guy back. The one who just uh, left. <laughs> one thing I want to point yeah. out is when she loses the signal, like, she's trying to get another one and she's walking around, there's this fucking obnoxious text right above her that says no oh, signals yes. like oh, we motherfucker we oh, get it we can yeah. tell by the way she's holding her phone over her head like a fucking moron that there's no reception look Stop that two, that two feet will make a difference from space okay <laughs> <laughs> She Hulk could probably like just jump her way back home, right? Like, does yes. she? Yes. What, what's her level of? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, she could run back home. Who was that chick? Yeah. Who was that chick in the boys? Hera, Matilda. What was her name? She could jump really far. Oh, I mean, Maeve. We Minerva. Know? Maeve. Maeve. Just like Maeve, we, you could just zoink. He was flying. We know yeah, that she can. Yeah, we know she can do this because one, Hulk can do it. Two, she trained with Hulk on doing this, on jumping. Yeah, so she can do it better, it. almost certainly. Oh yeah, and you just gotta it, aim for it, like the grass, you know? Don't fuck everyone. I was sitting up. there, house or something. Oh, sorry. I was sitting there yelling at my wife, uh, and I'm like, "Why aren't you just <laughs> jumping? Just jump! Just jump!" <laughs> Yeah, you know what would have been funny if she just jumped up in the air a few times and was like, okay, I can see the city from here. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go this way in this direction. Yeah. Um, use the landline. Call the government guy who's just with you. Say, like, motherfucker, they broke my car. Come back. Pick me up. And then the tow truck people will get your car to the wherever it's going to go. Then you can go meet them later. If she truly didn't want to be here. But I think, seems to me, she just wants to be here. She'll just find an excuse to hang out. Because these are a wonderful set of characters we're about to meet. And my god, do we spend a while in this room. We really do. This is the <laughs> it's episode. It's like a bottle this episode. Is the episode. It's, the, yeah. it's the bottle episode episode of She-Hulk. And, you know, generally I really like bottle Because it makes you want to drink. Episode. Yes, it's the bottle episode. Mm. Well, mm. I guess in that sense, it's, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a different kind of bottle episode. It's a, it's a very... A bottle, you should buy it. It does have a bottle. That's true. And it can be yours. For, yeah. Oh yeah, I just wanted to say, by the way, the guy who ran off immediately, they have a throwaway line for like, wait, he's already gone? It's like, yeah, he, he's really scared of abomination. And it's like, oh, okay. You understand, like, they had to get him out of there, because if he was here, as they both left, and then a car got destroyed, he would have just offered her a ride, obviously. Like, that, and that would have yeah. solved the whole thing. So. A man offering a woman a ride in this show? Hmm. <laughs> Only if he gets know. in the passenger seat and lets her drive. Let's her drive. <laughs> um, this, is, this, is, this is my car now. There was one line from, uh, from Blonsky that was a little sus to me, uh, just in a culty way, you know, not, it's, it's nothing else, just, just a little bit of a culty way where he's like, uh, talking about the different things they offer here, at one point, uh, she's, she points to somewhere, being like, is that what you do, blah, 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 and then he says, um, that's for platinum members who get exclusive private spiritual cons consultation. Like, in a place mm. with no Wi-Fi, where you, like, control everything, you have to pay extra and you'll get exclusive. <laughs> I think... Nixium is on my brain because I watched the documentary about it. It's like, God, I wouldn't trust any of this shit. <laughs> like, probably, some, probably some 17 year old girl in there or something. Oh, it'll just be Damn. anybody who's I, uh, rich, I guess. I got, the, I got the impression the Platinum members were the stupid superheroes that he's counseling. I thought they're that not, might not be it too. Um, because they're trying that, to set that up. I think they're, yeah. Because I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, so this is going to be like part of the villain story, right? Like these guys are all going to actually be bad guys. There's going to be this cover thing yeah. uh, where it's, where, and, and no, I mean, they didn't deliver on that. So don't worry guys. There was no, uh, there was no actual subtext going on. It was just completely vapid. But, um, mm -hmm. so, but I got the impression they were trying to convey that like, that was the platinum level. These, this, uh, this group of people. They just host. Yeah, you might be right. Actually. Intelligentsia. Uh, without, yeah. <laughs> Oh god, we'll I I we'll uh, we'll have to break all ahead. that. Yeah, we'll break all of it down because it's difficult to explain. Um, but yeah, he uh, th there was a theory. The second he came onto the show, we were like, so he's he's lying. Obviously, he's lying. But um, you'll find out the truth of whether or not he's lying soon enough. 
say soon enough. It could be hours from now, but soon enough. Also, the way you, that's off, right? You'll find out the truth of whether he's li whether or not he's lying. That's a an interesting little little phrase phrase there. Carry on. So, um, yeah, they don't carry Wi-Fi as a policy, so she can only find it in one place, and it happens to be where they have a therapy session. I don't know why. Session. Don't know why you would have the yeah no service thing popping up over her head. It's like I get it. Was to help it's you like understand. A um, thing, I guess. I think, yeah. I think it's excellent. Uh, they did it in Rings of Power to help you understand the name of the Southlands had changed. Uh, very useful. Very uh, very loved. It, I think it's inspired like labels. Like people are gonna start labeling things. It's just so useful. Can um, before we go on and before we forget, can I just say that I despise the music in this show? Can. Same. I'll allow you yes. to say that. I just yep. All right, all right then. Uh, well, the, the part where I got most. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait! wait. I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a thing. I really hate the music in this show. All right, it's been said. Fringy, carry on. Okay, I was just going to say that it was uh, episode eight was when I was getting particularly upset about the music related to one particular character. <laughs> what I, what I guess was his like little light motif. In this show, I did not like it compared to what it used to be. No, 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 it's not the one. No, no, no. It was. That was a. That was like. That was a song. I didn't like it. No, I know it was. I was just adding to that. I figured that was the one you did, but I. I figured all Rags is doing. He's off. Rags is running. Yeah, he's off with his own. He's running around like in the corner. Just I'm just around saying, I'm in running in small circles in the corner while yeah. I hum to myself the Indiana Jones yeah, um, name. When mm -hmm. wait, I, I hope this isn't going on an a spoiler, adventure. but um, I, it can't really be a spoiler because most people know about it and it's it is what it is. There's nothing else to it. So much to say it anyway. But at the end of Black Bat, but, but, at the end of Black Adam, <laughs> um, uh, Henry Cavill does show up as Superman and he's got the little little curl and he's got the the uh, outfit, the original colors, the red and blue and. John Williams' Yay. theme is mixed in as well, and I I was legit oh, like, nice. oh, there he is. <laughs> like, I want him to have a chance to play a good Superman because he's such a good actor, and he he just you look at him and you're like Superman, and um, you're just already moist and everything, and you want to give him a chance to play that character. I don't want I don't want the Snyder to have claimed him for that role and ruined it. What's funny is I also would say like, is that key jangly? And I was like, oh yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, I hope he gets, I hope he gets some. <laughs> Good for you, Henry. Become Superman. You can jangle the keys as long as you open the door with them, you know? Like. Yeah, I mean, because there's, there's no reason why he shouldn't have shown up in that movie, to be honest with you. Like, with the universe and how it works and everything. Hmm. Uh, uh, someone, uh, if if you're curious, someone showed me a picture of, or it's in, uh, in my server, someone showed Manbull from the comic. Uh-huh. He was like, he's, oh, and then we have our Manbull here, oh. which is like, you know, it, you know, it doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't, he looks but, straight up. He's like, he's an actual, like, he's, like bull. He's a minotaur, <laughs> basically. So this is, In the um, show, he looks like he was from Narnia or something. Oh my god. He, he looks like <laughs> a man <laughs> girl from Portland. Mr. Tumnus. Mr. Tumnus. Yeah, he looks like <laughs> Professor X. Yeah, Professor X. So this I'm, this is the, the source versus the Netflix adaptation meme, isn't it? <laughs> Very attractive. <laughs> Every time. Why can't he actually, like, be a bull? Uh, well, they didn't have the money, that's why. I was gonna say, maybe it would look way worse. Well, look, maybe they should have just had like him be an actual bull. Find like a really passionate uh, bull who's like really wants to get into acting and give him the chance to betray Man Bull. Um, so we get some new Struggles. characters. One yeah. who's porcupine. He's a guy in a big suit, like a porcupine, I guess. And then Saracen, the vampire, whose every line of dialogue involves how he wants to drink blood. Really clever. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the, sh I, I, the one, the one laugh that this show got out of me, the one genuine laugh that the show was able to, to squeeze out of my cold, dead, concrete, doggy heart, right, mm -hmm. was when he said, "We need to find Josh and suck his blood," and that was so stupid that I legitimately laughed at it. Ooh. That's the only time. 
That was that was the only time. It was the same so joke absurd. they tell every time I, with I, him. I appreciate. I know. I appreciate <laughs> rags, but damn. It just there was something like it's clearly not good. The joke there's like the joke is dumb, but it was just it was just that right kind of dumb that one time. That that, like, I literally laugh. can't tell the difference between that joke and all the other jokes he tells. I, I don't I don't I don't know why I don't I can't explain it to you. Maybe it's the delivery. Like he was just so excited to meant just to say that we should find Josh and suck his blood. That was <laughs> it. Just did it. it. It was the one which is one laugh in a whole season of a comedy show. That's that's pretty good. You know. I think your brain cracked so much that your like <laughs> laughter just that came out. Might <laughs> might legitimately be a possibility. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah, and and so like you you almost reset because this is apparently the halfway point in the episode, and I realize yeah because that's just the rest of the episode is this now. And you have Tim Roth sitting down with all these insane like faux cosplayers that are created by a writing team who doesn't know what stories are, and then he just says, "Last session we explored Alejandro's struggles with identity." And it's like, why am I here? <laughs> like why why why? <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. I miss Batwoman. <laughs> I, I really do. In season one of Batwoman, when Ruby Rose was running around being a just a horrible, terrible Batwoman, it was wonderful. Yeah, it, remember it was like, so when she, like Ned Flanders? Do you remember him? He was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she like strangled with his baloney with his baloney skin pants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Remember when? Not Alice, alternate dimension Alice or whatever, sprayed her with like pepper spray, and then she was like, yeah. <laughs> That was great. See, that, that woman was fun. It was fun. That woman was great. Uh, fun. Where, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the nature of things, right? A bad comedy is usually particularly painful, whereas like a bad, a bad drama can end up being very entertaining. Hmm. So they talk, and then guy who, with other people, tried to take yeah. Jen's blood turns up. He just happens to be here, and he's like, "Oh, mm -hmm. hi!" And then she throws Man. him across the room. Um, yeah. Which I guess you know, whatever. Like, <laughs> I just don't care. It's so difficult because I'm like, "Where are you go? This isn't going to go anywhere interesting." He's just here yeah. now. Also, she's going to kill him. Oh, you know how like, it works. She doesn't take mm -hmm. she doesn't take the time to question him about why the fuck she he was after her blood. Nope. Why 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 he was trying to jump her. She just kind of tries to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's role model. This is how you deal with your problems. Just fucking throw him around a room. But even Emil is just like, you please calm down and then they have to have like an actual session. She has a lot of anger, sure. you know. She does. Um yeah, and he says uh, he realized ultimately he didn't need some super powered crowbar to feel power, and him and his uh, friends were acting like super villains. And then she says, "You attacked a woman four to one. You are absolutely super villains." Uh, um, well, uh, there's an asterisk behind that woman. Well, so this is the thing about it. I was like, "Oh, well, of course." If I mean four to one with a guy who's innocent is like super villain behavior as well. It doesn't matter if like, well, but and one to one with anybody who is innocent. Yeah, attacking, a, attack ambushing a person with a magical crowbar. Yeah. That's probably exactly that's probably an asshole thing to do, especially if you're just trying to steal their blood. Yeah, gender is um, notwithstanding. Yeah. But it's weird, yeah, that she 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 frames it as uh, the men versus women thing. It's like, well, you can pick up like cars. Um, so if we're going with strength, like you obviously outclass them by far. Uh. Like even as a big green mutant, she's still playing the fucking victim. Like she's this defenseless oh, yeah. little girl. Like I hate this shit. Yeah, I thought it was really a really cho weird choice of dialogue because obviously they knew she was She Hulk when they attacked her. She knows she's She Hulk. So like it reminds me of the whole um the the Brie Larson or oh, Captain Marvel Captain thing. Marvel, yeah. yeah, where it's like you know you assaulted her. She she would have been terrified. It's like no, we both know that she's a god. Like there's nothing that no. literally indestructible can tank a hit from the Power Stone. Yeah. So oh, you're not gonna be able to pull that card. Like this is not gonna work. Yeah, and, uh, Don wasn't gonna do anything other than make her feel loved. Don wanted to smile, like, so they yes. sent him to hell. <laughs> but <he's> like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. There's that, and then they um. I think he says I'm sorry, and she's like, Oh, you're sorry, and it's like, Is this? 
What we're doing? She's gonna have a chat with one of the... And you kind of just are waiting for when she's gonna be like, Who sent you? Why did you do it? But, um, they don't even talk about... But no, sorry, they get to talking about her and her boyfriend soon. That's what the rest no, of like, about. Yeah, because this show is not really... You had a plot that you chose to start, and for some reason you're not interested in actually, like, trying to resolve it. I don't get it. Yeah, and... Yeah, to give you an idea, it's like, uh, she's criticized for being on her phone. And then she's like, I met a guy, it was going great, and then he stopped talking to me. And, oh, what'd you say? And she's like, I can't stop smiling. It's like, oh, that's thirsty and a cliche. Yeah. And then she's like, you're thirsty and a cliche. And then, like, if bottom line, are... said game on, and he didn't reply. And they're all talking about this, and I'm just like, oh my god. You could have cut this episode, we could have an eight-episode season, it would have been fine. You didn't have to have this episode. Mm -hmm. This season also, has, like, three episodes at most. Yeah. The rest of it is just, what the heck is going on? Why am I here? <laughs> I, I want to sleep. Yeah. Sleep would be preferable. I fell this. asleep, actually, during, like, at least two times watching this series. <laughs> I was struggling to take notes. Uh, it was... You need to sit in the awakened chair. It was a consistent theme of this entire show. It is just nothing. It is so hollow. It is so boring. And I mean, we'll get there eventually, but this the, the only smart part of the show was when the show admitted to itself that all of these storylines are trash. They don't make sense. They're disparate. They're worthless. And it's all bad. Yeah. And there's no cohesive uh, theme. There's no cohesive narrative. There's no greater story arc. It's literally... Just a bunch of little mini incidents that are seemingly unrelated and end up being unrelated. Oh, it drives me nuts. There's no effort put into this script at all. And I'll be honest, if you go on three dates with an attractive lady, mm -hmm. and after the third date, you are invited into her home and have sex with her, and she texts you, that was fun, I can't stop smiling, unless you have this weird humiliation thing going on, that's, like, that's a really good text to get. That mean that that's good. I don't get this whole. Oh no, that's a bad thing yeah. to say. Uh, I legit don't get it. <laughs> I, this is a. I guess this is a part of the world that I just don't. I don't get this new music, modern humor, <laughs> Disney. It's these days. Thing. I don't get <laughs> well, it. Well, because she's a woman, she can't be clingy to a man. That's disgusting. <laughs> that's handmaiden shit. Exactly. <laughs> um. Yeah, and so then she starts to explain, she's like, I met him when I was Jen, and he liked Jen, you know? Like, She-Hulk is that friend you have in high school who's just, everyone likes her more, and you'd think life would be so much easier if you became that person, and I turn into it whenever I want, and everyone gives me attention when I do, my boss, my colleagues, my uh, boyfriends and stuff, but it feels like cheating. Would they like me if I didn't have all of this? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you already, you already took advantage of that a few episodes ago. So, uh, as if, as if he doesn't know the answer to that question, you know, you got it confirmed, uh, by a lot of people. In fact, yeah. Cause that guy, wasn't it literally like half a day? She even got to know that guy, the one that, um, wasn't interested in Jen, but she was interested. It was one it was date. One, one it was date right from and, the date. Yeah, from the date to the apartment. Then she has to leave the apartment almost immediately to go save uh, from the hell dimension demon bats. And then yeah. when she comes back, it's pound time. Like it was, uh, it was dinner and then twenty minutes. <laughs> well, and, and that's what I'm saying. She had, she had direct confirmation from him twice that he was absolutely not interested in Jen. Um. In fact, he considered it all a huge surprise. So it's it's interesting that she's now talking about how like I think some people wouldn't be as interested in me if not for She Hulk. It's like, oh yeah, <laughs> do you remember how you were hired, love? Do you remember what they said? <laughs> well, and also there was that court case she had where she brought all those people in to basically affirm that, yeah. like like without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just funny that she's playing coy about it. It's like we've had it confirmed legally at this point. <laughs> like, it's, I think we should uh, acknowledge it. Yeah. Also, did you, because there was, there's one particular line in her big, like, impassioned speech that uh, particularly bugged me, but yeah. I can't remember exactly what, I think it was when she, it was something along the lines of, you know, like, and that sucks because, like, Jen is great. So, like, I mean, oh, does she I, actually I, I say just, Jen is great? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she, she says, 
you got it. You got to find the exact line. You got to find it because I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. We have evolved oh, as yeah. writers. It's now. It's no longer other characters telling our, our our main character how amazing she is. Now we have completely removed all outside influences, and we need only the main character to tell oh, yeah, so... everyone else how amazing she is. <laughs> it's um. It's man, it's like kind of it's like a uh, huge pet peeve of mine. <laughs> like in, in a I show. It. What? Oh boy. All right. It was just so narcissistic. Oh yeah. No, she's she is the greatest narcissist I've ever come across in yeah. a, and that will be confirmed by the finale episode. Hardcore. Yeah, and she was right, so there it is. Narcissist in Captain Marvel? And that's absolutely sucks. Captain Marvel doesn't yeah, have yeah, doesn't definitely. come close to the narcissism here. Not even like, close. And that, this eclipses that every sucks. other character possible. I don't think anyone's <laughs> going to be able to uh, defeat She Hulk in that department after the last episode. Oh, yeah. But there is the line, and that sucks for Jen because Jen is great. Uh, it is like, I don't know what it is, but I find it like particularly frustrating. I've generally found it annoying when like stories, it feels like um, almost the writer has come in to talk about how great their own characters are. But I mean, this one is like probably the most overt one ever. Um, like, I don't. <laughs> It's just like, <laughs> that sucks for Jen, because Jen is great. It's like, that character that you wrote, for her to say that about herself, the character that you wrote. And, of course, given all of the scenes that we've had prior to this point, eh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh. No one cares when they're She-Hulk's like, aw. That's just... Mm. Yeah, well, don't worry, we're coming to the end of this I episode, I just feel I so bad for this character. Goodness I know, yeah, gracious. me too. I really um, want everything to work out for her. When she finishes her speech, all these guys want to kill Josh. Uh, that's a good sign. And then, um, fucking not Matador man lights up his sword with like magical energy. And then Tim Roth is like, "You, you've been warned about using bioelectricity in this group before." And I was just like, "What even? What is there? A... I guess he just has this a magical a sword. Show. Whatever. Yeah, fuck it. Show. Why not? This... Yeah, that's yeah." And they're like, rejection hurts. You should spend more time with Jen because I'm sure she's great. Maybe Josh isn't the only person <laughs> who likes Jen. You believe this group values the whole of you, Jen? Help me. And then, and then it, yeah, it's like it's at this point that you start to realize that this is this whole thing is yeah, like this sort of group therapy session. But it's kind of like a weird group therapy session because it almost feels like is there something like more meta going on here? Like, in terms of what this represents. What, the people like She-Hulk, but they don't like, like Jennifer Walters from no, the No, no, no. Uh, no, but just more like... The, I don't know, like, it's it's just like this weird sort of... It feels like kind of a self-insert, like, therapy session, like, yes. inserted into the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? In what way? I just feel like... One of the if, writers if, just... Alright, go for it. Got ghosted, or something. Like, what are you trying to say... Who hurt you? Because it feels so much like a self-insert, and someone is just like, oh, uh, just trying to shit on somebody else with this. I don't know. It's just it feels like a self-insert. I guess the thing is, is I can believe that now, since there have been like quotes where the writers have explicitly stated that that's been partially their objective at times, right? It's to, like insert people in real life who they don't like into the show. Yeah. So, uh, then Jen having a breakthrough and realizing that she doesn't have to be She-Hulk for everyone to like her, whatever, um, that encourages Porcupine to take off his mask now. and he smells really bad. Um, Yay, stinky. And that's the joke. That's the joke, yeah. He's been in that goes, mask forever. <laughs> so smelly. He's smelly. They should call you Porcupine. You dirty, you black bastard. <laughs> He seems so happy as well. And I was just like, why did you make it so that he's smelly? It was like, okay. That is but hilarious. Wasn't this though. supposed to be like a very supportive group therapy session? Yeah, but that's the joke, isn't it? It's like, aha, uh -huh, they won't support him right now or thoroughly because he smells. Wow. That's not nice it's of them. He can't, he can't help therapy that. Therapy groups well, have well, a maybe smell. He can, in but maybe he can. He can, he can probably. It, but... Well, yeah, because they said he needs to not wear it all the time and he needs to. Right. Oh, right. I figured it might be like some innate thing like i don't know or like something relating to porcupines yeah it like, could literally if be he was, the, if he was yeah. the skunkinator right or the smello man 
or you know the, the odorator something like that right so we're like oh okay yeah he smells he smells pretty bad yeah so um they tell her they all tell her to delete his number and then she does it it's a breakthrough and then she goes into the the yurt thing to yurt i don't know what, it, what that is and and that works out too it's great it's like a sauna and then uh they say like we love you jen and we love she hulk and we are not a uh, cult. It's so you really like it's gonna take us much longer to get through the next two episodes, trust me. This one is such an empty episode. It's like, okay. Yeah. The Still. Thing is, it's like, what should this actually mean to Jen really? These people that you don't know, like, are saying that you're great to try and make you feel better at this exactly. moment. Like how is this a breakthrough in any way whatsoever? Um yeah, and so uh, before she leaves, Blonsky says that um, everyone we meet, no matter how much they hurt you, is a lesson learned, right? And before we get to a response, it's obviously him trying to say that you put a lot on what Josh thinks and feels of you when you've not even known him that long, and your value as your two almost identities has been like broken apart and determined by what other people see and think as opposed to what you think. What have you learned from how much power someone like a Josh has over you with all this that you need to work on some stuff for yourself? That's what I get from it, trying to be generous, at least a little bit. Yeah. And so he says that as a summary of this experience, and her response is, despite those platitudes, I'm actually happy I stuck around. And I was like, like what is I, it, it feels like it's actually kind of, some of the stuff he says is legitimately good advice. It's just, know? it is it, good advice. It summarizes what happened. Like, it, yeah, it's, it's not it's a platitude. Like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it's like an actual piece of advice. The whole point is, and the whole point of your therapy session was derive value from yourself, not from like the opinions of other people. Exactly. He's right. Why would you say that? Why is she always like dismissing and shitting on everything that everybody else has to say? And it's weird because as self fucking centered as she is, being told that message should make her go, yeah. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. What annoyed the shit out of me about uh, this episode and the whole thing is going back to the beginning of the show when she when she first becomes She-Hulk and it's like the whole the whole thing that Bruce was trying to teach her was reconciling these two parts of herself. And then she's like, no, I'm just actually able to. I am the same thing. There's only one voice. It's just me. It's just Jen within She-Hulk. And then it's immediately broken. Like that's immediately not true throughout the show. And then here, it's like, no, Jen is just, Jen is the better thing is going on in this little therapy session, or Jen is great, or Jen is acceptable. And then by the end of the show, there's no reconciliation of this over, uh, this underlying story arc where Jen is supposed to be reconciling these two uh, aspects of herself, or is it just the same person? They can't figure it out. They just drop the narrative, but they, they like have this this uh, waypoint here in the middle of the season where it's like, no, there actually is still this looming conflict between her. She's never learned. She just uh, arrogantly went away from Bruce, even though it was, it was like a yay woman power moment. Um, and they, they don't even realize it. Like they don't realize that that's the contradiction that they've created is that she was supposed to be better because she's a woman. And because women are actually just uniform, they don't have these two uh, personalities. And then they immediately went into it. And now she's like, they just don't even see it. And it's driving me crazy because it still doesn't wrap up by the end of the show. I would it's, go as far as they, they fucking annihilate any sense of wrapping anything up by the end. They would, it's like they wrote themselves yes. into a corner. Which, how did you do that yeah. when everything was so yeah. simple? <laughs> it's just, well, like, yeah, when you think about how low variables the show is, yeah, very low compared to everything else, like compared to the other shows, particularly low stakes. Um, anyway, they show us the clip of Josh, uh, stealing her, he's copying all of her phone data, but the weird thing is, again, I don't understand how he got her blood, but whatever, he got her well, blood Well, here's the thing, <laughs> I don't even know anymore, like, what to make of whether that even happened, but I guess we gotta get to that. I, I think my theory was more plausible, <laughs> was the most plausible one. Biologically, it was potentially so, but who um, knows. And that's it, that's episode seven, and, uh... As you can see, that, that already took us just over an hour, so clearly not much All happens right. in it. Okay. Uh, it was awful to watch, and then and then I knew as well going into the next one, I was like, so this next one, that's the Daredevil one, right? That's where we're at well, now. 
He's been, he's been, he hasn't shown up yet, so. Oh, time. It's time, indeed. They've already baited mm. him, okay? Uh, and they, I think they would have pushed his episode as far down as possible just so they can keep people in. Uh, I think mm. there's no reason to assume anything else. They've baited the crap out of him for a while. Um, they know mm. that, that it's a big draw. Yeah, and they know that they would have just been better off. With, I say this as if it's not happening. Being a Daredevil show, it's like, don't worry, that's on the way too. That'd be great. That's going to piss off the entire internet, I think. Because it's just... Uh... <laughs> no way it's going to be like the other three seasons. That's just not going to be a well, thing. Well, and especially if they don't have a one-take hallway fight. They, well... Oh, they did a know. great job of that in this episode, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I even saw on Twitter people like, oh, yeah, it was great. And that made no, me really it sad. It wasn't even yesterday. Anyway, but... it, wasn't very, it, wasn't, it, was, it wasn't very great. Imagine having the balls impressive. to try to replicate that scene. Knowing damn well you can't write for the <laughs> shit. Well, it's pretty funny because uh, we talked about it on the last, the last, I can't remember when we talked about it, but for the, the hallway fight in season one, I believe they only had like two days to prep for it, and they, or, and then they shot it in like half a day because they were really <laughs> like it was it was a very um tight production like for for Daredevil like the turnaround I think was a new episode every like thirteen days was shot, and look at what they accomplished with less money and less time compared to oh uh, wait, oh I thought you were talking about She Hulk only had two days to make it. Well, no I'm, that's I'm what saying it looked like, like. I well who who knows right I I presume that they had more time and more money. In fact, yeah. all, they had to have had more money, but, yeah. Um, do you know how they do the previously on this one? Uh, you have uh, like Bruce saying, if you're not going to be a superhero, then what are you going to do? And then it cuts to her I'm twerking. I'm going to shake my ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, the show is like, ain't we fun? And I'm just like, oh my god, that really does sum up the show, doesn't it? It's like, if you're not going to use your abilities for the betterment of the world, what are you going to do? And it's like, fuck around, baby. I'm gonna like, be a fucking bum. Yeah, all right then. <laughs> just a big, just a bum ass superhero. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and also the uh, the previously is is described as I think she does this more than once in the season, but she does it here. She goes previously on my show. What are we <laughs> what doing? Who, who are you talking secure. to, bitch? <laughs> This is yeah, my guys, show. Well, she did mine. it in episode before, right? She was like, I know there's cameos, cool. yeah, but this yeah. is my show. And this is not even the last time that we're going to hear that either. Like, there's more the re of that later. The really odd thing about this is, again, for me, it's it's just this constant return to irony of a bunch of women writing a, a quote-unquote pro-woman show like, no, this is this is what women are type thing mm -hmm. is the exploration mm -hmm. of this character. And and yet the the lack of self awareness to have what are you going to do other than your career your role the thing you're supposed to do the thing that would bring uh, fulfillment to you the thing that exploits your gifts and talents uh, that make you uniquely you uh, what are you going to do with that I'm going to twerk in an office I'm mm -hmm. just going to twerk like I'm I'm just going to have fun it's like what. Like, you're not going to exploit your talents for the betterment of yourself or society or humanity. You're not going to commercialize it. You're not going to do literally anything productive because the woman thing to do is to sit around shaking your ass. Like, that's the message you really want to convey. And it repeatedly, time after time, they go back to this thing where it's like your whole... The whole point of these superhero stories is to allow us to hyper focus on some part of something. I guess with Hulk, it's like the id uh, or ego. I don't know which. I'm not a psychologist or a brain person, but brain you know person. what I mean. Like it's to focus on this aspect of of what a person is, and and then to twist it now to become this aspect of what a woman is and how it how that interplays with them. And it's like, oh well, then they're going to shake their ass in an office building. Yeah, and, and they seem yeah. to be proud of that Just as a statement. Cry. Yes. What the fuck? It drives me I'm, nuts. It's like, oh, kid, why do you hate yourself so much? I mean, ugh. I mean, all the other male superheroes written by dudes have all had, even like the female ones written by dudes and they've had purpose, stakes, and heroism, and this chick written by a fucking room g gaggle of soy idiots <laughs> and fucking 35 year old losers, and all she does is get drunk, shake her ass, and fuck. It's awful. Well, that was and, gonna say, oh, uh, and, look, and look for Wi Fi. 
And I was gonna say, it's not my fault, Nick, that we've had no law to speak of really at all yet in this stream, but we're getting there. We're gonna get some law yeah. in my episode. Oh god, it's oh, so bad. Uh, because, yeah, that's the other thing. She's a really shit lawyer. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know why they Rushed wanted to... She was nominated for an award. Of the year. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that, too. So much happens this episode. Um, so yeah, uh, we open with some guys robbing a TV, and then they, they are stopped by Leapfrog. He's a, he's a new vigilante, and he's really awkward and terrible, and he doesn't quite get a, anything he wants, and then he activates his boots to get away, his like little jet boots, and uh, they stop working, and he falls, and they set on fire, too. So it's like, that's the start, and he's now with She-Hulk explaining the situation uh, in order to get, like, uh, compensation. He's gonna sue the people who made... The boots, and that ha just so happens to be the same guy who made She-Hulk's outfits. The Jacob something, right? That's his... the Luke so. Jacobson? Yeah. Luke Jacobson? Yeah. This is a really weird way to steal TVs. Yeah, it is. Like, parking way out in front and just not having masks <laughs> and just carrying them out one by one to the van outside. Like, that just seems like Loudly a really... Loudly talking about the also. TV you just fucking stole. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like you wouldn't do it this way. Anecdotally, pole workmen and tree arborists seem to cite nine meters as the cutoff for fatality in a fall. Now, if you look at the screen, look how high oh, he is. is, and then these are two men by here, so we can safely assume that's around about two meters, which means two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, uh, about thirteen meters of a fall he's about to do. He looks mm. like he is pretty darn high. He's dead. He's a corner. <laughs> he is. He is suffering. He is suffering death or serious injuries. Like he, if he if he lived but had serious injuries, I wouldn't have a problem. But he seems to have no repercussions serious, whatsoever from though, this. Serious means bedridden for like the rest of his life. Not definitely. Well, Adam. Bones are broken uh, yeah. for sure. Many. Are. Yeah, bone, at least broken bones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and let's not forget he was set on fire too. <laughs> So, I, yeah, I just thought that was all really funny, that it's just like, we just started episode, can you please <laughs> just calm down? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, she says, this, is a, this seems to be a pretty clear case of manufacturer's defect, negligence, and breach of warranty. Uh, stuff that she wouldn't even know, she hasn't read any of it yet. Um, yeah, what is or warranty ask them any on questions? Checkers? Like, ah, yeah, well, so, so this is the thing. I don't know whether to bring it up now or once we're in the court case, but um, yeah. can we even <laughs> approach this? This is a vigilante who is suing a black market sort of like Edna Mode type character because his outfit wasn't working during his vigilantism when they are designed mm -hmm. to. It's like, is this any of this legal? Are you got? Is this like a drug dealer and the drug <laughs> like guy who's just like, uh, you didn't give me the full amount, uh, police? Can you help me out? It's like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. I think maybe you should sort this between yourselves. Uh, I Yeah, but we'll never know how any of it works. But luckily, I know everyone's saying it. You're all thinking it. The Accords might be able to ha come into this in some way. And you know what? They do. They clear <laughs> everything up. It's going to be great. Yeah? All right. That's yeah. good. The Accords oh. that still exist. Definitely. Um, yeah, so she says, I think, I believe you're owed compensatory damages. And um, uh... this is the thing. It's like... When you consider all of the illegal shit that you think is happening, and you try and throw it out the window, I guess, for this, um, how wouldn't uh, Luke Jacobson be like, he would have been, like, like captured by now, probably. The government would have had many things to say to him. He's making people pee portions of Iron Man suit for free. Well, not for free, as in for, for no, there's no... Con Armor and tools to carry out vigilante work. Yeah, they just need money, um, and then they can do, like, I just don't, I don't think so, um... But, uh, should be yeah. a person of interest at the very least, instead of just being able to do all this. I don't want to say she says all of this is chill before finding out who the manufacturer even is. Like, I was going to say, you know, she hasn't read the warranties. Like, she doesn't even know well, anything about okay, this. Okay, so one thing, one thing that is is right. So there's two types of warranty, right? There's a warranty, like, a, that you buy, some sort of warranty that comes with a product. But there's just a general warranty of an operable and, and serviceable product that you, you, when you buy a book, you expect it to have pages that are printed on, right? Like, so that's, uh -huh. okay. that's the warranty that, that 
that is a sort of default here. unspoken doesn't have to be written kind of right. if, built in. If you warranty. if you buy a bottle of Coke, then you're going to open it up and drink something that tastes somewhere close to what you expect for Coca-Cola. Uh, if you buy a bottle of Coke and, and drink gasoline, then they've breached their warranty to provide you a Coke. So that that's the only minor thing that this show got kind of correct uh, is that that uh, there is a general warranty of of marketability to to a product. And and so I guess by saying this, this is a breach of warranty would would potentially be true. But actually, I don't think that that's the issue here at all. It's not a breach of warranty. They the jet boots function like the the suit does what it's supposed to do but it's and not we ultimately fit for purpose right we 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 ultimately get down to the this this thing which was he used the wrong fuel right and the, the dumb thing is the show resolves this in the wrong way <laughs> you can't just you can't just provide instructions uh you have to provide warnings of what would happen if the thing goes wrong if it's a foreseeable event so the the show actually gets the product's okay. liability wrong and this guy would have a case assuming you could bring a case against a black market uh manufacturer for a potentially illegal product but the idea that so, he okay, so sorry, like if, if the warranty said you cannot use jet fuel and that's all that they said then that's an issue but if it said do not use jet fuel because it causes terrible horrible burns and the suit is not rated for that heat and you'll hurt yourself then he didn't that would say, put him in the clear he didn't, uh, so that uh, if I remember right in the show, he didn't say don't use jet fuel. He said use this type of fuel. Yeah. Right. Well, so, so it's an even more vague instruction. It's like use only this type, use only unleaded gas. I guess, well, okay, go ahead. Well, so here's, here's the thing though. Did Jennifer Walters get to see like the actual like written instructions? No. Like, did she get any documentation no. or paperwork at no. all? No, they, they glossed why she, that. Why would she go to court? Have, like, she doesn't have Because that. she's a bad lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of this would be in. So they they do a tw they do a motion to dismiss for lack of uh, a failure, basically for a failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. And and you would have that motion hearing, but that motion hearing would typically come after some sort of discovery. Like you yeah. would have to turn over those documents. You would have to see the instructions. Um, you would have to see if there was some warranty Wait. or or warning. She would have reviewed all of that stuff. But no, they're just in court like the next day. Again. The show um, keeps doing the thing where, like, they get blindsided in court. Like, they keep getting yeah. blindsided. Like, That's the only drama they can come up with. There's no prep. Courts. Being being right. in a courtroom doesn't involve any, like, preparation. No. None. Or, like, <laughs> research, gathering, but, or reference material. But to get to the finer legal point on a product's liability case like this, if you say, like, let's say for your car, you go, okay, use only unleaded fuel. But if you use unleaded, like they don't say this, but the manufacturer knows if you use unleaded fuel, the car will literally explode and kill a busload full of children next to you. And they, they just say, yeah, use unleaded fuel. And you go and you start driving and your car explodes and kills a busload of children. You're like, I'm going to sue you. And you're like, well, I told you to use unleaded fuel. It's like, well, you maybe could have let me know. That if I don't, it will be a bomb. Like maybe that would be the standard. Right. And that actually is the standard here. So if he says, I told you what, you know, to only use this type of gasoline, it's imminently foreseeable that someone would put a different fuel source into an engine to try and get better performance. That is, that is like a tale as old as engines. Like, well, if it runs on ethanol, maybe it'll run on ethanol plus nitrogen or something like you. Just I mean, look, all the warnings that are on gas station, um, little pumps that uh, that you have the you know either one two three four pumps probably you have your normal gas your unleaded your premium your ethanol and they all they're all full of warnings and they're all full of things and there's the diesel thing too people want to yes. get sued over gas they figure this out you've got to put labels on all that shit it's it's why warning labels are on on products and the warning sections of instruction manuals are so ridiculous and overly written is because once someone has an issue that issue is then foreseeable to the manufacturer and if there's foreseeability they have a duty to warn uh, this one uh, is just generally foreseeable that if you have some sort of engine that takes fuel someone will put a different type of combustible material in it to provide higher performance if the and that that just isn't a, a mystery to anybody um, it's been happening forever. So every manufacturer of an engine would say only use this. And if there was a known issue, like 
it will come, it will explode or you know you'll you'll have an issue that could cause danger they they have to put it on there and it's it drives me crazy that they just automatically won this lawsuit when they actually would have probably lost um which is funny because there's some other things i think they fucked up in it but um we will get there because we got to get a little bit more of the setup which is that she hulk says she can't be doing this one because a conflict of interest the opposing client is her tailor and she likes her clothing there's obviously she says i would be ethically compromised his response is well you did it when it was much more personal before as if that in any way addresses the problem at all like uh, you know that she doesn't think that she can do this impartially, like she can't act in the best interest of her client, which is like, that's your job. It's the important part of like resolving a conflict. Yeah, well, you did it before. Or alternatively, like, alternatively wow. not taking on this person and, and giving them to someone else. And then, um, so and then she's like, yeah, but okay, but I don't want to. And then he says, well, go speak to him and make it so that we don't have to have the case at all. And that's that's all we ever hear about the conflict of interest done well i think it's because the show believes later on well i don't know what the show thinks actually in terms of the conflict and whether it's been resolved or sorted um well and that's the other thing this this episode is breakneck it is absolutely insane we just jump from jump 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 to all the significant scenes because now we're with luke jacobson with she hulk trying to explain the situation and the writers had a challenge we need a very apologetic and helpful she hulk to approach luke jacobson and we need the the conversation to end with them hating each other so that's, mm. that's kind of difficult to do. How do we do it? So uh, she says, someone's basically, like, someone, someone's complaining about your work, but nothing has been filed yet. So legally, you're in some trouble here, but, uh, you know, we're okay for now. We can, we can solve this. And his re response is, my work is impeccable. Like, okay. So she says, yeah, you, your stuff is great. Trust me, I, I, I do not want, like... To, to have to do this and that I, I know that and then he says how can i trust you when you stab me in the back and it's immediately like this is such a jilted conversation it's so weird like like neither character understands what's it, it's just so bizarre like you can't just hand Ugh. and so yeah and she says well there's no lawsuit yet um you just need to provide some level of responsibility for my client's injuries and he just says uh you're not getting anything from me ever again, and destroys this, the thing he's working on for her. And then she says, whoa, 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 I paid for that. And then he says, well, you shouldn't have betrayed me. What is oh, happening? So that's that's she's, probably illegal. She's come to him with, like, a warning ahead of time and a way to solve this earlier rather than having to go to court. And he's like, you've backstabbed me. Um, also, I guess I'm going to steal money from you? Yeah, that too. Why not? And then he's like, you're blocked, blacklisted, and reported. <laughs> and I was, I was just like, I guess we just got to get him in court. That's all this is. Fuck this. They, 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 for this episode, they're going to have a strained relationship because that's what we need to do. And it's like, okay. That was bizarre, and your, uh, your intentions were incredibly clear. But I suppose when they're crunched down this hard for episode time... She may as well have walked in and said, I hate you. And he goes, I hate you too. In the next scene. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. He's just a crazy asshole, basically. And uh, he believes there's no way any of his work could ever be faulty. Sweet. And, and he doesn't even need, like, there's no proof that passes between either of them. This, if anything. Yeah, she doesn't <laughs> show him pictures. She doesn't hand him, I guess, anything. Does he, is he, does he get any documents from her? Well, because so. imagine if she had learned from this point that he had actually used it improperly. Because he says, my work is impeccable. What if she said, well, it exploded. And then he said, well, wait, what happened? Like, did he use the right fuel? And the whole thing changes. Like, yeah. the conversation had played out a little more like it should have. Normally, yeah. Yeah. There's, I don't think there is a document in this show. <laughs> no, it hey, I remember the, how much of like legal stuff one. is. It was just that, pages and pages and pages and pages of documentation. She had an iPad I mean, once that, that had uh, four witness names on it, and she crossed them out true, with a scribble yeah. when when they were done. So that's, that's mm -hmm. no document. questions or anything. No, no, like I mean, not like to, a document. Not to dwell on the yeah. past, but like that that time when they were resolving all of Mister Immortal's uh, settlements. It's like okay, so you have. You have differing settlements with different conditions for different relationships with nine different people. 
and she solved it with one page of a legal pad. And there, it's like the amount of paperwork involved in that, and also the yeah. release from liabilities, uh, the non-disclosure, you know, outside of these limited persons, like all of the stuff that would have to happen um, to make that actually. And again, coming from a firm that is, we're talking, this is the premium law firm in the in the country, in the world, or whatever. Like the amount of paperwork that would be involved in all of this stuff would be mountainous, and there's not yeah, a single piece. <laughs> yeah but that would be boring <laughs> even having them on screen would be boring seeing them on a table would be boring you can't do that people who like this show can't read what's the point that's true See? no response no argument back on that because it's no just the there you go nailed it there we go yeah wait uh, no it, actually it it's not that. the truth <gasps> what? People, what people who like this show don't exist oh <laughs> i think you can find them out there if you go fishing in the distant parts of the world there'll be some guys like yeah that's right I don't Twitter. even think the writers like this show. <laughs> I think they hated it. They're forced like, to do Yeah, this. is this something that they feel proud of making? Do they, do they <laughs> take pride in their work when they were actually making this? Do they look at this they, and go, man, we did something really good here? I think that last episode shows it. Um, so begins the trial. And mm. uh, it's awkward because it just begins with Luke Jacobson has no one representing him. And then they do this thing of like, you gonna represent yourself? And then she hulks like, "Oh my god, get ready to spend all your money!" <laughs> and then he's like, "No, I wouldn't do that because I'm not an idiot." And I genuinely felt like it was the writers being like, "Yeah, she hulk, you idiot lawyer, shut up." Like, even though she's, <laughs> even though he says this to the judge, I'm so confused. I don't know who's what. Why does the show consistently tell me how much of an idiot she hulk is? I'm like, I okay, fine. That it's like also winning best lawyer, best female lawyer ever. And you're like, okay, <laughs> go on. Well, isn't, I don't know, of course, I'm not a, um, a lawman myself. I'm not a, a, a dog of the law. But normally when you have like a court proceeding and stuff like this, do you learn who, who your opposing lawyer is when you get in the courtroom and they walk in? <laughs> there, are, there are some <laughs> weird ways in which you can get close to that. But usually, no. No, the, the normal scope of things would be you would have a very good idea of who you're going to be against, uh, going against because they'd be filing their representations, right? Like, uh, I'm, I'm telling the court that I'm coming before it. Uh, you, but, you know, you could, you could have it where, where people show up and it's like oh, a surprise lawyer because they filed at the last minute right before showing up, what, whatever it is. They got hired that day or they've been working in the background. Um, but there's usually no purpose to any of that. There's no, there is no, the thing that legal drama writers who don't know about law don't ever get is that there's no surprise in court. There isn't this big drama. Uh, there's no like, new evidence at the last second. None of that stuff happens because it doesn't benefit the actual proceeding because the second some big surprise comes along, all you say is, uh, Your Honor, we, we need a little bit of time to deal with this. Can we adjourn today? Can I have seven days? I need to file a written motion to respond to this. Can I have some time? Like you're, And the court's going to say, yes, of course, because they have something else to do. <laughs> the court always has something to do. They're not dependent on your case getting done. So it's like, until you get to an actual trial, Everything is flexible and malleable. There's no grounds or room for surprise. And by the time you're going to trial, everything is known. All of the evidence has been seen by both parties outside of extremely limited incidents. And, uh, and they've developed, not only have they developed theories on how each side is going to use the evidence, they've had big arguments over what evidence will and will not be allowed into the trial leading up to it. And all of that is skipped here to try and make it more of a more dramatic, but it ends up just making it corny and dumb. I, I think it. um you've high, it's it's like they they don't understand that like a court case like these proceedings there is like a procedure that is incredibly important that is like followed because there's like there's there's an objective like with a case to try and run it in a way that is fair that's going to lead to essentially like correct outcomes there's a procedure like you're not yes. yeah you're not just going to get like ambushed in court it's not like some big show performance thing. Like, there's a procedure that you're trying to run through to make sure that everything is proper. Like, it's not a fucking meme, you know? Like, it's... Yeah. Uh, this is MCU. They, 
how could they not afford a single lawyer in a writing room? Like, I don't understand. Even... All you had to do, just get a few hours for each episode with a single professional, right? They couldn't do that. Or, I don't know, maybe they did, but... I just don't think they cared. I was going to say, even high one to ignore really them. just don't care. I just... <laughs> God, yeah, just just one guy to well, be like, "Hey, is this all right?" And he can be like, "No," but carry on. Yeah, they, it's all they could have easily, they could have easily gotten some consultants because, like, this, like some of the best shows have had consultants about you know for the topic that they're, that they're discussing. Like this uh, this one show I used to watch, it was about plastic surgery, and they had a plastic surgeon not only consulting on like the surgeries, but like they were in the cast acting. And then they would they would consult over how the dummies, like the surgery dummies should look, how the actors should move their hands when they're doing surgery, everything. Mm -hmm. And because of that authenticity, the show was more interesting to watch. But I guess, you know, Marvel just doesn't doesn't care about those things anymore. <laughs> the saddest realization is that none of the writers uh, were desirable enough to have gotten into a relationship and gotten divorced before this happens because they would know about all the paperwork. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it like a meme in Hot Fuzz? Like, they keep talking about how the, one of the main characters is very obsessed with, like, cops doing awesome and fun things, action-packed, like, explosions, beating bad guys. And then uh, Simon Pegg's whole thing is like, you have no idea how much paperwork there is. Like, that's cops. That's not even law. Like, there's shit tons of red tape. There's shit tons of approving and putting in for things and keeping record of everything. And just the parts that they don't want you to know about. But, like, to the point where you run a whole law show, there's just, like, barely any paper to be seen. It's like, all right. You do you. Um, it's reams and reams and reams and time. Reading through everything. Sifting through everything. I mean, this product's liability thing that they did would have been huge. First of all, it would have been a mountain of medical bills. Because the the one thing we can't figure out is, like, what what injury did he sustain? Did they even say? Like, uh, third, third degree, degree burns. burns on his legs. Uh, third degree burns on his legs. Like, the guy's, like, walking. I guess he was in, was he in a wheelchair? I no. Mean, I can't even remember. I think the meme oh, is he's just... that he's kind of partially faking it because he has his legs up at the beginning uh, on the oh, table. It doesn't give can, a shit. And you she's... get that checked, right? The... Yeah, you... She if you don't have the and... medical records, you're not going to get compensatory damages because you, the compensatory you damages, you have the thing. Yeah, they're doing the meme yeah. um, where, you know, like Lionel Hutz or whatever type of lawyer in a comedy show will be like, let's put a, um, you know, a neck brace on you. Let's, you got to start walking with a limp. You got to, like for civil cases and stuff to just, just yeah. walk like you, you really, really hurt. They're doing that, I think. To... But you also have to get medical bills. Like you have to yeah. get those bills to prove your damages. Like the 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 whole like the limp thing is usually for an insurance claim. Like oh, you get you get some CD doctor to say oh yeah, here you go, and now you can turn this over yeah. to your insurance, and then you better you better not look, uh, you better not be out lift like doing deadlifts or whatever with your hurt back, because then they'll cancel the chiropractic care that you said you needed for the rest of your life. But um. But in this one, again, getting into that courtroom and on that motion to dismiss, like, I guess they should have a motion to dismiss if there's no damage. Like, if they don't have any medical records, if they don't have a history of uh, the examination, the surgeries required for third degree burns. I don't know if people know this, but you don't just heal from third degree burns. That's what makes them third degree. Serious, like, yeah. You, you serious. tend to need severe help with those. Um, so you'd, you'd have tons of documentation and then you'd have to have expert testimony about the, uh, about the actual like lasting trauma that he would have suffered. And believe me, I, I would think falling from like 16 or 17 meters out of the sky onto pavement would leave serious, serious trauma, uh, that he would need therapy for. And this is the stuff they should have laid out like, okay, so you got your psychi uh, psychiatrist report, you got your bills all lined up. Like, bring a big stack of stuff to the table. This is what we're going to hit you with on damages. Like, put that in the show. Because the, if you want to have any legal drama at all, people watch legal drama all the time. Just give us the reasons to, like, have an air of believability about it. No. Any. Fun. <laughs> having fun. No. Speaking of, I mean, yeah, because that's not even the first thing. Oh, wait, go ahead. Because I was going to move on. Mm, nothing. Go Too on. late. You already started, and I'm gonna force it out of you. I mean, what what about Jen's dating life then? What are we gonna do about that? Well, we, the, we need to cover it. Most interesting part of the show. I I still think it would. I would have been more interested if it was um, 
maybe just the one dude that she gets to know over the, the show and then he betrays the fuck out of her and that he faked being interested in uh in Jen. And the well that and she helped. too much. Just just Yeah, just instead build of him being up. one of you know And you know what? You don't even need to make him like make him really normal. And he's just really nice to her. Yeah. And then it turns out he works for intelligentsia. Yeah. And he's like, Yeah, I'm sorry, but I mean and, and maybe even do the thing where he kinda likes her before he has to betray her. Yeah. That Josh guy had a potential to do that, but there was just a montage of him and they just got rid of him afterwards. Yeah. It was just so poorly done. It was really the, weird what the that he character. Didn't... He didn't show up again. It's really, really odd that that it's like they lost yeah. the actor or something. I mean, it he was does not feel like that in the last episode. Mm. Exactly. Where you was you he? don't have that moment where she meets up with Josh again with all like he's he should be a member of the group. I would think like I in the think. crowd. He was a high. No, like a... no reconciliation of any single thread in the entire show. You the know reconciliation what? of the the last thread is is fucking daredevil who she meets in the last episode or or the next to last episode that's it that's that's the whole payoff it's like what was the rest of the season for one of my favorite things is that remember we watched the first episode and the the way she turns into a hulk i remember i said i wonder if that spaceship is gonna be brought up again <laughs> and well um uh kind of yeah. kind of so much for that yeah, no, uh, well, there's something else as well that uh, I can't wait to talk about, because let's just say at one point it was said that she's obviously going to realize what she said to Bruce was wrong, and that there's going to be a reconciliation and understanding there. We're running out of time, show. I hope we're going to get it within these last two episodes. I'm sure we will. <laughs> running out of time, though. You see, because uh. that's that same cope, and I feel bad, in a sense, for a lot of people who are like, don't worry, if this episode wasn't so great, they're gonna, it's going to recontextualize it as we go on. It's like, no. I don't know. I feel like some shows earn that sort of confidence yeah. that they're going to do something with the things that they've set up. But this show, like, pretty well, early having on, having earned like, confidence, nah. it's not very empowering. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> That's yeah, I suppose. So, uh, we, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Daredevil's here, uh, Mr. Matt. He's Madoff. here. Yeah. Yay! And they, every scene, every they even scene. Have what feels like a soap opera sort of like reveal for him the camera mm -hmm. zooming in Very on the dramatic. doors and then the music's really like cheesy and he's just like i am yeah. here it's like yeah i'm here like he doesn't say just... that enthusiastically he just says i'm here uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... i love him for that <laughs> I... yeah like it was kind of uh, i just want him to escape dread. i don't want him to have to be here yeah, it's just <laughs> this constant sense of dread with every scene it's like what are you gonna do to him Leave him be. <laughs> oh boy, do we get off to a really good you know? start. He wants to, before uh, we address the overall case, we want to address a portion of it being that uh, She-Hulk has requested the client list for Luke Jacobson's uh, work in order to contact them all and ask if they've experienced any injuries. So, uh... Oh, sorry, I feel like we, we skipped over something that I wanted to highlight. Like, because Matt, as soon as he comes in, he, he basically, like, lays out his claims he's going to make for his client. And Jennifer calls him an asshole. It's like he's just yeah. doing his job. Mm -hmm. What's up like, with what? that? Oh well, yeah. that's, that's like, literally how dare this person me? me. I think I think she hates competency. It's like this this disgusting. Mm -hmm. But it's just thing. like you know what he's doing. He's just representing his he's client. Doing you. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing, doing yeah. I mean, he's it's doing fun, what she okay. would she would do if she was actually a good lawyer. Yeah, yeah. like more uh, competent. Yeah, just call him an asshole. It's like he's just doing his job. Like calm down. Yeah, he says um, he's he a wants, guy. He wants to ask the motion to compel the production <laughs> of the defendant's client list be rejected as it's irrelevant. She says it's relevant for the other injuries. He says his record is spotless, which is like really weird to make as a claim when that's what she wants to find out. Whether or not the oh, record also, is spotless. Um, and he's like, it just is, trust me. And it's like, okay. This is another part that they got completely wrong. Of course that client list would be disclosed. Would be disclosed. Of course it will. Uh, it may be marked attorney eyes only. So the the kid uh, that she's representing may not get oh, to see okay. it. Oh, okay. Nobody so else a, not, get to see it. Not open to the public. Right. This happens okay. all the time when there's a business secret to protect. But well, maybe we should generally... Um, before you go on, we right. have to give the content. Because yeah. they do kind They give a little bit on this, but then they get to the big reason. So uh, he says it's an invasion of privacy. She said it's not privacy. It's not like a privacy thing when it's... Taylor's customers, this happens like all the time and blah blah blah. 
And then he says, not when these people are superheroes that necessitate anonymity. The Sokovia Accords have been repealed. <laughs> so this, if I can get all of the nerd shit out of the way, uh, Rikita, then we'll let you oh, yeah. go on the law shit. Yeah, so yeah. nerd shit is, they forgot what the Sokovia Accords even are, uh, awkwardly. Absolutely they scene. did. So yeah. they've they've confused them with what the they comic were in the ones. comics, like yeah. the alternative superhero registration thing. In the comics, as far as I understand it, yeah, that's that's the idea is that everybody's the, gonna the comics is um you basically are gonna sign up as like a, a member of Shield. Like you gotta give you gotta give them your name, you gotta give them a bunch of information, then you'll operate underneath Shield. Uh the accords are obviously different. And the um, uh, and yeah, like just a super simple version is just you're operating as a hero. You give up what your name is. You, you that that in the comics, and that causes this a split down the middle. And uh, isn't one of the biggest like moments of all of that Spider-Man being revealed? Um, uh, I, he he reveals himself to say like, "This is right. Like I'm gonna throw my hat in this arena." But then shit goes bad, and then he changes his mind. Yeah, because um, um, of course, like a lot of comics, right? The big thing with the secret identity thing is you know like the consequences for them and their their loved ones. So, in, so, like, that's what's more relevant in the comic. In the movie adaptation, it wasn't going to work quite as well uh, to do it that way. They clearly changed it because they're trying to find a way to better split uh, the Avengers into two teams. And so what it is in the movies is of those who are known and operate very publicly and even with the assistance of the government, uh, they now need to go once they're approved or they need to wait until whatever they like, like their orders may be from a unified council that will be created via the the uh the un yeah a un um, like group and yeah. the way that it's sold in the film is just that something's gotta give we had to do something it's really difficult to have any kind of system that can control this many superpowered and sometimes alien beings all over earth who just decide whether or not they're going to save people and they don't care oftentimes what they leave behind them when they do so so something's got to happen with the government. Civil War was clearly a response to the idea that this has gotten out of control. Like, phase three is just like, the world doesn't give a shit anymore. And what they could have done is what we've done now, which is that, uh, you know, it's whatever now. You can do whatever you want, fuck it. But back in phase three, they did have a thing of like, we're going to try and make a world for this. We're going to try and make it work, have repercussions. Um, I think there's loads of discussion to be had about the Sokovia Accords. I think they're really interesting. Um, but the main thrust of them is that superheroes shouldn't just be allowed to be Team America. Uh, that's the, the world police, just do whatever they want, wherever they want. That can't stand. There has to be something that happens. And so they try to implement it, and then Cap is like, no fucking way any government should be the one that decides what superheroes are doing with their power when it relates to saving people's lives. That's fucked up. And then Iron Man is like, if we don't at least somewhat agree with them on this, then we're going to be hunted down and put in prison. Um, and we can't save people's lives then. So... You would rather compromise and then uh, operate within that limit while Cap is like, absolutely not, because that's not principled. We have to just absolutely... Like, and, and of course, the result is Iron Man works under the thumb of the government for the next few years that we don't really see, but Cap is a vigilante and he runs the, uh, I guess, the underground Avengers. Well, you secret Avengers, I suppose, yeah, if we, you want to... We oh, deserved yeah. to get that movie, but we didn't. Yes, we did. Um, and of course, in Infinity War, then it's it's those Avengers. They put like a beard on Falcon. You get like different hair color for Black Widow. It's very different. Great. Um, but now the Sokovia Accords have apparently been repealed because they've only ever gotten in the way. Which correct me if I'm wrong, but they were referenced in One Division as being active, weren't they? Uh, I think they were. But so, I mean, it's it's like you pointed out. The problem was so, well, so this is this is worth expanding on. If you take them seriously as an element in in the world of the story that you're trying to tell. The Sokovia Records present a lot of opportunities uh, narratively, like uh, like for a wide variety of different characters in terms of different power levels or like different stakes of the story. Like in the hands of a writer who recognizes the opportunity that exists in what you could call a restriction in a sense. There's like a lot. There's a lot of material to be pulled from it, but uh, yeah. in the hands of a less competent writer the Accords would be seen as uh, something that impedes the ability for you to do basically whatever you want. It was inevitable. It was only a matter of time. And, like, when you think about Phase 4 and how, like, absolutely ridiculously high stakes so many of these stories have been without any consideration for, like, the implications of that, it was a matter of time. It was only a matter of time until it was like, they don't exist anymore. They're done. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. Uh, and, and it, you know, it's, it's worth considering 
the accords were made in response to the events that had led up to civil war which you know there were some pretty high stakes things there like with ultron and uh, and whatnot um but think about like everything that's happened after that you had the snap like you had that the event was decided to bring people back that was to their it, choice exactly on their own without consulting anybody or working out any plans in yeah. terms of that you've had everything that happened in in one division doctor strange the falcon winter soldier stuff like you had all of that happen as well um it's like there's a there was a celestial just poking out of earth yep like from this superhuman group that's existed for a long time that went completely under the radar um what what other fucking no shit? accountability oh, Thor, Love and Thunder. like all of the like think about how well, much I've, I've got a, no way no way home the spell to wipe here. out people's fucking oh, yeah, memories no home, of course. Well, yeah in our in our Moon chat night. i posted uh something I that do. someone had mentioned it, it was got, a kaiju fight like yep. <laughs> egypt well, we have Black Widow in the Red Room, uh, Hawkeye going out on well, his spree. Was, well, yeah, right. Uh, oh, yeah, right, kind of, Ronan, yeah, that's right. Uh, Wanda, yeah, Falcon and Bucky on the mission without any authorization and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Strange for the Eye Monster battle. Uh, Sophistic Autistic sent me this little list here. Um, wizards are a thing and no one cares. Nope. Uh, yeah. All the shit that happens in Miss Marvel, which I just don't know anything about that show whatsoever. Um, uh, Kate Bishop blew up a building in Hawkeye. And Thor gets his own country and can make an army like he did with the kids in Thor 4. Yeah, yeah. and so, like, the, the the world that exists now in the MCU is leagues more chaotic than the world that existed when, in Civil War, it seemed that the world yeah. needed to respond to what was happening. Oh, it's, it, Moon no, Knight. Yeah, the Kaiju <laughs> fight. And it was the yeah. Kaiju fight in Egypt. Like, it's... It, it is, it is ridiculous. They said before the show came out, we're going to address the Accords. This was it. This was it. They yeah, don't exist anymore. They said they've been repealed. In one line and near the end of the season, Daredevil says they've been repealed. They've been repealed. And that's they the don't thing. Moving anymore. on. What, what should have happened was just always building on what uh, Civil War set. You get pushed back, amendment. Uh, someone wanted me to mention is like uh, Iron Man did suggested immediately that there would be amendments. They would change as much as they could to make it better and easier. But also the fact that Iron Man was always when I said working under the government, what I meant I didn't mean to say that uh, he was working according to whatever they wanted. I meant under he would never go against them publicly, but he breaks immediately from what they want. Uh, but that's that's Iron Man's whole thing. He's like, yeah, sure, thumbs up government. But if ever they tried to stop him from doing anything he felt he should do, he would just do it anyway. Which to him is better. Yeah, he's, it's like I don't have yeah, to be hunted by the more government. Pragmatic about it. Yeah, but Cap is like, no, I'm gonna be honest. There's yeah. no, you're not controlling me. It's simple and as simple. And you that. can understand why he has that principle. Exactly. Position. Um, I love. Civil War was really good. I don't. I, you know, I've I've been critical of the movies that come before them, but both Age of Ultron, Iron Man three, and um, uh, Winter Soldier. I think all of them are really important for making Civil War as strong as it is. Um, yeah. They they all the benefit. Biggest... The biggest lie of this show is that there's some Kevin green lighting everything or just controlling or there's anyone in control of this and is just managing all the decisions because it's, it's not. Yeah, okay. there's no captain to this it's ship of writers. Yeah. Everyone's just sort of yeah. doing their own thing. They're tugging on this <laughs> sail. They're lowering this gangplank and no, no one's no one's where it's like they're they're not working on the same project. Yeah. The amount of just control that these writers were given over the world of MCU is just mind-boggling. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot comprehend it. Just how much they, how much power they were, they were given. I mean, Hulk is basically unusable after this. I cannot imagine what, what they're gonna do with him after this. No, imagine if anybody. Imagine if anybody had tried to stop them from fucking up the universe. Like, imagine if anybody had said, no, you can't do that. It's like, oh, 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 this is yeah. telling a bunch of women what they can and can't write about a woman's show. You're going to limit our creative talents <laughs> to just what you think the universe should be. It would have been a disaster. They'd be terrified of telling these people what to do. You know, for a fact, when they said, uh, can we just say the accords have been repealed, that all the other people were just like, the accords? Yeah, the, like the, the Hondas? They had... <laughs> and they go, the well, we're, you know, there were those things where they yeah. said, like, heroes can't, and canon can't do certain things. Like, oh, that was, that was like phase three, dude. That's fine. On. 
Um, so yeah, really bad for the will that they did that. It, it's not even the thing they think it is, because she wants a client list to give identities away, and he's referencing the Accords. The Accords only mattered to the heroes that had already come out. The Vigilante heroes obviously wouldn't have given a fuck about the Accords, because they can't even sign. They just, they, they're out there doing their thing. You know, like, what do the Accords yeah. mean to Daredevil, for example? It's like, nothing. He's, he's, yeah, that could be part of just how does writing. yeah it's not the even idea of Daredevil, you know, dealing with the Accords. That could be like in a TV show. Well, something that could be really great is like imagine if what happens is that we get to see like the nature of how the Accords trickle down. So like the Accords are like a UN thing, and then there'd be like federal jurisdiction and then state jurisdiction, and maybe it's like the police that Daredevil encounters will often just, like, through, basically protect him from the bureaucracy because they find him, like, beneficial to them. And imagine if you explored that yeah. as an element, and then things go awry, and then it fucks up. It's like, no, we've got to come down on you now. Yeah, like, just, you crossed the line, you screwed up. Make it as clear um, as I can, Daredevil is 100% vigilante. Then they introduce this thing where they're like, people like Iron Man who operate with assistance from the government, they may now have to sign this so that they can't just do whatever they want, otherwise they'll be put in jail, and if you read between the lines, become a vigilante at that point. Daredevil's like, oh, I already am, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, and, like, this is not shitting on Daredevil, because I like him, or whatever, but daredevil's superpower is distilled down to concepts like he has no fear uh he's a blind guy who can see but basically just some heightened sensory perception and 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 no fear or regard for his own personal safety right like daredevil isn't uh, using a, a suit that fires plasma cannons out of it <laughs> or can fly true, and take down an true. airplane well, that's, the, um, that's why i think you'd be able to get away with people not looking into him too much uh, for right. a while, which yeah. they could have taken advantage of, but they didn't. So the Accords wouldn't ever met, like, even it, assuming the Accords were relevant and even applied to Vigilantes, Daredevil would just be, he'd just be like a normal, he comes across as a normal guy who's just highly skilled. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying, like, he probably wouldn't even yeah. register on the on the main people that go, like, when you have someone like a, um, a Thor, it's like, holy right. fuck. Can call yeah, thunder like, um, and lightning down from the heavens to destroy cities. Yeah. Uh, well, but I, himself, I can essentially, yeah. I can hear so well that I can see. It's like, oh, hot damn! I'll take the, <laughs> I'll take the thunder, please. <laughs> you know, there's something to be said about Venture Bros and how they kind of try and have their little rules and groups of evil and power levels and arts. There's, I, I don't know much of the details about it. I've only seen you know a certain amount of the show, but. You see stuff like that, and it's like, man, like the parodies of these things are doing better to try and explain it than the real thing is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's making heroes up. They're uniformly bad at explaining this stuff now, um, at least here, but in the hand waving away of the accords. But real quick on that client list thing, there's just one more legal aspect of it. Mm -hmm. If Jen was a competent attorney at all, she would say <laughs> yes, uh, or uh, if the Zakovia Accords or the the secret identities of of these particular clients mattered, say yes. Actually, as She Hulk, I run the superhero division at uh, GLK or whatever. We clearly understand the necessity of discretion, and we'd be certainly willing to take the client list for discovery purposes and have it marked attorneys uh, attorneys eyes only. We know all about privacy, the necessity of it. We specialize in these people. We're the only firm, maybe on earth, that would be specifically suited to handle this client list, like that. It's worth considering because uh, if we go with their take that no, you can't absolutely because of revealing identities potential or whatever. It's like so you can just abuse those people infinitely. Then there's no way to stop you because you'll just use the uh, privacy thing every time, right? You could sell right. them literally acid and they could die, but it's like well, you'll never know who it was because you can't because identity protection. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's it's just silly. The idea that you can't mount a competent case. Uh, that you can't you can't develop a witness. The reason you want the client list is because you want a witness list. You want to go and and get a statement from every single one of those clients. Say, hey, hey, have you ever, uh, have you ever had a problem with your with your thing? What if someone else had uh, a suit that was built by this guy, and maybe it had a flamethrower thing, and he he told them to put the wrong propellant in it, and so then the flamethrower uh, arm attachment blew up and and destroyed their wrist. Uh, or made them have to lose an arm or whatever. What if that had happened? 
that would be a perfect person to say, yeah, this person has, uh, they, they clearly know about products liability. They know that the risks of combustion, uh, that this should have been on there. This is relevant to this case specifically. And you'll never know because, oh, well, we got to keep that client list private. No way does this happen in a courtroom. Nothing is secret. When you get sued, nothing is secret. Even your secrets aren't secret. They just may be protected at a higher level, but everything is open to the other side. In a situation like this, we have Leapfrog, who I assume cannot be anonymous, so he doesn't care about anonymity because the fact that he's in a courtroom doing all these things means that he's, you know, yeah. his name is out there legally. We have a guy who makes suits for vigilantes, one of which is there in the room whose identity that you know. And so I assume they know what he does. He makes suits for vigilantes, and that's just a thing you're allowed to do, providing you people allowed, yeah. with suits, with the express, you know, wh whose expressed intentions are to be vigilantes. Uh, and, and all of this just sort of is not even addressed. We don't even talk about it. And there's not even a conflict of, yes, someone used a Mr. Thompson was his name Jacobson 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 one of one of the you know your clients who has a suit by you he he did some really bad things so you know what what happens now but like, imagine right. it was discovered that his fucking lawyer is one of his customers who's desperately trying to keep all of this a secret and that um the other another one of his customers Ooh. who is on a very like you know talk about conflict of interest he also like hates that could be cool there's so much shit going on here that's it's so difficult to unravel. Yeah, yeah. Daredevil is like, oh, I he makes suits for you know, like me, and I do the job that I do. But you know, he's trying to, you know, do the justice system thing, do the court stuff. But also, he knows, you know, in you know, in the in the shadows, like this guy makes the suits for us, and he, that's duh. So we got to try and keep that away from the limelight. I gotta be interesting. There's a like, there's a lot of interesting things you could do with what with kind of all of the players that you've introduced the idea that you have essentially an edna mode character who makes suits for superheroes and that's a super weird gray area or he, or he only uses an alias um and maybe he is a clothier or i assume is someone who makes clothes but but that's just a front for their superhero you know clothing all of this could be a really legitimately neat story, especially if the whole season was couched around this one ongoing case that could develop a little bit every episode instead of just three minutes and it's done. Oh my gosh, y mm -hmm. yes. And, th and think about what they could do with the tension of her being delivered the client list and seeing Matt Murdock on it. Yeah, and then, yeah. but, but having to keep it a secret, having to keep it a secret from her client, having to keep it a secret from the rest of the law firm, having to keep it a secret from everybody, having to go into that courtroom knowing that that, that probably not knowing that he's daredevil, but just knowing that he is on the list and going, oh my God, what is my, what if he can read my mind? What if he can do this? What if he has some sort of ability to, to hear our conversations that we're having about this. It would create so much dramatic tension to have to deal with another superhero lawyer, remembering that she is a superhero lawyer, oh, but yeah. for completely different reasons. The and they just drop all of that for like, no, we'll hand wave away this issue because we're retarded and we don't understand it. And also because we, we are allergic to anything approaching any sort of dr actual drama. I didn't I, recognize story... opportunities, you know. Go for oh, absolutely not. Yeah. But just the, the idea that you'd mentioned, the idea that you have a character who is a superhero who can read minds, but he's a lawyer and he can't just use that in court. So he knows what people are literally thinking in a courtroom and he knows who is guilty or not. But he has to be able to present this. You know, how do you use that in the legal or ethical way? Hey, That's its own. You yeah. should you should watch Daredevil. You should watch, oh, you should watch oh the show Daredevil. <laughs> oh, I've heard, it, I've heard um, it's pretty good. Yeah, and what you would just highlight there, I'm just, I'm just picturing it out. It's like, imagine they have this big old, like, back and forth on behalf of their clients, when in re actuality they're advocating for their own positions on how superheroes should maybe operate between the two of them in terms of being public slash known as who you are. And then as they're arguing, they both recognize because of the released information, at least privately, they both know that they both know that he is a superhero. And so, like that tension being present on both their faces as they argue on behalf of other people, but for things that they both actually believe in. in, in and a, it's a wider case as well. Yeah, you're right. Like With a bit more time and talent, this could become much more interesting. Um, and it could also be really funny. Like, so this is, this is a, supposed to be a comedy show, and comedy has lots of forms, but 
when you have this dramatic tension between the two where it's it's between Matt Murdock, uh, Jen Walters and the audience that they all know that they all like we all know that they know about each other, then the the way they frame and phrase things in court can be rife with jokes, especially if they start looking into each other. Like Matt Murdock would have an advantage because he'd know about all of her antics and she wouldn't know about his. Um, so she'd be trying to figure out who he is the whole time, but he could take pointed jokes and lines at her all, all throughout his uh, questioning of witnesses and stuff like that. And it would be, that's funny. That's interesting. That's character development. And nope, we'll just, nope. no, why would we, why would we take any time doing this? And the dumb thing is it'd probably be easier than coming up with the bullshit that they had because it, it writes itself because it's just humans figuring each other out. Yeah. Um, and God, y'all make me invest in a, in an episode in a show that does not even exist. <laughs> that was really cool. Uh, the other thing I was gonna try and highlight, uh, there, um, there were the like the reason he says the accords have been repealed is to support the idea that heroes' identities shouldn't be just revealed like arbitrarily almost. But the the fact mm -hmm. is, like, uh, I think that if, say, for example, Vision. He, that was his like superhero form and that you could undo it and be like normal Bob from down the street or whatever as, as far as the government knew and with the accords as, as, at least the way they presented them in Civil War I don't think it was anything about giving up your name publicly it was more so the the UN would have to approve of whether or not you are allowed to as part of the Avengers or whatever group name they're going to give it at that point uh, on missions or not I don't think there was anything about like you have to give up your identity this is why I get confused as to what they think the Accords were, and what the Accords actually were. It seems more like what we were just talking about with, um, if anything, if you were registered on there and they forced you to use your details like as they relate personally, it wouldn't just be revealed to the public. It's that governments have um, maybe private access to that, but simultaneously the, the main thing is who, where your power gets spent is the idea, not necessarily what your identity is. Yeah, they have to have tabs on yeah you know, where you're using your power. So if something goes wrong, they you know are aware about it. Oh, um, but the thing is, yeah, we only got the one movie for the Accords. Every other movie didn't care. So it's just like, well, I mean, I say that Infinity War and Endgame like pretended they cared a little bit, like a like a little. Pretending Endgame, to care is I don't a step think Endgame. Nah, I said Endgame pretended. No, I don't think I don't think Endgame pretends to care. Like, en does where did they ever? Does. Wait. Which which scene would we be? I can't remember. Did fuck was there like a scene where they actually mentioned that? Or? Oh, not the, not mentioned. I mean the 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 plot line, if you will, because it involves Cap and Iron Man. Like the, the the argument, of course, is that Thanos was successful because of everything that. Fell oh right, yeah, 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 sure. Like that's, so, there's still there's remnants. That. Um, I guess what I meant was that there's absolutely nothing by way of their plan and how that would factor into the Accords or, like, the consequences of their actions. Well, and I think that, as you point out in your video, and we've all agreed on, it's just, like, that they, they barely handle the breach between those two characters at all anyway. So, like, they didn't even do no, the character they stuff, let alone the will-building stuff. Mm -hmm. They didn't give a fuck. Because it's hot. Yeah, and who gives a shit? But they did pretend a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then Phase 4 started. Yeah, that's one of the nah, yeah, yeah, no, no mention to the government about doing the time heist or the second snap because they're just really good Because, people. you know, it would be really helpful for the governments to not know when half of their population is No preparation is for the incoming no, yeah. billions of people. Who cares? Well, for the incoming many crises, like the food crisis, the economic that would, crisis. That would be something, though, the, that scene where the Avengers are talking about, all right, so when we're done, which parts do we tell the government that we did? You know, like, do uh, we tell them that time travel is just like a thing we could do? Or maybe do we, like, not even mention that that was done in the first place? So well, stuff I think like that, that. I think we got to presume they kept it because they're not telling anybody about that because they're never going to use time travel again. Its purpose is being fulfilled, so it's never going to come up. Let's make a fucking again. existential crisis it'll create for everyone if they realize well, that time travel is a thing that you could do. Oh, rags the many existential crises. <laughs> the, oh, like, oh, it, this is the show for existential crises. A, a, we'll a get there. Purple, a big purple man got some stones and yeeted half of all life. And you have, and that, <laughs> that's just the thing that happens in this world. <laughs> also, just all of time, it. <laughs> time travel is a thing. Yeah, time travel. Time is a travel thing. is also, a thing. It could be done. Like, hey, you, undo you things. We went over shape-shifting like, aliens that could commit that's fraud. Right. That's right. Yeah, 
That changes a lot. And that isn't even counting the other shape-shifting That's aliens that commit the fraud. Scrolls, which I guess the world may well find out about in, in yep. the show, Secret Invasion. And then just wait till you read Kang and find out about all the things he's done. <laughs> like... The, the influence that he's had on every single decision you made ever, that you have no choices, they were all Kang. And all of that isn't counting what happens in the finale. No, I've... Oh. <laughs> the the no. piece de resistance. No. Um, it is said that, uh, you know, that all that shit with the Accords, and then um, this guy is like, he lifts up his suit, and he's like complaining. He's like, come on, I, I, I can't use this, damn it, blah, blah, blah. And then um, the Devil's like, Sniff, sniff, what fuel did you use? And he's like, jet fuel. And then he's like, that's not what the instructions right. say. By the way, when I heard that, I was like, what What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super that's super smell, right? Effect. That's super smell. Yeah, but like, yeah. I know that. Well, then again, I guess they're like, well, not everybody knows freaking golf. It's like, I don't know, just exactly. maybe leave it up to people. Let people figure out how he figured it out if they didn't so, know. It's comedy. But anyway, right, yep. he lifts it up and says, yeah, yeah, I put jet fuel in, and then he, he says that, and then uh, Jacobson says, that's not what my instructions say, and the fucking judge just goes, if the plaintiff ignored the explicit instructions, then the plaintiff is absolved of all liability, case dismissed, or uh, I, I, the, the, the it, defendant. It's um, over. That's and, it. <laughs> so, how the fuck is this not something that needs to be like figured out in like evidence how is this absolute i guess is my point because yeah. what if what if i ignore mcdonald's recommendation to like wait two minutes to let the coffee cool down and i drank it but i almost die because it's poisoned it's like yeah you ignore the destructions but i i have a feeling that there's more to it than that you know like just because he put jet fuel in it doesn't mean he has zero case it depends on well, no. what else is going on more like court cases last 10 minutes or oh. less than that, actually. It's more like I was, three. <laughs> when the judge just goes, uh, fr from like what could be considered just a casual comment, you have no idea what's Back happening. Forth, what if he yeah. doesn't even know what jet fuel is and he just thought it was, but he actually put the correct fuel in and he well, just yeah, like, it it well, cool. uh, None of this has been checked, yeah. but we're supposed to believe that the judge is just like, nope, I understand everything perfectly. Case dismissed. And this is all stuff that apparently She Hulk did not know. She didn't check. Uh, no, because yeah. she's. She's a very good lawyer. Absolutely worth it. Right. She was, she was too busy twerking with Red oh, and the Stallion. That was worth it. <laughs> like, she didn't even ask him any questions about his use of the thing. When like, did you buy the suit? What did you put it in? Do you have the instructions? What were you told? How do you use yep. it? When? What? What? What were you doing? What is the, all this stuff? Yep. Were what, you given like, the instructions? Where in the instructions is the warning? Is the warning in all capitals? Is it indicated by a, a particular caution type signal? Is there any indication that this is an extremely important part of the operation of this product? Uh, exactly. <laughs> and I'm saying, like, a car can break down, you go, because you put the wrong fuel in it. It's like, okay, but also there's no wheels. That's got to be relevant, right? And you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. But you put the wrong fuel in there. It's like, you gave me a car with no wheels. That's what I'm complaining about. Not the fuel thing, because that's that could easily be the case, but nobody cares. Everybody, we just move on. It's done. It's like oh, and again because mm. of how quick this episode is, um, and everything's running it, that you get the point of this scene, which is uh, she says, "Are you still gonna make my dress?" And I kid you not, these this is the dialogue. I won't be your tailor because I hate you now. <laughs> and also, like we're talking about priority, you just, you just fuck this case, and you're there like, "Hey, but you're still gonna make my suits, right?" It's like. What about, like, your client, who you failed? Like, <laughs> seriously, when, when he said... Yeah, yeah, but fuck him. When he said, I hate you now, I was like, oh shit, they left the post-it note of the point of the scene instead of the dialogue. Like, the point yeah. is that he hates her now, in this scene. Not mm -hmm. You're not supposed to have him hey, fucking say it. Subtext be damned. What is that? Subtext is boring. <laughs> it's like, whatever. It's like paperwork. People who like this show wouldn't get subtext. They literally wouldn't understand it. Wouldn't see the point of it. They wouldn't uh, notice it to even know they didn't notice it. So then, She Hulk meets up with Matt in the bar, and it's like, uh, fine. Here we go. Whatever, it's yeah. the lawyer bar. And then she, yeah, she says, "You made my dumb client admit to being even dumber than I thought he was in court. How did you know about the jet fuel?" And uh, I think you said it right. It's just like, is that is that is that normal? You just sort of shit on your for, own clients, like yeah, for same. lawyers to talk. Like, I don't know if it's a thing that they do, a, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge thing, but like, wow, you're being a, you're constantly seeming to be a dick to the clients of yours. A they bit. pay you a lot of money to, you know, and stand up for them and I'm court. sorry, but how is she contextualizing this as strictly her client being an idiot? It's like, Jen, 
There was another idiot in that room, I think. Uh, mm. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and and again, it it's gonna lead back to the the irony of this show. The irony of the show is that the villains of the show's weapon against her is that she's a whore. Um, and the defense <laughs> yes, is nah. -uh. It, the, the defense of it is nah, -uh, but the reality is yeah, because -huh, every guy who even looks at her, she's immediately trying to bang. Imme like Im well, I don't even know why. Because that's the end of this episode. But that is that it. I like this. This was spreading a line uh, all over Twitter. I was seeing it because like people would just be like, it, "Was that was Intelligentsia's ultimate plan to say she sleeps around?" It's like, yeah, that was it. I mean. She does. You guys to, miss, which is fine, which is fine. But like, you guys miss villains that like, right. had plans of some kind. Not the yeah. one just like I'm gonna get your sex tape. Like, okay. <laughs> you got a modern modern weapon for a modern battlefield. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we we shall get there eventually. As as you can see, this episode, lots of stuff happens, so it's uh, mm -hmm. taking a little longer. But um, yeah, he says there's the whole one for one for them, one for us thing, so that he can look after the little guy who needs help, but also pay the bills. Um, and he basically just he just tells Jen what the point of his show is, and that uh, <laughs> I, she should do better. I feel like it's worthwhile to line up the dialogue though, because Matt's like, yeah, yeah. no, I I do a lot of my cases pro bono, uh, but you know, I got to take on bigger clients like Jacobson so that I can keep doing that. And I think her first response is like complaining about the job that she accepted and how that's all of the clients it's like oh man my job that pays me tons of money like that's but what i, I have agreed to do uh, yeah it's it's just this I really funny so contrast yeah she's incredibly she... annoying to listen to <laughs> but I, they don't, I, just, I don't think they realize like kind of just how stark it is when you lay it out yeah i like take a lot of cases and i don't get paid because i want to help people it's like yeah, man, at the job that pays me a lot of money, I'm just always like taking on these cases for these jerks. It's like, <laughs> like okay. Do you think the bartender who works at Legalese like fucking hates lawyers? Like these people are pieces of shit. Constantly <laughs> yeah. talking about how they awesome come here they are. and they talk crap about all the people that you know pay them all this money for services and trying to dispense justice. And they're just shit talking them all the time these lawyers are real jerks by the way i'm just now rem remembering because i was talking about how like oh the court case only lasts three minutes uh defenders is not very good um but there's there's like a really great scene in defenders it's it's like the first scene with matt and he's in a court case that we don't get to see like any of the lead up to it um and it's, it's basically just a case that showcases like how effective he is uh like rhetorically and in terms of uh like in the courtroom um, and that scene, I think it lasts like a minute. And in that minute, we get a ton of character for him. We get to see how he operates. We understand what the case is about pretty clearly. And it's like, that was one minute of time. You had more than that, which still wasn't enough time, really. But you had more than that. And you did way less with your courtroom scenes. They seem to feel like, because it's a court, uh, like a legal comedy, that there's no need for drama ever. Like, or leveraging drama or doing anything particularly like... <sighs> I don't know, it's just, when you compare these two characters, like, the contrast is so stark. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of Marvel, Matt, the contrast is Matt stark. Uh... What's that really? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, well, Matt Murdock is a lawyer character, and She-Hulk is a whore character. And that's that's the ultimate difference. And it's so fucking funny that the entire premise of the show is like, ha, men online are going to call her a whore. It's like, well... <laughs> Thanks well, for the help. One of the things <laughs> I, I was trying to bring up about Intelligentsia was they have nothing to talk about with her except if they follow her, like, dating profiles, which apparently they do. That That's all they've got to talk... Because remember, they were like, you should... Actually, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> nothing they mention in the little memes has anything to do with her legal thing. Yeah. Well, the thing that she does, right, for a job. Like, yeah. makes a lot more she, sense. She presumably does. There's only been two cases that she's been in front of a courtroom in and it's it's the products liability case and whatever or uh and the, well the other one was the parole hearing like we You're keep hearing right, that yeah. she's yeah she's a lawyer but the the divorce case was handled by her paralegal and the other attorney her case was handled by the other attorney and there hasn't been any other case she's the head of this division and she doesn't ever do anything i think and, 
Oh, it was it, the it, yeah. It was the parole hearing. It was the magician guy, and then this one. Oh yeah, like, she did have it. the magician guy. So yeah. three in nine episodes, we got three. Right. But um, the, the silly thing is, so as the head of the division, she actually wouldn't be working most of these cases as lead counsel. Not, no. She'd be delegating the work to other attorneys and then stepping in to assist on the cases for important witnesses or something like that. And that's how, again, another way they could have used this character is to have all these different cases that involve superheroes. I mean, imagine all of the negligence torts for superheroes that could be out there, their powers, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they, they bust a car, they, they cause some minor damage. And so she could come in as the person who, uh, if, if we go to the Johnny Depp trial for people who watched it, there was this guy, Wayne Dennison. Basically, his entire job as a lawyer was to go and cross-examine expert witnesses. And some lawyers are really good at that. That could have been her as a superhero, as someone who knows uh, Bruce Banner. Like, she could sit there and be the person who comes in to assist on these specific issues where the rest of the legal issues are completely mundane. And it would have been an interesting way to use his character in a courtroom legal drama that would add this twist to the courtroom element that makes it unique to Marvel. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. You've highlighted something that, yeah, like they never work together. Like they so, they never work together. You never see like the team working together on, on nope. a case. Like yep. it's always individually. Pug will be on his own and uh, that Mallory character will be on her own. Like it's never them coming together and they each have a unique skill set. Like they each have sort of an area of expertise that they can leverage. Fucking, why are they... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just, like so many nice opportunities. Yes. So, he gets a call, he gets a call. He's got to go off and do something. We'll find out what that is soon enough. Her call is from oh, Todd, yeah. Uh, who says to her, Nobody's collecting African shit on my level. I bought a, a million dollar Wakandan war spear. And, um, you know, I actually studied there. And then he just goes, Wakanda forever. And then she goes, oh, no, don't do that. I was just like, what is this cringe. scene? Like, it's just cringy. Everything's cringy. It's to make you not like him more. Well, yeah, they well they finally do a, a some level of a job of that with him being like, come on, I know that you have feelings for me and stuff. But then, like, he goes to grab her, I think. I can't remember, but she fucks off. But um, the other thing I was going to mention is that he says that... Um, Legally speaking, he's in some level of trouble because they want the spear back because it was stolen by colonizers and that he's bought it now so that he believes it belongs to him. So, you know, what's the legal issue there exactly? Um, I was confused by this. I was watching it with Rags and I was like, wait, but Wakandan War Spear, how did that get colonized? Like, taken by colonizers? That that wouldn't... I mean, Wakanda's Wakanda was never colonized. Wakanda wasn't known... colonized. So yeah. the only way that that could work is if it was simply stolen by someone like Claw, which is possible. But does that mean you're just calling him a colonizer because he's white? But I mean, if 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 that <gasps> works, they'd Captain never America's do that. Shield, wouldn't Captain America's shield be like? Um... I guess so. No, I think they do feel that way about it, right? Like all vibranium belongs in Wakanda, sort of stuff. Oh, but... uh, right. But I mean, have they ever initiated actual like? Cases oh, I don't think. It, yeah, <laughs> fuck that. But um, someone in chat said he's a Wakanda boo. It's um, <laughs> it's the 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 reality is that yeah, if you watch Black Panther, they do pretty much just refer to you as colonizer if you're white. And I was like, oh okay. I was just a little bit confused. I was like, how did how did they get stuff from Wakanda with colonization when it's immune to that uh, essentially? But yeah, that's that's just what they meant. So he's a bad guy. He'll come up again. Don't worry about it. Um, which takes now, us I guess, to again in this world, Wakanda's just a known country now. People know about Wakanda. Yeah, that's a thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. They should. God knows what the fucking situation at that border's like. They never, ever, 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 that. ever took like time to explain to us what differences that makes to the world, and they never will. They can't oh, be bothered. Fuck, no, they will not. I, no, Africa will want to pour into Wakanda. Um. So we got Leapfrog is now calling She Hulk, asking for help because uh she says legally or physically, and he says definitely physically. He's, he's being attacked by somebody, and um, she's like, oh, wh "Where are you?" And he's he's going to the his the leap, the the lily pad. This is big old base, and I thought I thought this part was really weird. He's like, "Yeah, I just need to find my friends," and then she looks at her phone. She says, "Oh, you're close. Uh, I'll meet you." And I was like. So nice. He's got like a active location thing for his. Is that normal now? I didn't realize that was a thing for people mm -hmm. when they call each other. Do you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, don't. Maybe maybe it's part of the. Uh, well, that's. 
again, a, another interesting thing they could have done to explain this is that um, all of the clients, all of the super, super clients of this law firm uh, consent to having their location tracked by their attorneys through proprietary software, which would help them, you know, uh, discern issues or, or resolve problems without having to involve maybe local authorities because it would reveal identity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like they could just build a very simple plot device. Like <gasps> I'm going to log into the GLK tracking system and find my client. Oh, there you are. I'll be right there. Like you're, you're really close. I can help you. Simple. <laughs> yeah, because the way this goes is she's like, where is the lily pad? And he's like, she says, am I supposed to know where that is? And then he goes, I just need to find my friends. And she looks down at her phone as he says, like, uh, I'll try and lose him in this parking lot. And then she goes, oh, you're close to me. By the way, that's convenient. Lucky, uh, don't they live yeah. in LA? Isn't LA, like, fucking enormous? Pretty big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and it's just funny to me that, yeah. like, that's just something she can see, I guess. That's just something they have set up. Because, of course, a vigilante who's... It doesn't want to, you know where I'm going with that. So anyway, she uh, she does a Batwoman. Finally, we have a strong connection. She's uh, she knows this guy is in physical danger. She's about to go and save his life. She's on board with it, but she decides, wait, I need to put on my costume. Like man, can that like wait? Batwoman? Just, just like Batwoman. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You know, it was um, I think one of the things uh, my dad had said once, uh, was that you because everyone used to have landlines. So whenever you called someone, you knew who you knew where they were. You never had to ask where are you because everyone used landlines. And now, when you call with cell phones, when you call people, you know who it is, and you have to ask where are you. And he said that every once in a while, that just seems strange to him. Just one of those passage of time and technology things. Kind of interesting. It's almost thought, isn't it? yeah. It's it's almost a reverse cool. where nowadays, if someone calls you, you know who it is, but you don't know where they are. Right, but in, yeah. and when they yeah. call you and it's a landline, you know where they are. But in, you know, but it's just, it is interesting. Um, why didn't he call the police? Oh, fuck him! <laughs> why didn't he go to the police station? He's got a crazy vigilante it who's attacking him on the roof of his car. Station, yeah, exactly. and if the argument is, well, but then Daredevil could tell the police that he's captured uh, Luke Jacobson or something like that. I should be like, well, I mean, at that point, then why is he calling She Hulk his lawyer? Yeah, like, what is your plan? Oh, my completely uh, incompetent <laughs> He's just an lawyer. idiot, right? Like, that's the idea? He's just an idiot. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, they needed, they needed this to happen so that they could have the plot they wanted, which is... Well, <laughs> we're about to see. Um, so, yeah, she says uh, she's going to come help him, I guess. And uh, this arrival... I think this is Batwoman-esque, too. You don't see Batwoman do anything like this, but you could totally imagine she would if she had this kind of power. Um... Mm -hmm. Think about it. This is like this car that's almost in a runaway state because it's got a guy who's trying to break into it. He's broken the glass. He's trying to attack this guy. Uh, chat, here you go, just so you can understand. She lands in front of it directly, and she doesn't somehow have a... From someplace. Yeah, somehow <laughs> from someplace. Where? That's a great point, actually. She just flies in. And this guy, like, emergency breaks. He's, like, surprised yeah. as fuck. And look at his stance. She doesn't give a fuck. Man, good thing he's wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> Otherwise... You Good might, thing you like, know exactly who this is, what you're doing, yeah, what exactly. the circumstances are around this. Imagine if there because, was somebody else in the car, like, and you didn't know. Or just, yeah, you know, like... What if he wasn't wearing a seatbelt? <laughs> exactly. Well, I just said that, but yeah. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. I, that's I, okay. I, it's okay, my drags. That's okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't hold that one against you. But yeah, God damn it. look at that. And there, there he is. There's, 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 there's. Yeah, no. <laughs> she looks funny. She does look funny. Uh, but yeah, uh, she could easily kill her client and their devil at this point. Yeah. Uh, and just why did you do this? <laughs> why did you do that? Uh, exactly. What the hell? Um, uh, and to be yeah. honest with you, with the momentum of everything that's involved, that like this worst thing should have happened. But hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And there, there he is. Look at him. And his plastic. <laughs> Look at look at that! Look at him go! Look at that big old jump! Um, I don't know how I feel about the colors. It's not. I like the suit so, design. I'm on the fence so about the colors. We can, we can have a so just in case anybody, in case anybody doesn't know, this is Daredevil when he first appeared had a red and yellow, um, like color scheme that looked similar okay. to this, except he had the double D thing like on his suit on the front. Um, and then eventually he got his basically at this point iconic like full scarlet uh like red yeah that's the um, one i'm familiar with and that's yeah but and that's the one that he has in the show which i think they're trying to 
I think they want to, like, try as best as possible to have the show, like, exist here in this universe. They they use the same music from the show, like, later on. Um, but he's changed it, I guess, to this. And we can talk a bit, a little bit later, with a particular line of dialogue that annoyed me a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I prefer the full red, um, the this color scheme. I, I don't mind I it do as, like, too. a reference, um, but yeah. I definitely prefer the full red. The red and I mean, scar, it plays into the devil thing. You're exactly, at. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense for a motherfucker who's known for like stealth and darkness to be wearing bright fucking yellow. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. Right? Like, muted, but yeah, you're right. Well, it, it's, they do it's a good job about... at having these toned down, but you could tell what it is. But it's still, it's not like bright, but it is. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, it's it's um, it's I guess it's a matter of if you think about the comic history of like where Daredevil started towards like what the comics eventually. Uh, move towards in terms of the tone of the stories and like the nature of the character but yeah like it's 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 like th- this is not a costume that he would he would wear anymore um or like that he would wear in this you know if we to believe that the show is canon but whatever um also isn't it great that like his big triumphant return to the mcu a character that's known for like the fisticuffs like d- brutal sort of you know hand-to-hand combat is a fucking cgi fight scene yeah like don't you love that that's right. fucking. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least and, the CGI is really good. Well, and it also it's worth noting. Um, it'll become much more apparent as we progress. Jennifer's just straight up trying to kill him. Um, yes. she doesn't know who he is. She doesn't know what the hell is happening, but she's trying to kill him. Why not? Yeah. Um, Throwing as... whole ass cars at him. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, I mean, Jennifer even, is even a menace right? to society. Um, and and like yeah, the amount of property damage as well. Um, Jesus, massive. Like, I mean, she just the car, like you went onto the top of a car park. I know. Right? A, 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 um, a property God, dome, a, a property storage a place, parking, okay? A parking, yeah, building, right? And you went to the top of it and you punch into it so that it like rumbles towards people and opens up. I'm like, what if there's someone beneath you? What if the building collapses? Yeah, yeah and, and you might be like, well, laughing. You might be like, well, yeah, but this is the thing. That's the the kind of things you have to do when you're defeating an evil villain. You're like, you have no idea who this is. Yeah, and I mean, as far as you're aware, and as you will later realize, he's just a regular guy. Like, he doesn't have super strength or anything. But here she is laughing as she's, like, destroying this building, trying to kill him. She doesn't have have any idea what's happening. And then you get uh, incredibly satisfying. Wait, go ahead. I was about to say, th- this whole thing around the car, he says, and my ass remains unwhooped. It's like, you should be talking to her. There's something you that be he like, might want to say, there's you... something she might want to say, but neither will be saying anything until they point it out as a lampshade, Rags, because that's more fun. Hooray! Mm-hmm. Lampshades are oh, fun. Oh, and also, yeah, like, we talk about the banter. Oh, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> oh, my ass remains unwhooped. Oh my unwhooped. god, that dumb. Yeah, let's fix that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Riveting. I yeah. felt like in a video game. Oh my god, that dub was so bad. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> don't make fun of video games like that. Yeah, video games I mean, don't yeah, like, that. Yeah, don't, he, don't he, drag he, them down. And he, he goes jumping. So we have to presume this is why I'm, I'm there. Like, is the show actually canon? Because like he does not do these types of acrobatics in the comics. Data was pretty acrobatic, but like in the show, we don't see a lot of that. So I guess we have to presume that he's been doing he's gymnastics less less, like on the weekend. He's more. Well, it's it's kind of it, it, the problem is that when people talk because I saw it, people are like oh, like people complaining about the gymnastic. He does it in the comics. It's like he does, but he doesn't really in the show. Like at least not often. He's much more of like a brawler in the show. So I guess we just have to assume like that he's been doing. This is the thing. As long as they play fast and loose with like whether that show is canon, I don't even know like what I'm meant to make of it anymore. Um, but they use the music from the show, so presumably it is. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, like soft reboot kind of thing. Um, oh, also, I guess people could probably see like through the, the thing, like he jumps down the roof and then she like comes jumping down, like slamming down. Like if he didn't move, you would have murdered him. Wow. Well, you killed him. Like, cause but you don't know what's happening. Like you have no idea what's, you don't know what's happening here. You like, pick up a random car and just throw it at this throw guy. Throw it at him. Yeah. You don't know if anybody's in that car. I know, of course, that's someone's property. You Absolutely. didn't have to do that. Yeah. You could have just jumped. You're, you're She-Hulk and he's Daredevil. You don't need to throw a car at him. You can just go Chase up him. to him and you grab just him. 
Yeah, just grab um, him. You can outrun him. You're taller than him, and you're faster than him, and you're stronger yeah, than him. Just stronger, chase yeah. after him. And you got this move, the famous the clap. Thing. That's what gets him, because mm. I guess she chose a move that he literally can't possibly escape to beat him, yep. because she's so shit. And um, of course, while destroying mm. all of the windows on all of the cars. Yep, and then just, I just want to make sure I play this for people. Hey, you there in chat who hasn't seen She-Hulk? This is Daredevil versus She-Hulk. You get, like, yeah. Less than a minute of it, and then, uh, then you get, uh, cool. this. And it's just mm -hmm. like, ah. I could tell when this happened, I was like, Fringy is not gonna like this. <laughs> people <laughs> are not going to like, people must be fucking pissed. So, um, mm. yeah, that's that. Uh, he, he doesn't get unmasked often, but, uh, there it is. He doesn't. It's, uh, it's actually, like, a hugely important part of, of, like, his, his journey is, like, keeping... He keeps his identity secret from his his best friend for a long time. Like, just to put it into perspective, like how secretive he is of uh of his identity. But yeah, now this person that he's only had one conversation with is like, yep, you know. Awesome. Done and done. That's very cool <laughs> how he did that in in like a minute. Yeah, that was so mm -hmm. well uh, they do have a lot in common. Um, they're both lawyers and he does acrobats and can smell jet fuel while she is giant and green. So, I mean, it's pretty similar very uh, thing. A lot of connections going on there. I was actually getting lost there. I couldn't tell you who describing it this time because it was so similar. I was like, oh, that, uh, that, yeah, that's both of them. Yeah. I mean, cool. and, and the best part is, is that she's been a lawyer for like a day and uh, he's been a lawyer for a long time and she's been a superhero for like half a day. And he's had his condition for, you know, like since he was a little kid uh, and went through a lot of training and effort to get to where he is. So, I mean, again, they, they have a lot to go with. Uh, he takes on the, like the, the burden of oh, his uh, abilities and um, she just shirks all of that. <laughs> well, like so I don't know how much I don't know how much you know about Matt, but he's another one of those characters with the tragic history. Um <laughs> that has informed a lot of what he does. Also, like, by the way, if you if you can do, like, a clap that produces a shockwave that sends somebody flying into a car, there's blood, like, poof, like, flowing out of yeah, his ears. Yeah, all that energy I going know. through that person. Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. uh, that's something. Well, I mean, he's dead, is actually. No, they made a joke about it. He said, he said, uh, I don't really see I hear. Well, I used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, his eardrums would be ruptured yep. from that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you... He'd be dying. His brain might even be melted. Like that's a, <laughs> like that's a that's a big old shockwave. You oh. know. Yeah, I, I remember in in the original Daredevil show, uh, the Punisher shot past his he his ears and he couldn't hear for a whole fucking day. But yeah, that's that. what, exactly. That, I mean, if you're a regular person getting shot next to the ear, it's like, oh, like that is damn, uh, that's that's an you, buddy. Yeah. Um, and um, and Daredevil's got super hearing and like super well um didn't uh ever uh, as far as i know for the rest of his life bruce willis had a hearing problem because uh they fired a, a essentially a prop gun right next to him in one of the scenes in die hard and it gave him like hearing damage i think for the rest of his life he always had a little bit of i can believe that and not hearing in that ear that's what i've heard if uh, someone could double check but i I think that's true. Chat can be my. my oh gosh, I can tell you about tinnitus. Yeah, when he got hit, he should have been as he was getting up, going mop, mop, mop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to try to fix his hearing. So he says Luke's been Guns kidnapped loud, <laughs> by Leapfrog, and uh, that's why he's trying to get him back. And she says, "Well, wh why didn't you just say that?" And then he says, "Well, why didn't you ask me?" And then she says, "Well, oh, my right. client was being attacked by a man dressed as a devil." And then he goes, "Ah, oh, that's fair." Well, bitch, you're a big green bitch, trash and shit. Hey, what I, is I, someone going to presume about you? Neither of the them are off the hook. Daredevil, <laughs> no, as soon as he saw her, should have been like, She-Hulk, stop. You have no idea what's happening. That sort of thing. And then she should have no, been they like... they needed the fight for the trailer. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, they both highlight what they should have done and what would have prevented their fight. And both of them just go, oh, yeah, it kind of equals it out then, bye. And it's like, n it's no. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But if we're talking <laughs> about accountability here, you destroyed the parking garage. You tried to kill him, like, several times. <laughs> um, and you know, like he's actually trying to save somebody's life, uh, but you don't know that. You didn't ask him anything. And they do the meme where she's like, "Who are you?" And he goes, "I'm Daredevil." And then and he's they like, "Play the music." They and then he's music. clearly sad that he's not recognized. Which, come on, it just doesn't. That just on. doesn't feel like Matt Murdock to me from the what I remember no, the, the TV show. He doesn't it's give not. a fuck and if you know him. He operates in New York. This is L.A. He's in New York. Like, and he's 
he operates in a very small part of New York. He's a very local. Oh, but it's a they funny him, meme. It's like the it? literal Star Lord joke, and it's just like, why? You... No, you don't just why? pass it around. Oh, These are all built then... on the characters. Uh, and then we got a line that uh, surprisingly made me quite annoyed. Oh, um, surprisingly. Yes, well, surprisingly, wanna... actually. I'm not 100% uh, sure what you're referring to, so you can go it's, ahead. It's about the color scheme. Oh, right, we, right. I was talking about it earlier, like the color scheme. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly what the line of dialogue was. What was it exactly? She um, says, it's very daring to use ketchup and mustard as your color scheme. Mm -hmm. So this annoys me. And the reason why it annoys <laughs> me is we got we got, we got we got to lay out a lot of things here. So you did this. You chose to give him this color scheme because he has the costume that's just full red. But you chose to give him the red and yellow one because you probably thought it would be better for marketing and probably would have been better for merchandise. You made the choice to use it and you're shitting on it. Um, and then to add on to that, it's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry that like when they were like pumping out like a billion of these comics a week back in the 60s that they didn't nail the design the first time around on like a character with this, like this, this huge legacy among a bunch of other characters with this legacy, all of which had to exist in order for this show that you're writing to exist. Your show doesn't exist without any of this material, but you're like gleefully shitting on it. It is it just biting really the hand the wrong way. You. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Like, about as close to that as you can get. Um, and then there's the elephant in the room. That, uh, it's the first thing that I thought of when we were watching this before almost like being defensive on behalf of stuff like that. Uh, I was just baffled by the fact, because I'm so familiar at this point with the MCU being built entirely as a, as the movie franchise, not only on source material, but on one particular movie about a guy who ba basically puts himself in a big old suit. Uh, she says, like, she's pointing out, like, the absurdity of using colors like this, like these two. And it's like, the colors that your primary superhero in your world uses. That's right. Iron Man is red and yellow. But I don't know if she's she forgotten that. And, and of course... Iron Man is yet another example, right? If your show doesn't exist without that, you know, that series, that character. Yeah. I just, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, I, uh, I think I, I th I'm finding it especially frustrating more and more, like the amount of shit that they hurl at the material that enables their terrible material to exist. They I don't, don't know respect what it is. anything that enabled them. And a lot of people like, like point out as well, she's greed. <laughs> like, why well, I mean, yeah, right. It's pretty funny to make fun of his color scheme when, like, the main character of the show is this incredibly inconsistent CGI character. Yep, that in the next episode, in the next episode, they're going to basically sort of point out the incredible amount of crunch that would have occurred to even make this happen in the first place. It's all terrible. There's, there's, there's no and angle it's not funny. in these words. Um, there's, there's that as well. It's just also not a funny fun. joke. Yeah. yeah. All like, of that you know, for something that isn't funny. We kind of presume that, like, presume that we were all in agreement that it's not a funny, like, yeah. No. No. Haha, -ha, your colors are yellow and, and red. I'm funny. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and at least he does then point out that he's going to tell the suit maker, and that gets her really upset because that's, like, very. That's important. all that matters to her, isn't it? Yeah. The, you, yeah, the other said, thing I'll tell Luke about it uh, about what what uh, you're talking about with the yellow and red, and they pick this. I mean that that's what the whole show boils down to, though, is them ripping up their own decisions at the end. Like, yeah, we wrote a trash show, and we're gonna make fun of like how bad it was. Like, but you wrote it. Yeah, like, it's you not guys. like you're blaming <laughs> someone else. Yeah. It's like exactly yeah. it's like, you it's did baffling. this. You chose this. You chose to give him this suit because you thought it would be better for marketing. You're profiting off of it while making fun of it. And it's not and yours. once you cashed in, <laughs> then fuck it. It served yeah. its purpose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so you might think, well, of course she's concerned about her dresses. What else does she have to be concerned about? And you might, oh, well, probably the damage she's done to property and potentially people in this whole area, right? Is there a line for that? Mm -hmm. It's like, you're in luck. He says, mm -hmm. have you ever destroyed a parking lot before? And she says, I'll leave a note. <laughs> What? I'm sure that the guy, when he comes back to his destroyed Ferrari, I wonder if his insurance covers She Hulk oh. through it at Daredevil. That's that's well, really I mean, joke the joke. Of of words. No, that's right. The accords don't exist, so he has no he has no means of recourse. Oh, we'll maybe never see her in court. Oh, just, they show the uh, they even zoom away to show the. And she's like, "Oh, I'll go leave a note." What? What are you gonna write on that um, note? Um, I'm pretty I, sure I, it's a joke, but if, the, yeah, I don't know. Where's the giant? Where's the giant rift in the parking ramp that she caused? 
Oh, that, would, that would be up, that would, be up that top. Was, uh, but the thing is, there's oh, going to yeah, be yeah, a they camera. Came down. That's right. There's going to be a camera here. Yeah. Would have caught and this. It's like bad. Yeah. What so she Hulk, you're you're in some serious trouble. She's she going to jail. is a lawyer. She must know every single damage, like every single law that she's breaking at that moment. She doesn't. <laughs> yeah, like, what what is going on? What is this character? I mean, she well, is a no, lawyer. Sorry. She knows every, like, she's aware of everything she's doing, and she doesn't care, and she doesn't think that she will have repercussions of it. Like, what? Who? Mm. Mm -hmm. She's never, yeah. she's never held exactly. accountable for anything and has that moment where she's like, oh, shit, like, I'm, like, I, we're, 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 remember this entire series began with essentially a monologue that was, you know, uh, essentially with great power comes great responsibility. And that is just, that's never popped up. That's how they began no, this show. And it has and spoilers, never it popped never up. Will. It never will. No, that that, they've already that forgotten it. The well, writers forgot to, they wrote it. Not to like get uh, into this space or whatever, but it, it's such a stereotypical uh, woman moment thing that there is no accountability ever. And for them to say, yeah, well, she doesn't have to take any of that responsibility but then prove it out through the show that yeah, actually, you know what? No, she never does. She never uh, has the to show take right. I was gonna, I was gonna bring it yeah, up it, for the last episode. It's, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's how they write the the women here. It, it's how they write her. Well, you know, um, this is the, I'm assuming you guys have all seen the clip, right? Uh, with Jack Nicholson, where he's asked how to write female characters in, in that yeah. movie, or whatever. And one of the things he said is, "Take it." Is that I, I don't know what film is from, but he, I think that's does, film. take yeah. away all reason and accountability, right? Mm -hmm. And so to have that as a meme that goes around and then to do what they do in the last episode, like I said, I'll bring it back up once we get there, but unbelievable. Like, um, so anyway, the lily pad. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the lily pad. Seems dead Evelyn it's, Jen again. Hey, look, right, you know what? By the way, I will say he's putting a lot of effort into like cultivating his superhero identity. You know, yes, like I'm yeah, sure yeah. the show. Thinks, I'm sure the show thinks it's really lame, but he's taken up like landscaping and arts and crafts and stuff to like create his superhero <laughs> identity. I just think it's worth giving him some props for that. You know, like he's putting some real effort the into really this uh, enterprise. Weird aspect to me was the fact that that what we were showed of him was he was trying to stop two guys from stealing TVs. You know, that's like that's, that just seems genuine. Like he wants to stop them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it's like, well, now he's gone crazy with power. He wants to get. The costume maker to make him a better one, so he's kidnapped him. It's like, okay. But Daredevil's like, we'll handle this by being stealthy, and she's like, nah, we'll just smash everything, and they have themselves a little argument. But then he's also like, wow, your heart is raised, and they like almost get close to fucking kissing immediately, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> well, we also don't have that moment where <laughs> a man Daredevil paid attention explained. to her. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, he is dead. Was... <laughs> we we have that uh that. Daredevil never never explains the the merits of stealth instead of just running in and making sure everyone knows you're there from the first second. When yeah, well, how would she understand that? Yeah. No was, collateral, you know, collateral damage, well, hostages, calling I guess for it's backup. A funny, it's a funny contrast, right? Because Matt has to account for it. Like, he's not invincible. He has to actually be careful because he could die where she can't. Like, she's invulnerable to harm. So, well, like, the, what does she care about collateral damage, right? Because it's not going to affect her. It was a line I vaguely enjoy, being that, like, he's like, this will work. And then he's like, no, it'll do it my way. And then she's like, um, just let me do it the way I do it. And then he goes, he's, he's like, you don't do this. You don't yeah. do hero exactly. stuff. Like, it's not what you do. And it's just like, true. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter mm -hmm. anyway, because uh, we're going to do a funny, right? But, yeah, what no, they do no. is... Yeah, and it's... They, they, it, it's oh, all... go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's it's important also because uh, as if Matt Murdock has been doing all of the hero stuff and proposes this way to go in and stealthily take out one person at a time, you know, there might be a reason. Like, the reason might be that they could just kill the person you're trying exactly. to save. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. yeah that, that conversation never happens. That con It never mm -hmm. happens because you have this character, this She-Hulk, and you've been given without... You, you've, you've been given freely this insane essentially invulnerability and that's never you're never made to recognize that you've just sort of been given this and your attitude regarding how you dispense that power is extremely irresponsible did anyone else feel like i'm a character yeah they made oh well i'm gonna move on so you can <laughs> oh i was about to say for it that would be coming from a character that the show could convince me that she would actually listen to 
but they don't do it. So, oh well. Well, because oh, well. it was something that we kind of glossed over in the conversation when they were in the, the bar. Basically, uh, Matt offers like his perspective that she's in a position to help people because as a lawyer, she can work within the system to help people. But if that system fails, then she can do vigilantism, which is essentially his perspective. It's not necessarily supposed to be hers, nor do I think that she should like accept that straight away. Like the, Matt's perspective is is interesting to explore. I've said it so many times, but like one of the interesting things about him is that he's a lawyer who clearly doesn't have that much faith in the system if he's willing to completely like defy it to like achieve his objectives. And that's something that's worth exploring as a conflict. And it would have been interesting to explore it as a conflict in this show, because yeah. I would imagine that her perspective wouldn't be like that. Um, but they don't, they don't like, that's it. He, he says it and I think she kind of accepts it. And I think we're meant to believe by the finale that like, she believes that that's a good way to do it without any explanation at all, like any exploration yeah. of that motivation at all. Uh, the show's not written well. Yeah. I mean, I recognized that line and I was like, okay, that's interesting. I wonder what they would mm -hmm. do with that. And if they're a relationship will you know they'll have some sort of conversation or it will just conclude in something or maybe at the end she will think back to it because his character did leave some sort of uh impression you know yeah and well at the end she's just like oh both i'm both she hulk <laughs> and jen well, but she's come a long yeah, way nothing point. else Learned a lot. yeah um the, the the way that they progressed this as well i just it just felt really really shit it's like wait where are we and it's like we're in a big hallway it's like what's the meme uh, about daredevil it's like he, he the yeah. hallway fights that's what they referred to it's like so right. we just put him in a hallway yeah they just like it feels like they rented out a literal just hallway like a guy was selling a hallway somewhere renting mm -hmm. space it looks so hallway hallway and they've all got crossbows <laughs> why <laughs> why it, it, I thought I was missing a reference. Like, is that a frog thing to have a crossbow? <laughs> Every frog I, has a crossbow. Right. I've never heard of common that. knowledge. Not that I'm a frog, but I haven't heard of that as like a thing. I frogs was... have the crossbows in all of the media. Vampire it's a hunters, maybe. Really? Yeah, that could be it. I don't understand this. I, I was just like, that's strange. Because you can have Daredevil fight people who have guns. Uh, if you want well, to. we've seen him fight people with guns when he remember in season two when he was fighting in the hallway yeah. and he had uh, like a Punisher. big chain that he had to well there was punisher of course yeah <laughs> um but it, like the in the hallway fight uh he has oh man because like i'm just thinking of uh because people like that it was always made jokes and it's like you got to think about like the nature of the joke so like a really good example is in that hallway fight in season two He's got like a gun like taped up, like duct taped to his arm because he's got like a chain in one arm and then the gun taped up in the other one. And he holds a guy hostage like, hey, you know, back off or I'm going to shoot him. Um, and then he knocks him out and then pulls the trigger and it's empty and he like, he smirks. He's like, <laughs> and it's like, damn, man, like just finding ways to inject character and in a certain sense, kind of like humor as well. It's not as simple as he makes jokes. It's the kinds of jokes that he makes or the manner in which he conducts himself. Because, of course, that's, like, one of the things with Daredevil, right, is, like, there's kind of, like, a a little bit of a maybe sadistic streak. How much does he enjoy what he's doing here? Like, how much is this about yeah. personal gratification? How, mu how much is he really invested in saving people versus uh, hurting people? Sorry, I'm just talking about a better show. <laughs> I, I gotcha. <laughs> I understand. Um... So he's doing the stealth approach. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Yeah. If you were introducing me to a little video game, and you're like, this game does not allow you to do the smash and grab sort of stuff. You have to go stealth. I'd be like, okay. You got four dudes, and then you just immediately knock one out when they're all standing next to each other. Um, you can call that stealth, I suppose, because they still don't know where you are or what you are. But I would have just been you immediately like, them. oh, you started with alert in the mall that you're there. That's yeah, strange. you're first person, and you've alerted them that there is something going on. Most stealthy people the, yeah. do the thing, where one of them goes, I'm gonna take a leak. He walks yeah. over to a corner, and then you go, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, you drag his body, take his clothes, do whatever. That's oh, look for Jerry, he's been pissing for five minutes. Go check and then, on him. You know, yeah. And you go, <laughs> well, they do the thing in the video game where it's like, huh? And then they just gradually walk over with the little question mark the out above their head. Yeah, well, they should Is have even had the Metal Gear Solid alert sound. <laughs> oh God, there's the Jerry. He's they got Je ah, Bob. What did, what were you saying? No, Bob? That, you're mixing up with The Last of Us too. 
Um, no, no, I'm not making fun of it. I'm saying that this is reasonable, okay? Last of Us That's, is way funnier yeah. than that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, oh, I just God, thought this was strange. Yeah. I was just like, okay, that's not a, not what I thought when Nostalgia... That he opens the door is like... Also, where did he... Where did he hit that first thing from? Like, the, the, like he... I don't know. <laughs> so, because I was just thinking, like, logistically speaking, there's a, there's a ceiling here. It's not like he could. Yeah, he threw that thing down. Somehow got into the next room to get this guy through the door. Was this directed mm, by the nostalgia critic? Hey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that he shoot, throws a guy through a wall, and he like squares off with these three directly across from it. It's like, how is this the stealth approach? Also, why did the door open slowly and then he throws a guy through it? Because that's, did, that because was weird when I was watching that. it. You expected him to walk through, but he didn't. What you expected? So, like the guy, because that's not how doors open. Like that door swings out, so someone had to turn the knob and then just give it, it just little. enough of a push yeah. to, to open slowly. And then someone gets violently thrown out. So it's not even like the person was opening the door because you typically would keep your hand on the doorknob as you open it as a normal human. So it's not like that was happening. Like he just grabbed them because that would have looked completely different. It's just this weird thing where it's like, we're going to give a dramatic door open and then a guy's going to fly through. It's like, why wouldn't he just either fly through the door or be like kicked as he's opening the door from behind? Anything else than what happened would have made more sense. It's so fucking weird. And I, I just can't believe they call this the stealth approach. It's it's no like if he had gone the sort of punch him all to death openly approach, what it, what would be different? Same thing, isn't it? Yeah, this is how I do stealth games. <laughs> 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 the stealth is when you're fighting. Right away, and then fight everyone. Stealth is when you're fighting in the dark. Yes, that's probably what he thought. Because um, they do recharacter. Like they let us know what the difference is. They're about to anyway. Because you see, unfortunately for Daredevil, he's got a bunch more bronies come in because one of them managed to get the word out. He didn't even manage to stop that. So again, feels like you failed the stealth mission. But sure. Um, yep. If stealth is mandatory, you have failed. And mm -hmm. so in they come. See them all here. They've even got um. They these guys have crossbows, a crowbar, and he, this one has a hook. Um, it's the frog hook. What? He's got a <laughs> he's got a hook on a rope. Gadget. What? What are what? you like? And and again, the the frog guy seems to have just a boatload of money. Like he drives a really like cool car. He has this super suit that he bought that had to cost a fortune because it has jet boots and shit like that. It's like, well, but I used all my money on cool stuff, so I'll equip my henchmen with basic medieval weaponry. Yes. <laughs> At least before the, the guys with the crowbars and stuff had magical ones. These are just regular ones. Are we ever going to get into how they got those things? Or <laughs> They said they took it. They actually did take it from an Asgardian uh, like construction oh, worker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that's okay. So anyway, yep. uh, the stealthy approach of what you just saw. Oh, this ahead. is the non-stealth approach where you uh, you actively just burst through the ceiling. Mm-hmm. See, makes sense. And probably kill them. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, they're what definitely sequence? dead. But it was fun. Dead. Yeah. How'd you know to do that? Also. Yeah, how did listening. you know to do she that? Has keen hearing. Yeah. Oh. It would have been funny if she just landed on China. Daredevil. Yeah, and then she says like She Hulk smash, and it's like, hey, because I bet what I bet I bet what happened was like, you know how like Daredevil like fights people in hallways? Wouldn't it be like clever if we subverted that by not having that happen? And like she ends the fight. It's like, yeah, so you just That's way more with like, fun. well, it's just like the thing you did takes less work in terms of choreographing a fight scene, and it's lamer. So like, thanks. Yep, <laughs> but it subverted your expectations, right? And that makes really it worthwhile. Awesome. You subverted yeah, really it with something cool. worse. Yes, and, and you did. To be fair, I want just in case people thought you were joking. She does say she Hulk smash. Yeah, I'm not memeing. That's what she says. Yeah, God, it's so, incredibly so lame. Dumb. Yeah, I was oh. like, it's a it's a meme. Look, all right. I know we don't care that much about the Incredible Hulk from like 2008, but like. When he says Hulk smash at like the end of the movie, it's like, oh, cool. You kind of like waited a while before you had him say it. Well, so the, and, the and then it was accompanied by something really. 
Yeah. It's an homage to the the comic book ism and the difference between the mediums. Because in comic books, Hulk Smash having that big giant like text of him screaming Hulk Smash in the comics works because it's a comic book and it's delivering more than the actual dialogue. Like the the dynamic of the writing on the page shows you just how much effort Hulk is putting into it. There's like a whole artistic influence to it. But when you get into a TV show or a movie and like he's going Hulk smash every time he hits something, it's cheesy and it's goofy, mm -hmm. but they got to pay homage to the meme of the comic. Cause that's the whole point is that this is an adaptation. So in the movie they do it at the very end, it's like, Oh, this is this cool little clever payoff, a wink and a nod to the, the fans. But, and they're like, look, we know we're, we're fans too, but we can't do this all the time. Cause it would sound stupid. But then they mm. like, take that here and they just go, yeah, actually we're okay with it sounding stupid and even worse, we'll make it She-Hulk smash. It's like this most, the most ineffectual use of anything. Oh, God, they just, they can't get anything right in making this show. No. I don't, no. how is it constantly this bad? Um, also, and as I was like, just, I right, go for it. If Daredevil said it or somebody, some other character said something like that, she would probably so, she would probably be so annoying about it. But, well, yeah, it would know. be like if, if he okay. jumped in and said, I am dead evil, the man without fear. <laughs> like, and then it's just like uh. and also, yeah, like, busted man, if somebody was standing, like, beyond that wall, you would have killed him. We'll get back to that later in the oh, episode. Oh, yes, there's a much worse one. Also, I'm confident at this point, like, something that I've, I think I've started to realize is I'm pretty sure that one of the reasons why, like, the She-Hulk effect is so inconsistent is because, like, even though it's the same character in the same outfit, they're using different models. Because, like, in the fight earlier, definitely looked better than here. I don't know how that happens, other than, like, some bizarre compartmentalization of, like, visual effects work. But, like, I don't get it. It's so inconsistent. Like, sometimes yeah. she looks like a completely different person. And all yeah, I can I imagine think... is it's, like, different teams. You had different visual effects houses that had to create all their assets from scratch and try to make them look consistent yeah, they because they didn't share resources. Yeah. Well, they didn't, yeah, they must not have shared resources. I think it has to do with different rigs because, like, Hulk looks so much better. It it's so he obvious does. that they used yeah. one yeah, from absolutely. the end game, and she looks so much worse. And probably they had a multiple sort of it was in, character it's, it's rigs that they used. It's, it, I'm it definitely it, that's got to be it because it's like I don't know what yeah. it is because like earlier in the fight, just it, it's still not great, but like it looks better than than here. I it's a crunch reshoots. Like, it's just, I can't imagine, like, what the actual story was in terms of production, especially, like, the visual effects part for this show mm -hmm. and how painful it must have been, how much didn't get accounted so for on set. For people. Well, we'll talk stuff. about that again in uh, episode nine when they do a fun little meme that they think is really fun and cute, oh. but it's kind of like... What are the henchmen Ooh. have a I net. love fun memes. Yeah. His little handheld net thing. What? <laughs> You about to fry some fries? You I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, someone said it's like a bug net. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I, mm. I don't know. This is his weapon. He's net man. So <laughs> it he felt... catches all the butterflies <laughs> that the frog eats. I, like what? I, I, I actually <laughs> thought they were going to subvert and we didn't get the, the fight because she sees all the hench goons, as she calls them, and then goes, okay, how about we don't? And she starts picking up an arcade machine. And I was like, oh, so she's going to say, like, everyone drop your weapons, you bunch of idiots, or I'll destroy this arcade case. But no, she just, she just destroys, destroys it, it and then starts attacking them anyway. Why would you do that? Why would you destroy yeah. the arcade well, I, well, I just, I just don't... Yeah. Like, that's so dick. she did that just because she wanted to annoy them then, oh, I guess. Oh, it's just petty. Yeah. Oh my God. Because, like, like I said, I was about to know, compliment her, but like, oh yeah, threaten something that they probably want and like and to, to stop fighting. But then she... What it is in truth, she just does here is, I just want to annoy the fuck out of you. Like, okay. I just want to break your stuff that has a, nothing to They're do just... with rescuing someone. They're just a just reminder that all of this is an extreme ethical violation of her duty to her client. <laughs> well, yeah, well. <laughs> we talked about all that. It's like... Uh, <laughs> uh... <laughs> She's she's literally she working hard. She, she, as she says. She's stopping him from getting in more trouble. She's there's already enough charges against him. She's oh, and also him. it's worth it's worth pointing out that this scene, what happens is basically our boy Matt, just regular human, is left to fight all of these people while she just has a conversation with her client, and he's got to deal with all of these people trying to kill him, just left on his own. 
Yeah, well, she's literally working with known opposing counsel at this point against the interests of her client. Like it's it's phenomenal. <laughs> I'll tell you what she's Do we busy have a duty doing. To tell the Bring police. Or We're shown like Jacobson is tied up, and this is so hard to ignore when you see it happen fast. Uh, I'm gonna help him out, okay? I'm gonna nice and slow. Look at that. It looks like tubing, I guess, that he's been tied up with. Look at what she does. Oh yeah. It's like it's is that silly an string. Cord, maybe. It's yeah. it magically comes apart on it the back. It looks like candy. Yeah, it looks like candy. She just. You could see for the, the little brief, <laughs> that brief few right. frames where the back just breaks open. It's like it was never attached. And uh, yeah, if anything, it should have just yanked him forward to her. Yeah. Because she's very no, because That would be hilarious. She's, <laughs> she's strong, so physics don't apply. Like, no, physics uh, ceases to exist. Uh, in her you know what's funny? If you wanted she hulk oh sorry go, go ahead i was just gonna be quick if, if this is extension cord which is what a lot of people see me think it is uh it would actually be tough yeah, even for she hulk if you wrap that up several 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 times and then you just got to pull it apart like i, I don't yeah, even know if any of us in the cast be. could do that with one rotation rather than no no we no way you couldn't pull that apart no way no, it's pretty tough <laughs> I, I but if they would have hurt him more than the cable <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If they wanted to make She-Hulk's strength the cause of the cable snapping, she would have broken it in the front. You would have grabbed yeah, it yeah. right next pulled to each other and the pulled apart in the yeah. front. Because otherwise, you'll, you'll you, like you said, it'd just pull him close to her. Uh, and all the pressure of that cord would go on the back of the chair. And I actually, like looking at that chair, I think the cord would break through it before the cords would snap. Even at one or two passes. Like, extension cords yeah, are very, very, very strong. <laughs> Yeah, you can pull wild. and pull. And then, I don't know, they could have done something where she has to pull each one off individually on the front. Like, she can't fit her hands around him, and he's yelling at her or something. I don't know. But the way they did it was just, it was just lazy. She just pulls it off him. Yeah, Done. and she's like, you're going to be going to jail more than likely. And uh, they beat up all the goons, and he tries to run away, but he knocks himself out. Or, well, tries to fly out the window, and he breaks his legs, I think. I think, yeah. So... That's it for Leapfrog. That was great. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we get to the, what the point of the episode is, actually, which is the uh, She Hulk and Daredevil have another little chat, and then they're like, you should come back to mine because you're going to be gone tomorrow and do the sex. They do. Um, great. It's really good. Yeah. Sad. Her sex <laughs> life. It's just, it's just her begging them for dick. <laughs> Good thing she I has a nice, wondered. or the Daredevil has a strong sense of smell, so he knows where to put it. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I just wonder how horny these writers are. Because oh, yeah. every oh, episode, yeah. I'm like, oh my god. Oh. It depends on how many of them own dogs. Do <laughs> cats? Oh, wait. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm 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 more into the wholesome meme of Cat Lady who's crazy and lives on her own. <laughs> oh, Molly, you poor bastard! <laughs> um, yeah, and then they show him doing the Walk of Shame, and uh, I, I was almost baffled by this for a second. I saw, it, I was like, "What is he doing? He never walks around in daylight casually as Daredevil. What the fuck?" <laughs> it's like, "Oh yeah, but they, they're the doing memes. a joke, you idiot." And I'm like, "Oh right, yeah, fun, fun, not fun." Not gonna give me a ride. You're not gonna. You're yeah, not gonna drive me back. Didn't get an Uber. Didn't get an Uber. Not no gonna... taxi. Nothing. No, because men do walk of shame too. <laughs> that's the. That's not a walk. Of, that's a walk of fucking victory. Is it? It's like yeah, I, yeah. I, not I, for I, him. I, not okay. with her. Maybe, maybe not for her. Her swamp. It's like, don't pussy. you feel ashamed that you're walking home after fucking that chick? Like, no. That was the chick that you picked up while the closing so time much. song was ending. Oh. I don't waste any time in my dating life. Uh, yeah, and then she's like, shouldn't the episode be over now? What are you guys still doing here? We, what's going on? And it's just like, oh, they think this is clever every time. That I think they automatically assume the second she talks to the, the screen that it's already really cool and clever and it's interesting. All clever, yeah. It can't not be clever. And she says, wow, the gala. That's going to be like a tacked on set piece. Is that like, is there, is there a big twist coming? But the question is, will it be a twist like a, a Red Hulk? Or am I getting fridged? Oh god. We can only hope. Stop. Stop talking. Just end. 
we're almost at only one episode left, okay? But I wish I could say that we're seconds Yay. from that. We're not. We've still got a pretty big scene left. Uh, and it is the gala in which she will be awarded slash... Well, she might not win. You never know. Uh, she's nominated for the best female lawyer, right? So we're going to be seeing how the awards turn out on that one. Um, gets in there. Everyone we know, all our favorites from the season are all here. It's so exciting. All the stars are here. Super great. And uh, they start introducing the whole thing. And there's this guy who's organizing it, I guess. Uh, or maybe he's just the host, whatever. He says, um, educated, accomplished, beautiful. And doing everything regular lawyers do, except in high heels and backwards, <laughs> I think is what he says. It, it comes off very beauty pageant-ish. Fringe. Regular <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> not like those regular lawyers <laughs> like, yeah what? not like normal <laughs> lawyers yeah these um, are women am i right Ugh. and so yeah uh he announces They're not like regular voters he announces she won it's like whoa gen one how is that about and then they explain it because obviously that doesn't make sense how could she possibly win it's because all of them win all of the nominations won and they all have the They're same trophy winners. So, but she won it most. It's so weird. I was just like, why would you, why would you make it a, a participation award? Why would you do that? That's so funny to make fun of her women. and all of the exactly. <laughs> and so, who's writing this? Is it like you guys like women, right? And they're like, yeah, of course. And you're like, okay. Sometimes I also, get confused. Who put this on? Like, uh, okay, so the, you get these like super lawyer. Uh, well, okay. Super lawyer status is typically actually an advertising thing that you buy. Uh, so if you ever see someone whose name is like so-and-so super lawyer, and then they'll have like a little, an asterisk and it'll show like what magazine and what year they were a super lawyer. And uh, that that's usually like a purchase. So it's like $2,500 or whatever. And then like three people recommend it. And then suddenly you're a super lawyer. So then you can put it on your page and nobody knows what it is, but they do have like, Lawyer of the Year awards, they usually come from some publication, right? Some publication this goes, a, okay, but this is just her law firm that put this on, right? Like it's the yes. Southern California Law um, Law Awards. Wait, it says it at the top on, on the the, the video brochure. in just a second. Um, when when she goes in and it's uh, it's above the like list of attributes, uh, so we'll we'll see. But I'm pretty but, sure yeah. it's just like. It's either her law firm or a publication, but the way these typically work is they pick you for an award and then they just do like a an interview. There, Southern California Law Awards. Wait, there's not an award show <laughs> for like that's not a thing that exists. It's not even close it to a thing that now, exists. It does now, baby. It'd be like uh <laughs> like there's um there'd be like little quarterly law journal journals or whatever that come out, and they'll do like a write-up on a lawyer, uh, some lawyer profile. But again, it's it's just like an interview that happens. They don't have a, a fucking awards gala. And there's not other competitors that get recognized. It's just, oh, we picked this lawyer as someone who's got a lifetime accomplishment or whatever. Uh, again, they they live in this weird world where everything is Hollywood. But nothing actually yes. is because Hollywood is broken. Well, Because the writers <laughs> don't know anything besides yeah, Hollywood and L.A. and red carpets, I guess. Yeah, award think, shows like, that award themselves mm -hmm. a trophy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I think this represents like mostly like uh yeah, girls are all pretty, like don't meet to us, like you're all winners, we love you all, shut the fuck up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well I, again, I couldn't tell like this is indistinguishable from parody, right? Because I feel like this is how we it would is. write it if we were making a joke show where they all get up on stage and then the guy is like, What's it like being a female lawyer? And if someone asked me, why did you write it that way? And I'd be like, well, because being a female lawyer isn't any, that it, it's being a lawyer. Like, it shouldn't be highlighting that you're a female lawyer. So the joke, obviously, is that they're being celebrated just for existing. Like, it's not about their talents at mm -hmm. that point. And that they're being asked a very fucking annoying question. It would be like, what's it like being a male YouTuber? I'd just be like, what you, why, why are you asking me that? That's <laughs> that's a weird, like, what? Um, and of course, then you get so special and empowering. I love it. It's like, Again, I would have written it that way. <laughs> I would have... Yeah, like, this is parody? Or like, isn't? it's funny if you are doing this on purpose, but, like, this show, surely you're not doing that on purpose. Like, and then Mallory Book says, uh, twice the work, oh, half no. the recognition. 
as like, she stands uh, on a platform in front of people at an awards ceremony. The, there isn't or, a male one, I assume, or is it regular lawyer awards? <laughs> like that's what they yeah, call it. They, that's what they call it. Yeah, this, this, this is the award ceremony for the normal lawyers out there, the real lawyers. Um, fucking weird. And then she says, yeah, and you're constantly being asked what it's like to be a female lawyer. It's like, by you guys wrote this, okay? Mm -hmm. So is it, yeah, what are you trying to tell me? She's such an awful lawyer. We're all awful lawyers <laughs> in this. <laughs> um, and so before she hell can talk about how awesome she is, Intelligentsia, hack the place. Thank oh my God. goodness. Dun, dun, dun. And they're like, you think you know... The Hulk, she does not deserve your praise. She does not deserve yeah. the power. She, she's not a good female lawyer. She isn't virginal and celibate. <laughs> <laughs> there are, you haven't met female lawyers, clearly. <laughs> they start throwing a bunch of bullshit on screen, including but not limited to what looks like a notepad document with First Bank of LA checking nearly 4,000 and saving... Uh, 8,000. And then foreign account XXXXX. And it's like, what? Are you trying to show that she has, like, a she has bank? She an internet bill. Like, I don't even- Ah, she broke! This is, it's like, it's so weird. It's like, what? Is this, in, is this informing her slutness? That seems to be your goal. Like, so... <laughs> you got, yeah, cable bill, hydro bill, internet bill. What the fuck are you doing? And I guess it's just she, wait, like, wait, wait, well, wait, wait, wait. Hydro bill? That's what it says. <laughs> oh, I guess water for water. Yes. Where on knows. earth calls it a hydro <laughs> bill? Who calls it a hydro really? Bill? Have these cool. women? Have, they all rent. They all rent. I I, I, you, I have no idea what context they would bill. refer to it as a hydro bill. I don't you get, get it. You can get a water bill, and uh, depends where you, you go. You can, but I bet they all rent with utilities included, right? Like. So, <laughs> I was gonna say it's not called a hydro every, bill. Every in every month, the hydro bills like. Well, let's see. What would it be for Californians in a drought? Like 50 bucks or whatever for, for water drought. or something? It's just I, exactly 50 every month. This is worth noting, right? It's like, she doesn't deserve your praise. And instead, like, they show this instead of look at all this property damage she caused while fighting Daredevil, like, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. They've even, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they've even People put on that she's got shots of Captain America's ass Captain on America's here. Captain America's ass. It's like, oh why God. not, like... Of course she does. I did not realize that. How Remember that ass from the first pictures? episode? She talked about it a lot. Did, oh, yeah, that no, ass. We, you saw How it on the um, pictures. You saw it on her phone a couple of times. I just find it so funny that they put that on there. The, uh, the weird Chad is Doom saying masks are strange, but whatever. Chad is saying the hydro bill is uh, something that shows up in the Atlantic uh, in Canada, Atlantic provinces of Canada. They call it a hydro bill. Yeah, but do they call it a hydro bill in California? <laughs> like that's isn't that what we're asking? And Californians aren't from Earth, right? No, sorry, well, not Californians, um, Canadians. No, but both of them actually. Canadians, yeah. <laughs> Does she have an so, electric bill also? What's what's well, that? She has oh, right, I, think I think they're saying that it's like hydro power, so it's a power like it would be it's not the water bill, it's the power bill for hydroelectric power. Hydro to, electric or carbon or something. And also, what's with this uh, it shows how much money she has in her bank accounts. You think you'd have more being you? You think you'd be filthy rich? In I fact. thought that she would be richer than that because of. Uh... You think you'd be swimming in money? I don't know if she's no, been she spends now. it all. Because that that was the whole thing. She's she's actually she has no frugality. She has no impulse control. She it's very has clear. No, frugality. no, she she doesn't because no, you're right. It's just <laughs> she no, loses right. her job and immediately loses her house right like so she's literally living month to month uh despite heading up so a, a law firm like this she was behind if she if she loses her job and immediately loses the house she was already behind yeah and and to put this in perspective for people if you are in a um if you are in a major law firm a uh, big law law firm and you're you're like one of the people who comes out entry level top of your class uh you get hired from like an ivy league school your entry level salary is one hundred and eighty thousand dollars at the median uh it goes and it goes up from there she is an experienced uh uh prosecutor right like she's worked for the state so she's DA, not fresh, yeah yeah she's she's not 
working or she's not coming fresh out of law school. She's worked for the state. She has a particular skill that, that she's a superhero and is hired by a big law firm, not as an associate attorney who'd be making 180 grand a year, but as a division supervisor, as a de the department head of this new branch. I mean, we're talking, she'd be being hired at 300 to $400,000 a year, you'd have to imagine. And she has no money and she's at all. She right. <laughs> then you add in the superhero stuff on top of yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, all of that. And you might be wondering, like, what is the plan here? Intelligentsia, this is the ultimate payoff. And then they start playing a sex tape that Josh recorded, I guess. And they copied from his phone, or I guess he would have been from his phone, whatever. Um, and this, this, this is quite infuriating for her. And I was like, yeah, that'd be annoying for anybody to get their sex tape released. I think that's 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 pretty fucking annoying. But uh, it's very cruel. It's definitely um, a cruel thing to do to someone. But like, obviously, what I want to was what I'm aiming for is like this. Just remember the context. Intelligence here doing this to destroy her when. It would just be like, it, like I think most people would just be like, what, you, what the fuck are you doing, man? Well, like, everybody would look yeah, at that and go, like, wow, that's yeah. like a gross invasion She's... of her privacy. Like, what, if, what are you exactly. doing? Exactly. That's what, the, yeah, that's what everyone's going to say. Everyone's going to be like, you've invaded her privacy. And like, so she, she has sex. Okay. Um, this yeah, is exactly. what I'm saying. Like, a lot of us, mm -hmm. a lot of us do. That's, that's normal. Yeah. Just not, the, not everybody has assholes recording it and releasing it on the internet and stuff. So it's just like that. Yeah, basically, the point we're trying to make is intelligentsia. This isn't a great plan. This is not gonna. No, it's terrible. No one would actually be mad at her for having. No, sex everybody with would her. hate you. It's like this was her night when she got this big award, and you were doing this like to like. Wow. Um. However, <laughs> intelligentsia are smarter than you think. They knew exactly well, because... how she would react to this. I guess. Well, I mean, if you understand, like, oh. the yeah, the human mind, you leave nothing to chance. Yes. Like, and in this case, they managed to figure out exactly how she would react to this, which is um not great. Not great, no. Before I explain that, was it was it going to say something? Not to... No, no, nothing. I don't believe you. <laughs> I <really> know. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm just trying not to fall asleep. Oh no, slumber fairy. Oh, no, no, people no, start no. to call you. I think. Mm. Hey, well, we'll be going. You're allowed to fall in and out of sleep here and there. We used to have people who did no. that on EFAP. Um, you must wake up. <laughs> so, no, I'm pre, pre awake, actually. I'm pretty good. Ah, that's good. She wants it to be cut off, of course. Nothing's really getting done, but I wouldn't expect too much to be done within the first few seconds, of course. You, you need to, you probably know at least someone, there's got to be some server or someone who can help with something, but you could maybe even look for some plugs, maybe, but ultimately, yeah, uh, that's pretty awful. Hopefully, it goes off screen. She decides, well, you can see from this expression what she's about to decide. Um, I guess I'm just going to play it in segments because uh, we'll, we'll be fine with like, oh, and funnily enough, Mallory Book says don't do it. Which, don't uh, do it, Jen. We, we all know that no. you're going to hulk out. We didn't want to talk about it, but we knew that this could be a thing that you do. Now, he punches the screens. They're, and they're, they're really trying to uh, ham up like that we're all supposed to get that the town is still traumatized from the Hulk destroying a different town years ago. <laughs> like that's, that's what we're supposed to get out of this because the reaction that comes from her destroying the screen that has got her sex tape playing on it is that everybody thinks that the world is going to end wow. by her right now. The thing about it is, it does, it's weird. She punches a hole in a TV and drags the TV down, which then apparently yeah. crumbles the roof. You see this? Well, look, all the chandeliers are shaking and everything. Well, look yeah. at that shot where the roof is coming, and it's like, yeah. what? Why? Yeah. I, and, and I gotta be fair. And it Shane lands on a table. Thank goodness it didn't land on someone at the table. Just to clarify, like, where she punches and how she punches, they get us a decent shot of uh, the, the wide of it. Like, that shouldn't have happened. It should be that it gets dragged on whatever this, you know, system is. But it um it starts to just dip the whole ceiling down as if as if someone from above is crushing it down, you know. Um, but as a result of that, yeah, the whole building starts to fall apart. Um, so and, like, so, the load, and so yeah. as much the as load bearing wall, <laughs> load bearing TV. Uh, <laughs> so, as much as I would television screen. <laughs> as much as I'd want to go as far as saying all she did was rip down some TVs, like it's not quite the same as the end of the world. Uh, for some reason, the show makes it so that it's the end of the world. Um, and that everybody does need to actually yeah. exit the building before they get hurt by the falling debris of the entire building. Like, that's what, that's the result of her actions. 
Um, the only thing I guess I could say in favor of this happening is that she does, like, slam the ground or slam things sometimes, and then she has, like, it quakes and then destroys things away from yeah, her. Yeah, like, she could punch the ground and it has this very directed forward shock wave somehow, just go with it mm -hmm. kind of thing. Same thing with the when you're clapping, you know, it's like I feel like you'd get a little bit more a backdraft on that, so to speak, but oh well. And yeah, uh she's furious as fuck, everyone's screaming and running away, and then she spots several dudes who are recording it on their phones with masks on, being like, me hee. So she's like, Ah, evildoers, I shall get you because you're probably behind this. And uh most of them leave except for one, and then she decides to chase him. And this is where it gets it was already really bad, but this is where it gets really bad. <laughs> He's managed to get outside, and she bursts through the wall. Why couldn't she just chase him normally? Why did, she cha why did she burst through a wall? Exactly! She's that angry! Was, that, that, <laughs> that was, it's just, it's worth emphasizing. Look at all the debris that goes flying. Imagine if somebody was in front of that, could have killed him. And it, I'd say I it's mean, downright yeah. likely, because all the people And it's were likely, look out, at yeah. all the people running around, yeah. Um, so like... Yeah, not not good. Um, could have hurt someone, like in several instances. Yeah, and she's doing it. <laughs> I see everybody in chat doing the Kool Aid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the door. Oh no. <laughs> so, uh, she's freaking everybody out, and they all have those the like sci-fi guns. I'm not exactly sure what they do. We don't see them fired. I don't think. But, I uh... guess they were all here, ready and waiting, just oh, in yeah. case this would happen. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe Intelligentsia called them ahead of time because they knew exactly how she'd react. Um, and yeah, so her whole family are like, Jen, stop, please. And everyone's like, no, you are gonna stop murdering people. The one thing she doesn't do here that I thought she might want to is just unmask this person. But uh, she doesn't. <laughs> she in fact, just lets him go. And he doesn't get picked up by anybody. He just leaves, which I guess, yeah, why not? There's no reason to suspect him of anything, really. She's not. Um, so yeah, she's kind of fucked herself over entirely. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember watching this and being like, this is neat. Consequences. God forbid. We don't usually get mm. these in the show. Um, <laughs> Let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah, and she looks panicked and she's kind of destroyed her own life. And I was like, finally. <laughs> their life has been destroyed, <laughs> finally. Yeah, the show yeah. has finally recognized giving her the, just proper consequences. I just think they could have done a bit more with it because to me yeah. it felt like reaching a bit because she just I think her reaction was quite adequate I think not quite adequate but I mean she saw a tape on the screen and she smashed the screen and she got angry and she was already in a hulk from form it's not like she just burst into this big monster right and the way people treated her I mean it was like Oh my god, what, what is this monster? And I mean, she's angry. Sure, I mean, you know, she could have done a bit more. I, mean, I can't believe I'm doing this, you're but watching at it. I would even cite uh, Mallory Book's explanation, which is that, yeah, you were angry and it was fair to be angry, but you're a Hulk. So that's the whole like you point with Hulks, angry. right? Like, yeah. yeah, you being angry. That's is... what you were trying. Someone well, tried to tell you this in the first you. episode. Yeah. Exactly. And I and my best guess would be that, like, the absolute bestest, bestest faith reading that someone would give of this episode is, ah, see, he was right in the end. Look, they all see her as a monster, and it's like, well, yeah, but then episode but then nine happens. acknowledged. Right? Yeah, exactly. And what's crazy is that episode the theory of uh, the origin story coming between this episode and the next episode makes Make so much sense, sense now. Because they the would be like, yeah, I bet you want to see how what happens next, but now it's like, you need to understand how she got here before you can see how this rolls out. But that, uh, episode 9 doesn't give a fuck about episode 1. It absolutely doesn't no. care. Belly cares about episode 8. No, yeah, it's, it's its own thing. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know, maybe they reworked it, maybe they had a different ending at some point. I can, well, <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. I guess it's just like, what would it have been really? So, uh... That's that episode, and yeah, that pushes us to the glorious, the glorious so and finale. So memorable. God, I loved it. It oh, only man. took us <laughs> four hours and forty minutes to finally get to the nice. finale. <laughs> the big oh, boy. Oh, it's gonna take us that long, I bet. Someone said they had well, twenty I endings. Well, I'm gonna pop off my drink, and I'll be right back. And 
I, I hope that when they had 20 endings, it was like, how does that how does that happen that you end up with 20 endings? I don't know. Like, oh, also, I'm gonna, I feel like when you I'm write a to story, quick, so you guys carry on. Right, this well, is all cool. I was going to say was, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, all I was going to say is, I think if you, if you like are writing a story, generally you have like some idea of where you want to go. Like in the end, it may well be that things change as you go and you start figuring it out more. But like generally, you know where you're going. So like, be writing a story where you have like twenty disparate endings that you potentially could have picked from, like. Oh, that's that's like indicative of an approach to writing that I don't think I like very much. Like that you would just have almost like um, this raffle of endings that you could just pick out of a hat, and it's like, oh, okay, that's uh, yeah, we can we can do that one. That's fine. Though I guess it's kind of crazy to think if this is the ending that they thought was better, what were those twenty? What were those other twenty endings? Oof. How are we all doing, everybody? We all fine? We got all our brain cells still attacked. No, this this ending, like, I've been dying. Like, I, I hate this show. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I've been dying to talk about this ending a little bit because it was so, so remarkably awful. It was actually probably the first time in the show that I had a genuine emotional response, and it was seething rage that they did this that they were so self unaware and that should have been apparent throughout the entire thing. Cause every episode is self unaware and contradictory and it has no continuity, but like this would just, it just went beyond. And I kind of knew what was coming cause someone had spoiled what was going to happen. And even when I watched it, I was like, this is even worse. It's even worse watching it play out like as yeah like no matter what you hear right like actually watching it all play out the events is like baffling i um though it's it's funny you said that like the show isn't <laughs> it's funny to say that the show isn't self-aware because you're right but like all the show has in terms of like its redeeming qualities seemingly in the eyes of a lot of people is that it's self-aware that like so much of the humor is like meta and referencing the unit you know like referencing um like in humor or uh like the, the the place in which it it exists like in the current landscape it's like so much of the writing stems from well it's clever when we're self-aware right it's clever when we do self-referential humor like that's that's clever in and of itself um which of course it's not right like it's 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 like anything it can be good or bad but that seems to be like the the driving I guess you could say, like, dictate of the writing is, like, if it's self-referential, then it's it's funny and clever. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not. <laughs> like, at least not in and of itself. I it's like exactly. a yeah. maximum overdrive in the finale. It's like... There's... <clears throat> yeah, go for there's... it. Oh, sorry. Self <laughs> oh, no, the there's self-awareness, there's genre awareness, there's all sorts of things that you can be cheeky with, and um, none of those come off here. Because it wasn't aware, it was acknowledging, but particularly unaware. And that's that's what made it so frustrating for me is like how how can you how can you have a show where you you seem to be attempting to acknowledge all of these things, but you don't understand what's so bad about all of them. And so you're, you're making like a self-deprecating joke, but it wasn't a joke. It was actually just valid criticism of your own failure. What's kind of the um, nature of writing these types of stories, right? Is that like, it, it, in a lot of ways, like superhero stories, and especially if you're going to have like fourth wall breaking, you're like adding onto your story more and more variables that you have to try and juggle and account for while still like achieving the objectives you want. It's kind of like, I'd say it's, yeah, probably like sort of inherent to the nature of like speculative fiction. Like the more that you throw on that is like different from the world that we live in or different from the way that stories are traditionally told, the harder it's going to get to make sure that you can align all of those elements in favor of a cohesive like narrative goal. Um, and in this case, it's like, it is just like well beyond your capacity, <laughs> well beyond your capacity to do what you wanted to do and then execute it well. Really, that would have been like a difficult task in general. I mean, I guess at this point, Shamo, you know, alluding to the the big thing, right, in in the finale. Um, that man, that would be tough to write, like for anybody. But given to this particular team of writers, it's like, man, <laughs> doomed from the start. I think. Hello. Um, 
it just it's yeah it's uh well we're about to i guess get into it the finale yep. finally you are yeah prepare thy anus oh, well, yeah i mean <laughs> is there anything anyone wants to be said before going in i want um I just, just a reminder to get my uh plus shave and make a little plug here i've been going for, uh, <laughs> for a while we get, golly, just remember the the rags plus before, not everything in this in this in this world is madness all right we're about to embark on a dark journey a terrible terrible quest an awful adventure oh my god oh, oh look at that. chad is Chad's just in time <laughs> what do you know? like, he quite literally I mean, is just from, in time probably for his perspective apart, yeah, we're just about to start the last episode. You arrived right before we did my plug. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So we took care of the two good ones. And now <laughs> yeah, we're going to cover the bad one. Of course, the therapy episode and the Daredevil episode were both excellent. So this is the... Uh, yeah. The it's all been leading to this. This moment. Hey, well, hey, and hey, ironically, Sean. though, oh, like... Hey, Nick! Nick! How's it going, buddy? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, unironically, right, this last episode surpassed my every expectation, and they were all bad. My expectations <laughs> were bad, and this, like, reached new levels of bad. I was like, well, okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, shocking, to say the least, yeah. But, yeah, I guess, because, because you, you, you weren't quite here for the first four hours. How about, uh, if you want to let people know what you think of She-Hulk up to this point, and how excited you were for the finale? She Hulk, like, like every episode, um, except like the first one and maybe the last one, and you know that's not saying the first one and the last one are good; they're bad in a different way. But all the other episodes were so incredibly pointless and just utterly useless. Uh, and also, I mean, they do ruin a lot of things. They absolutely assassinate Wong in throughout all the episodes, and and but that was just pointless drivel with some of the most nonsensical legal pseudo bullcrap where they just do stuff and she's an awful conceited uh whore <laughs> <laughs> so you're a fan Nailed of the character it. is what you're saying you, you, you want to see her in more stuff can you wait for her to lead the avengers how about that that'll be fun oh uh, my shut goodness. up <laughs> shut up more <laughs> You get them ideas. Okay, fine. She won't lead them. It'll be, it'll, it'll be Captain it'll be Marvel. So it'll many. Oof. So oh, many Captain Marvel and Shield teaming up. That'd be so cool. When they punch the yeah. new bad guy, they can be like, "Fuck you, man." And then, and then you'll man. die. Man. <laughs> they'll, they'll specifically punch men in the balls. And then, or if they, or, or or yeah, or if they fight a woman, it's going to be like a, a I don't know a MAGA woman or a trad woman, <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> You Kill wanting to? Yeah. <laughs> well, see if it's uh, though... if it's Lady Thanos instead of Lady Thor when she gets the gauntlets of power. You know, Thanos he just evaporated fifty percent of all people at random, but she's got a fucking list, so <laughs> <laughs> it spans the entire universe. He, so I can't wait to snap these he, motherfuckers out of existence. He says dispassionate fear. She's like, no, evil doers. I have a list. It's real long. We got this. We're gonna get him. Uh, First one on that list is Nick Ricardo. Oh no, <laughs> suctionist. Only if he gets to review Wait, the episode too. That's not your list of enemies. That's the President Nixon's list of enemies. All right, give me that Barney Gumball. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Even though both this, uh... she Hulk and Captain Marvel had this like have this like girl boss thing going on, I cannot imagine them. In both in the same room. No, it's, it's like, the, the amount of energy there that's they have. the repulsive energy would it would I don't think people can sit in the in the chair they are in at that point. Like it'll be forcing them away. The screens will turn off. Like how could yeah, you imagine have the smell? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> comes right also, through the screen. She, she Hulk, right? She is the most awful like well, person generally, but in terms of a superhero, right? She uh, I'm trying to think of a like an anti-hero is usually uh, a positive term for a hero that just does a bit is a bit more violent, but she is like the opposite of a hero. She she's awful. She's conceited. She's just out for her, her herself. Um, and she does. And when she does try and help other people, she ends up just smashing the expensive cars and people like and property. Uh, and then also losing control and everything. She'd be the worst hero in the world. And yet, ah. Oh. 
Dude, because the, I could be like, oh, who are you describing right now out of all of the current heroes? Because I'm, I'm not sure. They're all yeah. fucking horrible, <laughs> reckless people at this point. It sucks. They, they are, aren't they? Gosh. She'll win the award for best female superhero. That's the fucking funny thing, right? Black Adam's <laughs> deal in his movie is he's like, yeah, I do shit that I want to do, and, and he just doesn't give a fuck if he kills a bunch of people. He's just, he will wipe them out. Um, and they're pretty consistent on it in terms of, like, a characterization thing, but it's just funny because he's not too different from, like, Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he's like spending the whole part of what he's struggling with in the movie is is he a hero? Is he not? And does that matter ultimately to what needs to be done, sort of thing? Meanwhile, Captain Bob will probably just be like, I am a hero. I am the best. I am a hero, of course. He'd be like, All right. I'm the best hero. Don't touch me. So, uh yeah, we, we assume something's gonna happen with the the police being on her there, but we start up with a sort of parody of the uh the Lou Ferrigno Hulk the TV show. Hulk from the seventies. Yeah. As a bit with She Hulk doing it, and they they even like put some effort into it to some degree with some of these scenes. I think. Yeah, I uh, mean, looks better it's than uh, kind of nice. Yeah, it's probably like yep. the only thing, like in terms of like a meta thing that they've done that I would say is worthwhile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, this was neat to see. My uh, my note on it was the they've baited a show I'd prefer to watch. <laughs> like, I this. know. Well, that show seems to have some level of self-awareness. Well, this show, I never can tell because some of it is just like, wait, you, you, you yeah. don't think you, I don't think you know what you're saying, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, <laughs> thing is, like, you know the tone in like the the way that she's expressing. She's trying to say, "This is so awful." Do you remember this? It's crap. And oh it's yeah. Like, no, it's it's way better than your show. But they're actually just trying to mock it, uh, um, because they think their show is so great and they're, you know. Just crapping on things out like that are honestly better than them. I, their own show. I figure that this is an homage. I uh I don't know that I get the impression that they're saying that the old show sucks. I don't know. Look at look at like her expressions, the way she moves in the in the montage. Oh, right. I don't see what you mean. Mm. She's Yeah, she's I got like, some iffy. I don't know. Yeah, she's like, do you remember this? How retarded it was? I'm gonna type in a computer and I do it on stuff and that you know they mock it. They hate that. And it's like, guys, it's a better show than what you have. I have no doubt that that show is better than this. <laughs> like, this, yeah. Yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, part of this Would little... it be a reach to say this She-Hulk? This She-Hulk looks better than the CGI one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'd be fine. I'd be, I, I was always fine with the idea of just fucking getting a strong person and painting over them, whatever. That was always fine with me. Yeah. The CGI abomination thing is creepy. I just don't like it. I don't want it on the screen. It's animations. It's not from this world. Get rid of <laughs> um, it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh, damn. I actually noticed it. I don't know if they did it on purpose or if it was a mistake, but the don't make me angry. Um, I know that like they've got Bruce up on the steps, but if she's saying the line, they should be flipped because Bruce is the one who's standing higher up and looking closer towards the camera, like in the original. Man, that is like a hyper nitpick, but it's just something I noticed. Well, um, I mean, and also he doesn't look at the camera when he says "Don't make me angry" either. He says it to the investigative reporter guy. Hey, they got a little bit of creative flair. They got to do whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like in this even, part here, it flips. As part of the intro as well, they have the creature is pursued by online trolls. It's like, oh, God. It's so um, awkward. It's uh, like, yeah, oh, you no. wrote that. That's right, you wrote this. Not those. She is provoked into a rampage that has her put in prison, and now she is only seen for the raging spirit within her. Like, well, yeah. what, what, what did uh, what did Wings famously say? Your consequences have actions. Okay. Where is the lie? <laughs> <laughs> what she did. Uh, yeah. So we we cut from this, and she is in in prison, which is pretty neat. I was happy to see that. Wait. I'm just thinking of a recontextualized wings quote. That's my life. It's waking up being green and getting kicked. Yep. That's all it is. Uh so yeah, her friends. So, yeah, and chat chat is rightfully saying, there is a tempest inside me. <laughs> <laughs> very, very true. Another incredible show. If you didn't know, we finished up our coverage of that too last week. Yeah, it's been, we did. It's been a crazy set of months. 
Uh, Enough mm -hmm. rings of power for two years unless we cover people talking about it. So who knows? Who knows? Oh, you know people are going to talk about it. I'm actually... I've well, already I been... Don't know how much I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, Chad, how much do you think their passion will articles, remain? I guess. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. I don't know about many videos. <laughs> yeah, I'll, well, I don't think there's going to be as much defense for it as The Last Jedi, so... <laughs> no, uh... no, no. No, I, don't think I so. do not think so. Yeah, but I'm, I've been linked to a couple articles here. I guess one is actually quite topical to our immediate discussion. Let me grab it real quick. Uh, boop, boo. There's that one, and then there's this one here. Rings of Power She Hulk controversy. How does that work? They run away uh, successes. Well, she just <laughs> broke out of her. Uh, she broke out of her Disney app like, and went um, over to Amazon. <laughs> Isn't like a season two for She Hulk in doubt at this stage? Like they're not sure if they're gonna do it. Why the fuck? Yes. I just God, oh, I if I was on the board, I'd just be like, guys, that was a disaster. Can we please <laughs> not do that again? <laughs> like an actual <laughs> television show? Like the I, like, I would point to no Matt would be like, look, it was funny the first time. It was, but like we need to stop actually yeah. and stop, you know. We have to make money. Yeah, like don't do it like she they did. There's no way they're happy with the response. <laughs> she Hulk is a runaway success in that success is running the fuck away from it. That makes sense. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, the lawyers are here funny. and they're going to let her know what the result is. And she immediately is like, uh, This was a targeted attack. We need to get the names of the people who hacked my phone. They need to be prosecuted. And then uh, Book is like, You took the bait. Which. Uh, <laughs> I don't that, know, man. That justifies I was... any crime, right I... there. That well, no, she took the bait, though. I, uh, I, I was, I was kind of with her on the sense that she's not talking. I don't think she's talking about that. She's talking about the fact that it's like what you've done is now going to have to be dealt with. Like whether or not they did actually hack into your phone, you kind of, uh, like if someone this releases the bigger issue, steals your info and releases it online. It's like yeah, the the definitely there should be repercussions for that. But then when you destroy like a building and threaten people's lives as a result of it, it's like oh well now we got to talk about that because that's kind of bigger. Yeah, like yeah. these are two separate matters. Like sure you can do that, but that's got like no bearing on this current issue that we're dealing with. And it seems like to be fair, book is like I'm interested in protecting you, not going after the people you who wronged you. I I want to make sure you're okay. This is that's the vibe I'm getting. But she's she, nobody's competent in this, but Book seems to be slightly more competent. She's probably the most competent person in the show. Um, and so yeah, she's like, when she says you took the bait too, I feel like that's kind of a pointed criticism of like, yeah, you didn't, you didn't have to break through the wall, you, you didn't have to attack people and stuff, you know. But you did, and then she says, I was angry. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think you know better than everybody that that's not good enough. Not, not I mean, at all, though. Do you what guys, I, like, uh, mention that she just proved Bruce right and everything that he said and that she wasn't ready and she can't control her anger yeah. and isn't responsible for her powers at all? Yeah, we, we, so well, we were talking I about how... the problem is that this one is... Oh, sorry. Go just the, the, the episode formatting, that there's the, the, the thing about how we were originally going to be getting the storyline of episode one between eight and nine, as in episode eight was going to be seven and episode one was going to be eight and then episode nine would be the same. It's that once she reaches that climax, we then get sent back to when she's learning about being a Hulk, and that it, that's where Hulk's warning would hit a little harder, I think, because we'd be like, "Oh, that, mm -hmm. that's where she actually ends up." Damn, but it's so bizarre because yeah, I don't but... trust the writers of the show. I'm like, do you realize Hulk was correct, or do you think he's not? Well, and there's something that's worth talking about. I'm glad you brought it up, Shed, because I think we. So when Bruce says like, "You got to get in control of your anger, otherwise things get bad." The lens through which, like, that's coming from him is probably more so stemming from the fact that when he got mad, like, a different entity would take over and then destroy everything. Mm. Like, She-Hulk is not the same as Hulk. She-Hulk is still, like, Jennifer Walters, essentially. Yeah. So, like, the nature of um what the rage represents is, like, in a certain sense, Bruce gets angry and then another entity destroys everything. You got angry. You got angry. Like, you specifically. And then did something. <laughs> and it's then she like, lost control. Analogous. Yeah, yeah, like, it's not analogous, you know? And so, what's funny about that is that, like, that literally shows that she's nowhere near as good as controlling her anger. And that line where she's like, I'm infinite, I do it infinitely um, yeah. more than you, is like, you conceited cow and hypocrite and bullcrap. Well, like, and if, no. you, if you remember, Bruce held his, uh, his Hulk from smashing when uh, he was, like, in Age of Ultron, when uh, they're trying to 
stop Ultron 2.0 from being woken up and uh if you remember, he tries to trap. He's, he he gets hit by a Scarlet Witch. Like he's dealing with like end of the world stakes and people actually attacking him. Meanwhile, mm. she gets her sex tape released. And again, I want to stress that is very bad, and it's not something that anybody would ever want to have to deal with. But it made her like, yes. for lack of a better term, Hulk the fuck smash. Like it's yeah. I, and this is the thing: there is a greater responsibility on her to control that anger. Like if someone gets angry, and you, this is the thing: usually. It would be a guy that lashes out physically when they get really angry. They'll punch a wall or something like that. Usually a more kind of female response to something like this would just be complete horror and depression. And and, uh, and like, so so the physical reaction is uh, it f like feels a little, but I'm not saying, you know, a woman can't lash out physically. It's just far less common. Um, but the thing is though, if she lashes out, she can like, break the world in two and so no even if this is this is really bad i i i agree doesn't take away the responsibility on her to be far more careful because of what she's capable of which is what bruce was trying to tell her and she just yeah. told him to basically piss off so we've set the everything is set in place now so that we should finally get that scene where she appreciates that bruce has been a lot through a lot more and understands it a lot better than she does and that she was wrong so she can't quite control it and she's got some work to do i'm sure we're getting that yeah. scene i'll point it out when we get there yeah Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Is, I mean, she'll use her one phone call, right? That, you know, you get oh, one, yeah. and that's who she calls. Yeah, that would have been really, like, you know, the, the the tables have sort of turned, and yeah. Um. Yeah, and Book says you're an out of control Hulk, and that's what everyone saw. And I was just like, yep, pretty much. And that again reflects what mm. what Bruce said. It feels like it's part of maybe an episode draft they had before, where this had more of a serious ending, or something, because uh. You know, the meme that happens oftentimes is the, uh, the like, to, just to skip ahead slightly, uh, they say that you can have all charges dropped if she puts an inhibitor on and never becomes She-Hulk again. And it's agreed, so she's free, but can't be She-Hulk. I was just thinking to myself, what, what, like, what? the easy story what? setup you've got there is that this season ends maybe on that and a bit of a, like, cliffhanger in the sense of, like, how will this be resolved? And, you know, some, some threat comes to town, something or some other thing happens that... Uh, prompts her to want to save lives and then we have complicated legal issues like what does that mean that she used her power to save people but she did breach her inhibitor clause or whatever you know like you can make a story out of that and maybe they were going to in the finale even but uh, they went a different direction about two, a, a third of the way in and we'll get there I, yeah, I still I want like... to know what the charges were even going to be like what specific charges or destruction of property I mean, this is a first offender. She's got mitigating circumstances because uh, obviously this happens in the context of her being publicly humiliated by a nefarious, illegal act. Like, there is there is so much negotiation room, and all we get is, yeah, yep. they agreed if you never put on this ankle um, bracelet again. It's like, agreed to what? Does she even have a charging document? She just woke up in jail the next day. Bro, what? that's not the story they want to tell, okay? They want to tell different They don't want to stories. talk about law stuff in yeah, this Yeah, law show. is gay. We're not doing that. Yeah, law is very gay, and you will not find it here. That's true. So much dick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, geez, Speaking right. from experience, man. Aaron Brackovich. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Um, wait, yeah, Shad, did you want to say something? Uh, I forgot. I'm just now thinking <laughs> of Nick's penis. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that happens. We can all get distracted <laughs> yeah, by that. How come when you hear that word, you think of his? Well, he was the one that said it. Yeah. How come oh, you okay. don't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Um, I, I got. I, I don't want to play favorites. So I want it known that uh, if someone said, "Ha, all the characters suck and there's no one that's likable in the show," I'd be like, "Hey, I like the dad. Your dad is the only person dad. I think in the whole show that I kind of find fine throughout." Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Think you're right. Yeah, Damn. I legitimately think you're right. Yeah. And I actually oh, I thought it, his line when he picks her up from prison is quite funny. He says, "Like, don't worry, honey. People go to prison every day." Yeah. But it doesn't make any sense at all. Like. <laughs> But it sounds like an attempt at a, a dad just trying to comfort somebody. Like, oh, this don't worry, yeah, it's perfectly yeah. normal. Mm -hmm. Um, she loses her apartment here, and so I, you guys, I, I caught a little brief bit at the tail end of the last one that it shows her bank account, mm -hmm. and it's bizarre because she should be earning way more money. And uh, so, what that implies is that she's been blowing huge paychecks. Yeah. Uh, on what looks oh, to be uh, booze um, and clothes, and, and clothes, which is so oh, irresponsible and unlikable. Mm. Well, like they just can't <laughs> help themselves. No, I agree. Yeah, uh, it's it's bizarre, and uh, they leave us. 
Because this is the thing about storytelling a lot of the time. It's like, well, why don't you just assume it's a plot hole and the money's been disappeared? And it's like, well, I'd rather assume the thing that makes more sense, which is she, she's been spending it all. That's that's something that makes it, the story more Honestly, it, and what is the sh it's the writers inserting themselves again because they are probably mm -hmm. struggling writers and they don't have a lot of money and they'll be thinking, well, if I lost my job, I'd lose my apartment because they're too dumb to realize that, hey, lawyers earn a lot more. Well, not only that, but they've bought apartments in California, which is probably like one room costs ten billion dollars a month. You know, so, yeah, because they have to. And it live only there. flashed, in, and they decided to put it in specifically with those numbers, just to have it flashed on the screen for just a moment. So you wonder, were they trying to tell us something? Is that just what they think a lawyer well, so has in terms of money? My theory would just be that uh, when they were putting it up, they were like, put in pictures of Captain America's ass to show that they got into the photos, because they even have a photo, like a selfie, in there. Show some of the conversations on Matcha, which they do, and it's like, and then we'll get to the sex tape. What else can we throw in there? It's like, uh, bills? Bills? Yeah, yeah, they hack your phone and they have a bills. It's like, sure, what else? Isn't that enough? It's like, is there anything else? Like bank details. What do bank details even look like? It's like, uh, get a notepad open and type, uh, How much money you have in your account, this much. yeah. What's a lot of money? I don't know, for a lawyer? Uh, $5,000. Should we go to our bank? get one of those like receipts and then like copy that essentially and just of course change all the information so you know what it looks like also the um implication here is that she got out and cut perfectly a picture of hulk king's uh icon from the internet yeah it's it's all it's, it's all indicative oh you're right yeah she would have got it, or she would have gotten especially printed yes unless she's that good at drawing with like felt tip pens she's just that good you can't even tell it's not uh, so that's, that's, yeah. We're up to, um, she loses her job because obviously she can't be She-Hulk anymore and that's the whole reason GLK and H had her. And then she, well, not so to the mention the fact that she yeah. there's other reasons they Sorry. could fire her at this point, I'd say, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's that, and then she doesn't have the money to afford the apartment, so she goes back to move in with her parents, and where are we then? What is, uh, yeah, she's just really sad. Um, she can't be She-Hulk anymore. And I think at one point she's like, this is kind of what I wanted. And it's just like, don't really know, not at all. Uh, but I guess you try to shoehorn that in because this is the last episode. Um, yeah, and they say on the news report, a neighbor says they're uncomfortable living next to an unstable. And before we can finish the set, she goes, unstable? Like... I'm not oh, unstable. I mean... What? <laughs> you are a little bit unstable. Let's just say if Jed is playing Call of Duty... And she has a couple <laughs> deaths in a row from snipers camping or something. Are we supposed to worry about the person below her when she fucking stabs the floor? I don't know. I don't know. She throws I the controller into orbit, <laughs> knocks over the building, yeah. kills two knocks people. Knocks down a process. satellite. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit unstable here. Yeah. Like, holy crap, I wouldn't even want to play Monopoly with this crazy no. woman. It's like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I thought it was funny when... Uh, and the dad sprayed the reporters off with his little hose. I love that. Yeah. He seems to be the only. Yeah, he's like the, the actually only good character. I, mean, I, I like, haven't forgotten the one for his daughter when she was attacked by the the stupid uh, whatever people. That he was like, he wants to install things to help her with security, and she's like, I don't need it. I'm I'm a Hulk, and he's like, I don't. Hey, you're my daughter, sort of thing. And it's like, oh, that's <laughs> cute. Yeah. yeah how and when she's at dinner, he cunt. takes her to a private room. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, what are you doing at this show, kind person? <laughs> Why are you here? And he's a guy too. Ooh. Mm. Maybe uh, writers yeah, are not up. sexist after all. I don't know, maybe he'll turn out to be Doctor Doom later or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, when, when Jen was finally having that nice boyfriend thing, and this was like the last review I ended up doing because um, Rings of Power overtook my life, I literally said... You know he's going to be an awful douche. He's going to be, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, sleeping yeah. where they just to get a blood or something like that. And of course, that's exactly what they mm -hmm. did. Yeah, I'm guessing so, the, the, we're just we're just shocked they haven't turned her dad into a psycho murderer yet. But hey, know, season two maybe they've done it nearly to every other male character. So yeah. I guess um, she has that one lawyer friend guy who's not like oh, yeah, terrible. Pug? Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's, a he's, he's an idiot. He, yeah. Oh. He's, oh God, he pisses me off so much too. This guy hangs out with the CEO of the greatest law firm on the planet. He's a lawyer. He'd, he'd be like one of the top lawyers in the entire country. It's like, well, I'm a retard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is his dialogue. 
like you you didn't have to make him dumb you've you've already got he's an ally he can be a smart character he can be just fine he's like you don't have to vilify every single character by their biology and yet you just can't help it you have to make him bad you know i'm I'm gonna do this because i i can't resist how funny this is uh so i apologize in advance rags Okay, this is arguably right. a spoiler for you, but it's so minute and contextless that it should be fine. But, uh, okay. you know, Brink is watching House of Dragon. He hadn't quite caught up with the newest episode. Rags hasn't mm. seen it either. And I just, I, I could, my phone was is set up in a way that I could see a notification for any, like, direct messages. And uh, it just, I see it blip in the, my peripheral vision. I look over and it just says, what the fuck is with the feet wanking scene? <laughs> <laughs> That's the I can oh, is see there, a, is there a foot job? Is there a foot job scene? Let's just say no. It's 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 not even it's it's not a it's foot job. Well, sorry, imagine no. like half a foot in someone's mouth and they just go <laughs> like that. Nice. There's a yeah. the guy wishing for a foot job. Uh, oh, I want a feet in my mouth. I hope he's okay. Uh, surviving it. <laughs> anyway, hey, strong, we're, even, brother. we're even, are we? Yeah. So. uh... Yeah, so she's set up a thing to see if she can trace, you know, the, the intelligentsia people. And she's like, this platform is operated by shell companies outside of America. One of them is going to slip up at some point and we'll destroy them legally. Like, okay, I guess that's, that's, that's the new plot thrust then. She's going after the people who released uh, her information. It's like, fine, okay. Hey, hang on, like, some person that just set up, like, a random website needed shell companies and stuff to do it? Don't even know, and I and this is the thing. Like, like, how can she prove, uh, like the people are connected? She's gonna have to get way more. Basically, she needs like a tech bro of some kind. She needs like a tech. I guy. mean, it's, can't any random person just set up a website with like, uh, like you know, a sh servers in a country that you know they can't get cancelled on, and then they don't need a shell company and all this crap to do it? It's just well, I figured like seems. You need lots of evidence, right? Because, like, it could be that someone's framing intelligentsia. You don't even know if there was... you, you got to connect all the threads. you got to get all the proof. And, like I said, she needs someone who's tech-savvy. She doesn't... She, I don't even know if she knows how to use a laptop. Sometimes you wonder. Had an iPad at some point, but... Um, she worked her phone, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and she if you had another to... character... Huh? She only knows how to swipe right, right or left. Oh. It's basically it. Can I can I swipe and can I can I swipe left and right to find these people who, who <laughs> hacked my phone? It's like no, no, Jen, that's not how it works. I mean, they have a disagreement. These two, but it's over. Uh, one of them wants to go after them with any means possible, and then Jen's like, "No, we got to do it legally." And they have this just just this awkward line where she's like, "Fine, I guess you're gonna go all Jen Walters about it," as if like Jen Walters, paragon of law. Like, well, no? her, like, uh, sorry, her friend her friend is a paralegal yeah i did, it so felt like, like they pulled it out of their ass they were like you know jen walters she's like she'll always do things by the book you're like what no she destroyed a parking she lot and left a note by the book by the book not only did she leave a note she <laughs> so i think someone in chat had mentioned she she left a note but she said it was from spider man <laughs> oh my god <laughs> That made Weird. Me laugh. Uh, evil misogynist man says he's he was dating her before she became She-Hulk and she was psycho well before the powers and he blames her grandmother. It's it's, it's a bizarre <laughs> moment that happens in this episode and there's, it's never any reference again to it. It's something they clearly cut was going to be a resolution with this misogynist man. They never filmed it or they never did anything with it. The thing is, right, I mean... They they're obviously presenting it like yeah, this is a lying douche and is doing for attention, but I mean we haven't seen Jen's whole life and the way she you know treats men and stuff like that. I wouldn't have put it out of the realm of possibility that when they first met they did date and she was awful. <laughs> like, She's, well, I mean she is awful. We know that, <laughs> but like the um <laughs> with a movie recognize her as such. This is the thing. This is like a setup. Like look at what's happening. This guy's saying these awful lies about you. He's been so mean. It's like ah, oh, so by the end of the episode at least we'll see him and she'll you know she'll push him over and he'll fall into a puddle or something. You know, ha ha, we got you. You're humiliated now. He'll he'll be drinking coffee and then she'll 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 go boo and then you'll go oh no my coffee's all over me ah you got me uh, it'll be real satisfying. But they legit forget he exists. He's not in the rest of the episode. 
Okay. <laughs> just yeah, like, like, um, like ultimate douche because he's a douche. Is it, yeah, is that funny? I guess oh, it's just yeah. adding onto the pile of um also Smug Hulk is what he is called. Named him in the uh yeah. Yeah. Oh, um but I, yeah, I guess the guy need to the... call someone else hot, smug. I know. <laughs> well, I can't be smug. Um, I mean, I think that was just that was a reference to uh what uh Black Widow called him, right? Black Widow called him mm -hmm. Smug Hulk. No, well, That's so the first she, I would say it references their own conversation. He calls himself Smart Hulk, and she says more like Smug Hulk because only oh, yeah. a smug person would take the name Smart Hulk. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, and he then says, it was Black Widow had called. Right. Black Widow had laid, enabled him, named him Smart Hulk. She changed it to Smug Hulk. Oh, God, I forgot that. I was here. I was forgiving it. And now it, it turns out, <laughs> no, it was actually she is a piece of shit. OK, cool. <laughs> if ever in doubt, you can rely on that. Uh, <laughs> incredible deductive Deep. work. Yeah. Default to her being. She's really depressed, and she says, "I'm getting screwed over." And then she looks at the screen, and she's like, "Is that what you want?" And I'm kind of like, yes. "Well, <laughs> like, do you want the honest answer? <laughs> I don't know." Um, so she decides on a whim, "I'm gonna go to Emil Blonsky's place now." It's like, really? You find that place hyper cringe, but you're gonna go there? I guess so. Sure, <laughs> fine. I'm sure that there's no reason you're going there other than the fact that you want to. That's the only reason. Uh, and the well, Jeepers, it was the last she, place her feelings were validated. So. That's true. They can all tell her she's right. And maybe Blonsky will that, explain how to hack the fucking inhibitor. Who knows? Oh, and my, uh, again, because they can't have any decent, like, male character in this, that whole, get, like, getaway people already, I was already thinking, oh, they're probably, you know, the people that hate her online or something. And when she goes there, who's there? It's I not got, the exact same characters, but it's pretty close. I have arguably a, a funny story relating to that, because I was watching this episode for the first time and taking notes when uh, Frank was in the call. And when we get to, let's call it, moments before that, I legit was just like, how in the world are they going to connect these two plot lines? Her going to Emile's and the Intelligentsia one. I was like, how? And man, they do it great. It's just great. It's top notch. Uh, it's yeah, uh, masterful. She's off to Emile's, so now we cut to a friend who's posted a picture, uh, like a video of her in college as a way to prove to the intelligentsia people that she's just like them. And immediately, like, I'm not even kidding, she, she posts the video, we see it's not even been up long enough to watch the video, and there's comment, 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 comment. It's like, wow, this is, this is fast. They're and just then, waiting. They're just sitting there waiting. And then a direct message from Hulk King immediately saying, there is a private event tonight, you should come, details below. Epic find on your video. Like... That's just not how anything works. <laughs> you can't do anything this fast. Holy shit. Um, I also well, thought it was... Writers understand. I also thought it was funny that she's on the um, the images subreddit and she's posting a video. Like, there's a reason Reddit split things up that way. But obviously, whatever. This is a fake site. There could be any... It's whatever. It's just... It's just all this online shit. Whenever you see corporate <laughs> online shit, they always get everything wrong. You've got section number one of this whole website is called posts. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> How is that useful? The posts Submit one. Submit a post. I get, yeah, if I want to put an image in a caption, yeah. I guess post is for nothing, where it's just text, well, if but I was no trying, links, videos, or images. I was trying to make sense of this. You've got, she's uploaded a GIF or a video, I think it's a video. Yeah, selected as video to the image subreddit with zero views, many comments, a direct message on the images subreddit of the post section of Intelligentsia. And there's a messages section, a live <laughs> section, subsection, then market section. A bizarre whatever. I'm sure the person who made this hasn't actually been on the internet before, or at least outside of like Twitter. No. I mean, and also, just, like, think of the video. This is has to have come from someone that knows Jen personally, and if they if this appears on the internet and it's never been seen before, wouldn't your first question be, where the hell did you get that? Do you, like, there would be cautious yeah. suspicion about this poster, not like, oh, I trust you completely. Come meet me in person. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> now, yeah, uh, you guys want to know what those comments say? You got... Found this video of She-Hulk in college begging for attention. That's that's her title for it. And then you got, so she spent law school dancing instead of studying. 
and they've she stopped. looked fun back then she did look fun um and they got would have hit it there and now she's an angry beast <laughs> <laughs> now I want to hit it even more. I'll Accurate. angry beast through my fetish. You got you can see her thog at 117. The clip isn't even 10 seconds long. And how could you have seen it yet? How could you even know that? It's like you knew this video existed, you're waiting to comment on that. It's, like, it's like what the fuck? This happens immediately. It's so weird. And then you got That's good no find broseph. Like, this is what I heard. I like I like the good find Brosif comment. Brosif. <laughs> Brosif. And then you got owned. What a joke. Yeah, I used bro. to like that song. Even her roommates hate her. Nice own. And then lol 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 lol. So, yeah, that's the internet for you. Um but yeah, she gets an invite to wherever intelligentsia meet. That's exciting, isn't it? Wow. The way that'll go. Um then yeah, of course, yeah, they're, they're, they're like it can be. Uh, see you at the event, bro. And because she reads that, she's like, oh, they must think I'm a guy because I hate women. Uh, and then she, so she gets Pug to pose. And we'll get back to that. But now, Jen arrives at Emile's place. The guy who previously wanted her blood and she never asked about any of that is like, don't worry, I'll get you set up with a room. And she reads Emile's book. I think the quote she reads out is, um, my heart beats the same as yours, yet you call me a monster. What does that make you? Or something like that. And then she says, this book sucks. Just like, why? Why do you have to do that every time? <laughs> why yeah, to... why do you try to make him out? I mean, he's letting you stay here for free. All right. Yep. And you're taking advantage of his kindness and accommodations. Like maybe you don't have to insult him, especially when you're you know reading his book. And I, it seems like he genuinely is trying to help people become better. Uh, it's also... Yeah. It's also interesting because isn't that the premise of the like pseudo feminist take of this show is that like why why am and and also her being uh she hulk and what she literally just went through where just because of her uh being a hulk and having one outburst of anger she was treated like a monster and very unfairly given the circumstances what? it's like here's this message that actually pertains to everything that's going on in the show uh all around and and yet she's just such a shallow piece of garbage that it's like no this book is stupid these concepts are stupid it's like you've been running from the like reality of this the entire time yes. and mocking it because I was going to say, this is relevant, just the, the Hulk stories that exist, right? It's like, there's a, there's a human in there, but a lot of people don't see it because they only see the, the surface sort of stuff. And as you just said, yeah, she just mm -hmm. went through this. She had a reaction that even she described in her prison cell was perfectly normal for anybody to have in terms of anger. And then this book is about that, because Abomination is about that too. At least in this storyline, he's, he's very chill now. Um, so yeah, it's annoying as hell. Yeah, there's I'm nothing to be drawn from it from her side. She's always just like, meh. Yeah, I mean, she, what, what I find so annoying about her is the fact that every time she gets, like, ghosted or, you know, they don't want to date her, everything, she, uh, the writers and herself are always finding the reasoning in, like, in her she-hulkness or the guys being the, you know, a-holes, but she never reflects onto herself as Jen. She's never que she never questions herself or am I good enough or am I just, you know, am I actually am I actually the problem? That's that never comes in her head. It's never something that she questions actually, which is so just Oh yeah, the the show is hell bent on trying to justify Jen as a character. That everything she does is perfectly fine. She's the victim uh, of all these horrible trolls and everything like that. Jen is wonderful, even when she's just wrecking property and making the worst choices around. And it's I, I think it's the writers trying to justify their own lifestyle because you know their their lives are probably a mess. And so there's like, ah, oh, see, drinking and not having a good stable relationship and being awful with money and being entitled and everything. That's this is good because that's what they're probably like. There's never that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this the show does not seem like it was written by people who have a lot of those, you know, silent introspective moments and think about, you know, what's <laughs> within them and they're not into that self betterment sort of thing. I mean, they seem to mock the self betterment, you know, character whenever they can. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing yeah. they've been doing that it was mocking mindfulness and stuff? It was it was She Hulk again, wasn't it? 
They did it earlier, remember when like Bruce was talking about meditation and, and mm. mindfulness and awareness, accepting the situation that you're in, like a level of acquiescence to your circumstances to grow through them, and yeah, she's like making fun of that too. Which well, is kind of odd, right? When like the show consistently acknowledges that she is not content. And it's like everything that that was about. And you know what Emile's doing, I guess it could be framed as like kind of like a bit pseudo intellectual or like pseudo, you know, whatever. But it's like all of it is ultimately about trying to make you more content with yourself and you just keep dismissing it. I don't get it. I don't know what the point they're trying to make is. Um, so yeah, she gets bored. She wants to go do something else at Emile's place. Meanwhile, uh, our two lawyer friends of hers arrive somewhere. And they uh, have to prepare to get Pug in there so we can gather information about the members of Intelligentsia. And she says, as a piece of advice, always refer to women as females. Which is just <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, again, I probably put this in as parody, not as anything meaningful, but sure. Um, and then and he's like, oh, I can't. Yeah. Call him. Uh, 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 uh. Like, he, dude. <laughs> he is like, I, I can't resist using the word soy. He's, he's like, oh. The energy in the room, I can't take it. Ah, I'm not, I'm not oh, evil Jesus like these men are. <laughs> so, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? He's like, I just don't know what to do. I can't do it. Um, so yeah, he's having all that of a struggle session. And uh, meanwhile, we get we get a little taste as the room as we're walking around the room of what these guys are like in intelligence here. And one of them, uh, one of them says, "Look, guys, she just sucks." And I'm not saying that just because she's a female. I'd have the exact same criticism if she was a man. They're framing that as a part of the package of being, like, hyper-misogynist. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so what are you supposed to do then? Just say, nah, don't criticize her. Don't. That's no like, criticism like, allowed. Yep. And, I mean, the writers think that they're try being so clever with this. We're owning the trolls by putting in some of the things that are actually said. And it's like... What what the more reasonable things that people say? Well, yeah, well what's your what what's the own here? I don't see it. It's so weird when, like you know, it's someone accused. It, I'm surprised they didn't have a quote from one of them in that room, being like, you know, I like Sarah Connor, I like Ripley, because they always frame that as well as like, see, that's kind of proof that they're sexist or I, something. You're like, what is it, happening? Would, <laughs> it's just it feels like yet another one to throw into the self own pile. Like your show. You, you have altered and written your show around the people that you hate. Like, how is... is well, isn't it, that, it, like, bizarre? It shows how narcissistic the writers are. They're ab absolutely obsessed, right, with uh, the discussion, the trolls and everything, so much so that they're going to craft their entire show around that concept. They'll ruin whatever possible, you know, great narrative that could have been done with this character and subvert it and upend it purely to just reflect their own kind of world and what they see and everything because they want to make it all about them. And they, they say, like, you know, the writer says, like, I loved owning the trolls and stuff. It's like, so you didn't care about making a good story. You just want to try and feed your own ego well, as part of the Hyper project. insecure. That's so insecure, yeah. though. Like, that you would... Massively insecure. You're, you're right. That so much of your show is laced with, like, trying to combat, like... The people oh, in your head that you hate. Like, I don't, I don't is, get it's, it. Like, yeah, it's the most desperate cope I've ever seen to the point where they will sacrifice their own show and write it about that just to, for them trying to. And then it shows how retarded and stupid they are because they think that this is an own by repeating it. It's like, it's like when someone, you know, someone says something really smart and, and someone's response is saying the exact same thing but in a dumb way. It's like, yeah, you think nuclear bombs bombs are, are are dangerous, right? And it's like, well, well, well yeah, they are. Yeah, sure. yeah but you think they're dangerous? It's like, just just repeating something in a dumb tone doesn't make it dumb. No, like the fact that people would think that it's clever is like baffling to me. It's and I don't all you've created, <laughs> like you've created something that's pretty bad, um, and that is being <laughs> recognized as pretty bad. And let's be real, like, beyond... Is anybody even talking about it anymore, like, even a week after it came out? It's done. Like, it's... it's. Well, I mean, this is it, right? Like, this is the end of the <laughs> yeah. coverage. And then in terms of, like, even among... But I guess the more relevant part, right, in terms of creating something is the people who said that they liked it or the people who enjoyed it, like, how much of an, an impact is that going to have long-term? Is this a show that they're going to come back to? Is this a show that they could actually talk about at length rather than just like one or two tweets about like 
one specific line of dialogue or like one specific image. What you've created is like, is I mean, it's going to be incredibly dated, like in yeah. even like a couple of years. Yeah. It's going to be hyper, hyper dated. Um, the, and it's the, just like no the thing that you could have created that was like the story that you wanted to tell that was an advancing like your narrative objectives. It's like severely compromised by just like this weird desire to shit on some people. It's just so <laughs> weird. This has no rewatch quality. I don't, oh. still can't see anybody just like one day, like, man, man you know what? Turn She Hulk on. Turn this shit up. Yeah, like, what, what would <laughs> my like like She Hulk on? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, like you know, I want—I really feel like rewatching She-Hulk: Attorney at Law. I love—I loved how like I love that that uh, that scene where I, lo I love that part where I'm um, uh, um <laughs> like <laughs> you know I love the like, part where she got her hole filled. That was that was nice. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing that this show will do, not in the long run, but I feel like it will do, is just give more sort of. Cr uh, give more ability to people to say well women cannot write great characters or great female characters or female characters cannot be great because i already see that narrative of oh females written by males and well she hulk is written by a woman and yeah it's just it it's so annoying it's so yeah, annoying to see they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot they want to like you know oh yeah. represent and this is how you represent <laughs> also, yeah, just to, and, and in case there was any confusion, because I found it so odd as well to make fun of that line specifically, the whole, uh, I'm not saying she just sucks because she's a girl, I say the same she was a man. Like, Recently, we have annihilated many main characters that are men in loads of different <laughs> fictions. Like, trust me, oh, we don't absolutely. only go after the women. That's not a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of really, really bad male characters that get written, and we, we there's several in your own show, so don't you worry hmm. about it. But, but well... Um, just on top of that, quickly, it's just like, if, if it were a common thing that's said like that, but it was just, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4, like you were saying about the, the nuke example, it's like, why throw that in there? Like, it, it just makes you look so awful. Like, you, you haven't even presented a counter, you're just saying that's a thing they say. It's like, well, okay, it's good that they say that. It's good that they mm. don't specifically go after women, is it not? Like, what? What is happening? It's that when they say that, we don't believe them. We writers, we don't believe them when they say that. So well, the proof's in the pudding, is it not? I'm assuming if Intelligentsia is a site solely about the badness that is She-Hulk, it's like, well, yeah, I guess that's true then. But if they have whole sections of the internet that are all well, about other heroes, then I guess they do for everybody. Well, this is the thing. The guy that's saying it, he literally says, Lady Thor, she sucks. Uh, and I'm not saying it's because she's a woman. I'd have the same criticism as she was the man. But I was like... Uh, but 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 why does she suck? Because if he, if he says like Lady Thor, she sucks because uh, uh, what was one of the crappy things that um, Jane Foster did in the Thor movie? I'm trying to remember. I cannot um, remember. Oh, imagine this. watching oh, that movie. It's just. <laughs> so recommend it. Um, to be fair, I think she came out a little better than a lot of the characters did for like immoral she actions. Did. I can't remember. She must. Well, I mean, she sacrificed her life to save a bunch of people, which is nice, right? Like that's just a heroic I mean, because... thing. I'm not even going to get into the mechanics. Cool. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I guess it's one of the problems, right, of, like, the way that they've written this, I don't know, like, satire or social commentary is that you're trying to map conversations that people have about fictional characters and the role that they play in a story directly into a world where they are actual people who exist. Like, what what does it mean when it's like, oh, well, if she was a man, I'd be making the same criticisms. It's like... About what? Like, who she is? Or the strength of the character writing? Like, what exactly yeah. is, are you trying to get at here? It's like, it's the same as when they had that thing at the, earlier in the season where it's like, oh, wow, we gotta have, why do we need to have, like, a woman She-Hulk, like, a woman Hulk? It's like, what, is, what does that mean, like, in a universe where that, that happened? Like, that happened to a person who's real, as opposed to, like, a new character that they've created to try and extract value, like, from an, an intellectual property that already exists. Like, these are not comparable. They're not the same thing. But like you didn't, I don't know if they didn't realize that they're not the same thing. Like, I, I don't. Well, it's it's really like weak satire. Like it, just it make is. Sense. It's, it's horrible satire because, to my understanding, was Lady Thor even very publicly known? Not no, no, not really. I, I thought I thought no one really knew of her apart from the people directly in that film, and now suddenly, Dude, so Shad, nobody should really know about She Hulk. She hasn't had that long on the. I don't. Like, not been around <laughs> that long. Yeah. 
so they, they break that in, in regards to it. But all right, all right, let's tr- let's try and take the Lady Thor example. Well, uh, she grabs Stormbreaker and threw it away, which is a pretty dumb move where Nama, yeah. they land on the planet and everything. And so that's a fair criticism. And then come on, nobody would looks, know that, right? Like, nobody, yeah, yeah, nobody one would know that. No one would, but, but, but let's pretend, yeah. let's pretend like someone's making that criticism, right? The thing that exists in the world is that oftentimes when you point out like uh, something that uh, a female character does, and yes, I'm saying female, right? That's really bad. They say you're a sexist in trying to deflect the criticism. And then the easy response is like, no, I'd easily have that same criticism if if a male character did it. And we've criticized male characters. And then they're trying to say that that's now, they repeat it's like, oh, you just, uh, because in a dumb way, like that doesn't actually invalidate the logic behind what the concept is and so they're, they're literally trying to uh, oppose this that anyone who says it is just trying to hide their sexisms and i'm like well not if the criticism wasn't based on sexism it was based on the action a character did and if they're criticizing something that lady thor did this is a perfectly reasonable thing to say <laughs> dude i think yeah. that I if mean... you had the writer with you right now and you said so you know when he says he has the same criticism for men as he does for women what did you mean by that? And then they'd probably say something like, oh, it's just something they always say when they're trying to hide it. It's like, okay, so if he meant it, and if it's true, it's okay, right? I could totally see them being like, uh... Well, yeah, but they don't mean it when they say it. Like, she would just keep going back to that, presumably. It's Jessica Gao, right? She's the lead writer. Yeah, it, it's that's what they say yeah. to hide their sexism. Yeah, and, yeah, and, we, and so we just, I just, I just want to keep trying to clarify. It's like, but if it's true, then we're good. Yeah? I'd just be like... It's not true, though. It's like, okay, but if it is, <laughs> run with it for a second, please. Anyway, yeah, so Pug is trying to... Sorry, but, uh, oh, all right, uh, sorry, I really want to unpack this, because I want to try and find, is there a context in which that word would actually work? And so what if the criticism was actually legitimately, say, sexist? And so what's a criticism of Lady Thor that uh, people could say is actually sexist? Like, um, uh, she swings her hammer like a girl? You just say she's too. She acts too intelligently for a woman. Just go that route. That would be a sexist <laughs> criticism yeah, yeah. to say. Like no woman's that all right, smart. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. Good example. But still, now the line that follows, and I would have the same criticism for a man. And it's like it actually doesn't work, even if they're being legitimately sexist. The only way that line works is if the criticism wasn't truly sexist at all. And so You're right. It just yeah. Doesn't fit. If if some one of us said, "I hate how they portray a woman to be so smart," when that's just not possible, and I'd say the same thing about a man. Um, at that point, you'd either clarify, like, "Do you mean human? Do you mean it's too smart for a human?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I think. Is like, oh, so you just mean you mean everyone? Because you specifically said woman when you could have said planet. Exactly. Why did I say planet? Planet. Why did I said human. <laughs> she is not. You she is smarter planet. than a planet. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I was thinking. I don't know about that. I don't know, I don't I know about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that it's one of those things that people say. You know, like that's really weird. Immediate follow up question. Exactly. Like I don't know, man. It's, it's, they're fumbling. It's pretty clear. The insecurity is pouring in, and we're about to hit critical. We're almost there. Oh, I can't wait. So Pug, yeah, he's he's wait. trying his best to ingratiate himself. And you might have the obvious question of like, well, wait. If these guys are all obsessed, sweaty nerds, and they watch every move that She-Hulk makes, they're going to recognize Pug pretty quickly. And he's like a friend yeah. of hers, works with her, so that's, you know? Um, which is like, <laughs> it's half and half, let's put it that way. On one side, nobody recognizes him for a while. Let's just put it that way. It's, that'll change eventually. Sorry, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going through reading the... um the subtitles and you can pick up everything they say and some of the things they say are just so dumb like mm-hmm. what is like yeah too many emotions and then a follow-up line is like yeah no one's allowed to make jokes anymore and like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep they have that yeah, no they're not allowed such to tell jokes anymore yeah. <laughs> oh yeah there's no verification for getting in here by the way you can just walk in uh, uh yeah you, i guess the only people who know to be here are the people the thing about it I is guess. As much as I like, maybe agree with that, the thing is, they do illegal activities as a group, apparently. So you're going to want checking at the door, you know? Yeah, you want someone to be like, do you have your your bro card? Yeah. And then you show it to them. Okay, bro, you could go in, bro. Thanks, bro. Females they say the, right, the passcode and, and they go BRO. BRO. Um, yeah, uh, 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 Todd is here. 
And it's like, oh, of course Todd is here. He's the evil misogyny man, so of course. And he says, Pug? And, and we're like, oh no, the stakes have been raised because we like Pug. We wouldn't want Pug to be exposed. And he recognizes him because he knows him from the law firm. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. And then he goes, this guy rules. I knew he'd be uh, one of us. And like, hates women sort of thing. And it's like, Okay. All right. I knew he was a fellow misogynist. <laughs> I <laughs> could smell it. My my fellow incel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my fellow <laughs> not sex tavern. <laughs> was um, he what he says like this guy rules to like give him you know some clout for everyone else. He says and he's hot. And, and then all the other guys are like, wait, yeah. what? 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 And then even Puck is <laughs> like, wait, what? And what's uh, I think it's the what are we doing? They're I think they're trying they to it. say that a lot of us are repressing our homosexuality. And that's yes. why we hate women, right? 100%. It's, some, it's an element of, oh, all these guys, package. I bet a lot of them are actually gay. I can What's speak that? for all of us when I say it's true. 100%. Oh, well, I don't repress my gayness. I just, I let it blossom. No, this is what it looks like when you but, have repressed it, Rags. That's how powerful it is. But hang on. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't turned it up to 10 yet. I thought these writers were supposed to be like allies and LGBT positive and all that What's stuff. And now they're trying to say that there's something bad about imagine, being gay from their perspective. What? Imagine the, being the gay it's guy. It's bad that they hide it. It's bad that they repress that. No, part yeah, of course, cool, so but really interpret it a, a little less like like generously. And if you were the gay guy in the boardroom and all the women are talking and writing this scene, and they're like, I mean, the most common reason a guy is going to hate a woman is because he's fucking gay and he doesn't <laughs> like accept that. I imagine the gay guy would be like. Wow. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. And she's like, no, 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 not you, because you're open. I'm talking about, like, repressed gay vet. It's like, still, yeah, wow. <laughs> still, wow. Those fuckers. <laughs> Those gays. Haven't so even come out of the closet hate. yet. Join the fight, coward. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't think know. The, I think the message here was that they're either repressing their homosexuality or that everyone else in the group doesn't like homosexuals because he, like, instantly takes it back and tries to well, yeah, because they're all they're all like, wait, what, 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 what the fuck? Hmm? <laughs> take your <All> shirt right. off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me, let me... Take, your, take your clothes off. Show us how gay you are. Wouldn't that be so gay? gay. Wouldn't that be do? so gay? Bro, job. The dialogue and lines just continually cringe because. Yes. He, Oh yeah, I was just saying. You guys are like, she sucks. Is she as strong as the Hulk? Is she as smart as the Hulk? And it's like, all they're saying is that she's not as strong or smart. But they're not necessarily pointing out all the actual things that make her awful, like destroying yeah. property and other things like that. Like, they completely missed all of the references for why she's an awful human being. Uh, instead, they're just like, she's not cool, guys. She's cool. She's also definitely demonstrably less smart. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, the, that's not a criticism. <laughs> that's an observation. I that it's like not, well, her. Hey, actions, we didn't write the show. They did. So exactly. That's the funny thing about it is all of the failings of the character belong to you writers, and you're recognizing them constantly and pointing like them all out. All the people who say it. Everyone in that barn who's like, yeah, she's not as strong or smart as a Hulk, and everyone's like, yeah, we we I, are I, not. Also, though. And it was bizarre. Do they really feel that people would have like this desire and necessity to say these things with other people in person when usually like just trolling criticism is it's online and has no real manifestation in like where I you need to meet with misogyny. people who think but you don't go to misogyny meetups? No, they, they, they don't. Oh, I need, I need to send yeah, you the Yeah, okay. I didn't see you at the last one, and I, go to. I was going to say, I'm yeah, pretty I'm sure I saw you there. But, you know, yeah, the one we go to, there's, there's plenty of room, man. We're always looking to add new members. Um, we're, all right, all right. we're meeting up in a barn somewhere. Also, just uh, the guy <laughs> in the chainmail print hoodie that was in the corner in the last one, that wasn't me either. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, just powering up your, weird. recharging your misogyny cells. Don't want anyone to know. The so, armor of madness yeah um one of them says she didn't even earn her powers and then uh she recommends him say she got everything through nepotism and then he, he says it and then they all go yeah yeah and it's like oh good job nice one bro and it's like well so i'm pretty sure that mm -hmm. comment that the underlying thing is just that everything's been handed to her uh is is and and why it's like well she happened to be related to hulk that's the only reason really well, it's just a fact I was gonna say like, they wrote the show. I didn't. I, I don't know why you blame me. <laughs> yeah, I mean that does. I mean that is correct. Yeah. The 
Yeah, she would have. But... Go ahead. I, I I haven't heard that as an actual like troll criticism. Well, that's, like, where are they repeating that from? I was like, there's lots of superheroes that get their powers through circumstantial things where it's just given to them. Sometimes they're just friggin' born with it. So and I, was, I, was, I was trying to say, like, that's what I mean. Not only do people tend not to to gun for it as hard as all the horrible things she's done, all the immoral things she's done, because there are heroes, like you just said, who have fallen into it as opposed to not everyone's Iron Man, right? And they build their own suit and put it onto themselves. Some people. You get fall into a yeah. toxic vat of chemicals, right? That's common. That's more so of villains, I think. Buy right? a radioactive spider, and now they have the spider powers. Spider Man's half and half because he built his own little web slinger stuff. Like, I guess it depends. Of... When you're talking, yes, yeah, yes. which aspect it is, but there is a not the not the route I would go because it's not her fault. Well, yeah, we mainly criticize her actions and what she chooses to do with her power. Like it's yes, that's, that's what the you do. focus. But um, this is what I mean. They want to have the cake and eat it too, right? They want to be like, whatever, criticize away, whatever you want. We're having fun. We're doing it. And then their show is filled with yeah. caricatures of their critics. It's like, hmm. You're not doing a good job. Yeah, it seems like... Actually, because someone's going to watch it. Someone's, not to toot our own horn, but someone's going to watch a video like this, or any if any of us make a video on this, and they, you know, all the arguments are presented. They're like, oh, shit, this wasn't like the episode at all. This isn't like the caricatures of people at all. Like, these are full of arguments, and they, they know about comic book and, and callbacks, and they're trying to, you know, change the story for the better and rewrite things, and they're pointing out all the inconsistencies. Like, that, this wasn't what I was led to believe that they were. Um, I, it, it's once again they are they think this is such a funny own where they're like we love trolling the trolls and all it does is make them and reveal them to be astronomical morons this just makes you look stupid if you think this is an own like really it's well, laughably that, dumb the fact yep. that you made the main villains of your show trolls is the best thing you could do for trolls the fact that yes. you made that you put them in their show so prominently it's like we clearly bother you so much. I'm saying we as if you know we're trolls. We make we bother them so much. And they think about us so much that they have to spend all of this time and effort and money to make a show where we are the main villains. Yep. We've done such a good job. We know that it works. They just this handed confirmation those that trolls. It works. I know that like the biggest win ever. Uh, they, like they are so insecure that <laughs> they made a whole show. Like they went that. Oh wow. <laughs> I think we can all speak from personal experience that if you give any amount of attention to a troll or someone, it's it's gonna backfire always. Like absolutely, you ignore them. Of course, it's like one of the first rules of the internet. It's like ruling. literally just wait, it, wait ignore wait. them. You guys need to stop. Are you serious? You're gonna sit here right now and suggest that people with like a you know fifty million dollar show budget <laughs> should ignore people who are on Twitter? Like that they no. shouldn't. The most no, they, important they fight of their the lives. Trolls on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> own those trolls. I mean, by... I mean, yeah. I, I, unless they have no life outside of Twitter and they draw all their self esteem and importance from it, uh, you know, if you are if you are that pathetic of a person, um, uh, I'm outside of that, because like, who would be that pathetic, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. They certainly wouldn't. <laughs> I just, I, I love the, yeah, this whole concept, we're going to own these guys. Like uh, nothing, nothing validates their opinion more than the fact that they, they know that you're sitting around seething over their criticisms all day. Like, and, and uh, like geeks and gamers knows that some of these people actually are because they've reacted to them specifically. And it's like, so then you're like, I know how to own them. I'll put them on a platform in front of presumably potentially millions of people and I'll, I'll talk about it. But then everybody watching who thinks that way and gets stuck with the, the She-Hulk uh, or who's watching She-Hulk but is like at all going, man, this character is trash. Then you go, wait, wait, they just ripped all these lines off from other people who are saying this? Who are they? I think I agree with their opinion. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you, you mentioned them specifically and I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when the the hackers took over the screen and they had those masks, were those supposed to be like Doomcock masks? Masks. I don't know. Do you, is yeah. Because they look kind of like. It could, be. Like, be. Uh, it, it could be. It's that, but I had heard one possible explanation that it could be kind of like. I call it convergent evolution, where there are these kind of type of masks that they can get have that have a similar profile, and they were so. 
but it's either one or the air. I would I, it, literally if they were like this is a fucking guy who talks about his looks kind of like this. Let's make fun of it. Like I, I could believe that. I nothing would surprise me anymore <laughs> about how they yeah, made this fucking no thing. Um, so yeah, uh, at one point he's like, someone says, uh, "Did she sleep with her boss?" And then Pug goes, "Yeah," and it pisses me off. And they all go, "Yeah, wow, we're vibing." Yeah. Um, and I was just like, "Hang on." He's like a huge font of information. They should be clamoring for every last detail he would have. He would have all you of the details. You worked with her, bro? He just confirmed that she got the job by sleeping with the boss. Like, that's huge. That's, that's, that's actually something. They haven't got anything, really. Yeah. We, and, you, tell us about it. Do you have any pictures? Do you have any exa stories? Yeah, like, we, these are supposed to be hyper weirdos who are obsessed. It's like, they would be obsessed with Pug. They'd be like, Pug, you're the best source ever. And we gotta get you to get her into compromising positions where she'll admit things, you know? And But no, none of them really care. And it's like, dude, that's like one of the closest confidants she would have had. Why would you... Just, I, I don't know, no one cares. Cause it's like, yeah, because that's not what we're here for. Story is gonna get a little weirder, I'm afraid, guys. And um, I'm I'm going through the scene and just the, again the subtitles of everything that's being said here is like the power should go to the best person for the job. And it's so stupid. That's what we always writers. say. You've said that so many times. Every time I'm <laughs> right. It's like one of the whole concepts of the superhero genre is that oftentimes powers come to the unworthy and they need to learn how to learn the response. That the Spider Man, he was unworthy for his powers, misused them, didn't use them responsibly, and as a result, is uh, and uh, inadvertently let the um bad guy got away who killed his uncle and he ha had a massive like I and so. It's the first that the nerds actually understand that oftentimes powers come to the unworthy and the arc of the story. And so this line is clearly a, a val like they're trying to validate diversity hiring. <laughs> it's it's, well, to, it's literally the hero's journey. It's like it's, one it's, of the, it's the foundation most of the common... genre, is it not? Superpower yes. superhero <laughs> is gonna be addressing the nature of the power and how it is used. Like that is like the thing that almost defines the genre. It's it's, it's how you it's how you adopt to becoming uh, to to becoming an outgroup or to be to finding uh, adopt adapt to becoming an outgroup or to finding some special thing about yourself or some unique characteristic that other people can't identify with or uh, being born with some sort of uh, wealth or privilege or literally anything it can apply to that sets you apart from humanity but also gives you questions about what you're supposed to do with it. That's the whole genre right there. And mm -hmm. it's like it's critically important. It's like, no, the, certain good fortune should only come to those who work and earn it. It's like, wait, what? That, that doesn't... <laughs> It's not... Shows how disconnected the writers are to the genre that they're working in, and yes. you, I, you really, you know, get the idea that this is them trying to say anyone who says like the a job position should go to the person, the best person for the job, like an occupation, is just a sexist because screw meritocracy, and they and the, probably the writers are all diversity eyes anyway, and so they're just like trying to justify if anyone questions that they're a sexist. And that's why they put it in. <laughs> oh, the desperate oh, narcissism. You you're looking at like the, the bonus bits of dialogue from behind. Like, uh, you're right. Sub subtitles can grab you stuff that you didn't even necessarily hear. But some of the stuff you get directly, for example, he goes on stage and he's like, I'm very proud of us for hacking She-Hulk's phone because we showed the world what a real monster she is. Having what, sex what a, with dudes. What a joke of a bit of dialogue oh. for any character. <laughs> like, they, that's a, that's not even, I struggle to call that a first draft. It's like, I'm very proud of us. Like, Jesus. And then, for hacking She Hulk's vote, because we show the world what a monster she is by that she has sex. You're like, why do you, <laughs> you couldn't even try? <laughs> couldn't even try. Nothing. It feels like didn't even try. Yeah. Because, like, it I guess not. that's what, is it supposed to be that she's like all of these guys are just I don't I don't even know. It's tough to say. Then abomination. So trying to portray all these guys as incels when they're actually all really well dressed and well presented and stuff. It's like I don't yeah, know. They yeah, they slimy didn't and sweaty. Him. Yeah, they didn't there was nothing about how Pug was like, Man, it smells. Why does no one wear deodorant? <laughs> they all just seem to be normal people. 
No. Because that's the truth. Oh, Shields oh try to God. expose the normal man is a misogynist. And... They could they be could your be neighbors. Anywhere. They could be yeah, anywhere. Yeah, 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 we have the same thought. <laughs> Underneath the floor. I'm being a misogynist <laughs> from inside the house. Uh, but yeah, then it's revealed that they've got a guest speaker and it is Abomination, which is immediately... It's so funny how brains work. You're like, wait, but what about the inhibitor? And I could honestly see the writers being like, inhibitor? We're not doing that anymore. Like, oh. No, we that we had that one scene where she had it and that that's it. No, I'm talking about Abomination. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. So the fact that he's Abomination means that it should trigger the inhibitor, right? And... Uh, it should, yes, which means he and he knows, especially as of uh, two episodes ago, if that thing, you know, even gets malfunctions a little bit, people are going to come out and check. Yep. So and also but, he can't well, get big without breaking it. You'd think so. You would think so. It, it would be designed in the case of if uh, if he turns into abomination, it will break is, and that will automatically is the, you know, send a signal. Is the implication that he'll do the speaking arrangement, then he'll go back to normal Emil, and then they'll come and check, and he'll be like, oh, I was rescuing my chicken from the fence. That's what that's what that triggering was. So it was supposed to be a lie the whole time? So I guess that he has been... Yeah, well, he does pretty much say he does this for money, which is okay, right? Uh, there's more to talk about on that in a sec, but... Yeah, he just regular... And so what a shit inhibitor, and what a shit service to prevent him from becoming, because he can just do whatever he wants and then say he was hit by something shocking. Gotcha. Um, I suppose, yeah. Even though any of these guys, often if... I mean, it's very easy for this information to get out with someone with a phone, especially if it's just speaking arrangements he's doing. But uh, I guess maybe yeah, have to sign something. All... I don't know. You think yeah. that a bunch of people who are big into hacking and all that sort of thing wouldn't so loudly do this whole "oh, look at us and look at all the things that we did and we're going to show it and I'm going to admit to it in front of this big group"? I think you'd have more discretion. No, it, it's well known fact that everybody who makes it onto an internet forum uh, always values the integrity of the forum at its maximum um, yeah. at all times. None of them will ever That's be mad. Code. Right. None of them will ever be mad or jilted or feel like they need revenge or or have their information posted and change their minds. Nothing like that. No one would ever try to infiltrate one of these groups. Everything works perfectly all the time forever. And they got it on lock because, you know, they have that. That application process where just says, lol, she's 30, ew, uh, get you in uh, within literally a second that uh, that they've got to just lock down. No big deal. I don't know why you guys are even talking about this. This is well within reality. Well, the whole show is. It's very good, actually. <laughs> yeah, People say yeah. suspension really disbelief. Like, I didn't need to do that. I just believed it all. Good stuff. Um, so, yeah, the other thing to address then is like, wait a minute. So, where is this? It's like, it's in Emil's little little getaway, his little lodge, that's where he's hosting this, and so, uh, uh, Jen is wandering around right now, so she's just gonna end up here too, because this is all just happening this way. You might be like, but, but there's so many contrivances to make all of this happen, same time, location, day, the, and, and the same, like, really? Like, that's just, the, and you're just like, yes, move on. It's gonna get much, much worse, but don't you worry. Um, she comes in, and she's like, what the hell? And he says, oh, God, Jen, and turns back into, um, Tim Roth. And he's like, whoa, 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 I only do this for money. It's just for profit, okay? And then she says, I vouched for you. And he goes, oh, well, I'm sorry that you're upset. And then she says, was there a real apology in there that I missed? And, um, I heard that, I was just like, well, no, he's, he's saying he's not sorry for the action. He's sorry you're upset. Like, there's... That he does, he thinks it's okay to sell abomination, right? Which, to an extent, like, yeah, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with that. It's just that he's breaking the law by doing it. Um, or at least in his case, right? So, he's upset yeah. because it can get her reputation, her non-existent fucking reputation as a lawyer, because uh, now she's been fired. Uh, I was, I'm assuming she's, like, possibly lost more than that, right? Like, through being... Is it when you when you're like charged with a crime, do you lose the ability to practice law? How does that work? No, no, you have to. So you have to have a disciplinary ruling that says uh, that you you have some characteristics or you you don't meet the fitness characteristics to practice law. Typically, that requires um, a conviction of a crime of dishonesty, uh, fraud, okay. 
um, something like that. Okay. But it, it could cool. be other things in the course of representation. Now, should Jen have disciplinary actions against her based on her representation of clients throughout yes. the show? Absolutely. <laughs> Just terrible. Yeah. Well, so this is but, the problem. We know she's no longer practicing law. She's not hired by anybody. So it's like, oh, maybe she's not a lawyer anymore. And you're like, I can't tell. They don't tell us. Right. Now, I mean, but like destruction of property or whatever would not be sufficient uh, on its own. There'd have to be some sort of circumstance around that to, to lead to disbarment. Um, remember that lawyers make the rules regulating lawyers and they all want to, you know, be able to slip up and do a bunch of cocaine or whatever and not get disbarred. Mm -hmm. And they all want to go out and like have illegal prostitution sex and not get disbarred. Like they all want those things in the back of their mind. So they write it into the rules to be very, very, very lenient. You just literally can't like steal client money. You can't uh, commit uh, some sort of fraud or whatever, because then you wouldn't be able to represent yourself as honest before the court. Um, so yeah, uh, Abomination does speaking events just for money. He's got no intention of doing anything evil, which is what I thought they were going to do the reveal for, but turns out no, he's, he's chill. Then uh, the two lawyer friends burst in the room, like, oh shit. And then Josh reveals to be not only a part of Intelligentsia, but like its leader and that uh, he hired Josh. No, sorry, Todd hired Josh, I mean. Uh, Todd's yes. the leader. He hired Josh to get her blood and to copy the, the data. And he's revealed this. And then he says, um, uh... I didn't get handed superpowers. I had to earn them as he is handed the superpowers because they're very funny and very clever when they made this show. <laughs> the only thing about that that I wonder is like, okay, being handed he superheroes kind of does not make you a bad superhero. That's not the crux of it. She was pretty much handed them too. So if you're trying to say like, see, he was handed them. He's actually the one that was wrong. It's like, well, so was she, but... Well, he yeah, worked right. harder to get him because he, he made this whole site and he organized all this Wait, together and he started him. this plan. He started the plan to get the with Josh and everything. He's like, if anything, he he did, I mean, not earn, but, you know, work towards getting those powers so that he could get that vial. I just want to be clear that I understand what the show's trying to do here, right? It's just trying to be like, he's a hypocrite. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, fine. But I don't agree with this position anyway. Like, the nature of you acquiring your powers doesn't necessarily say anything about you. Uh, oftentimes we wait until to see what they do with them. The fact is, like, this doesn't change the fact that she was basically thrust into having powers. That's, like, a big part of this story was how she's dealing with that, so... I don't know. But anyway, he's got her blood, he injects it, and he becomes the cringiest Hulk that you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, <laughs> and well, and, and also, second, people second might try and say... Hulk. Yes. People might try and say, oh, no, you can't criticize this because they knowingly abandoned this plot li plot, plot threads. Like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. They actually spent several episodes building this plot line up. And the fact that they abandoned it later just actually destroys the reality of what happened. The, the guy was there. He did steal her blood. Now, where is that gone? Nowhere. It's, it's literally ripped from reality. It doesn't exist anymore. But the thing is, no, because they did build it up. The, I feel this was unintentionally where they were intending for the show to go. And when it goes off the rail, it was all part of the rewrite because it was so crap Agreed. and cringe. Oh, like, we, have, we have tons of examples, right? They have the evidence, they have the blood thing in uh, with Hulk. He's like, oh, I can't get it. And then, of course, the fact that they had the blood stuff with uh, those guys <laughs> earlier in the season, like it was it was a consistent thing. Like you yeah, can they, decide you want to drop it all you want because of how stupid it was. But you wrote it. You set you it wrote up. It. You set it up exactly. And that because this is then what uh, validates the criticism is that what happens here for him should be impossible. Bruce said, oh, th oh, you know, it only affects Jen no, because no, they, they have this Shad, super rare condition. But Shad, there was a throwaway line where he said, we synthesized it so it doesn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you an idiot? Shad yeah. figured it out. Yeah, they That's figured right. this out he, with science. They figured it out, Chad. They, they just figured, figured it out. It out. Uh, Look, they could wrote it. They could make oh, an internet I, forum. They could definitely do this. I can't believe you. I don't want to be He says, "Come at me, bro," doesn't he? Oh, yep. It's just wonderful. It's embarrassing. So, like, I, 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 maybe it might be worthwhile once everything gets laid out to just sort of run through the list of everything that's happening here. And how absurd it all well, is. Well, yeah, I've been trying to sort of flag it up, right? We had, this is Intelligentsia's meeting. You have Jen has arrived to, to point out a bunch of things, but also Abomination is here. The two mm -hmm. lawyer friends are and here, and now Todd happening. has become a Hulk. 
while this is happening, she's like, oh, is this where the season was going? No way. Like, this isn't where it's going. It's like, oh, what? You mean the season that you guys wrote? Yeah. It's, <laughs> man, it's pretty, pretty shit. Yeah. But it gets worse. That is true. Oh, yeah. God, look at look at this. Like, oh what God. is this? <laughs> yeah, this is this is one of those uh you know, how it was going where it's how where it is now sort of thing, like in terms of yeah. just the MCU. It's how it how it's currently uh, going. Jesus. I like how this is meant to be like Hulk. Do you remember what Hulk looked like like before? What Hulk actually looked and I guess this is the nature of being a Hulk now, right? Is that you you always have there's no alternate personality. You're always just yourself now. You've lost one of like the biggest facets of of the uh, of the character, and of course I the insanity of this. If it was so easy to thin syn synthesize Hulk serum from just Hulk blood, the U.S. Army would have like yeah, an army of Hulk. Isn't, isn't that what the oh, Incredible Hulk the is about in yeah. the MCU? The, the, the Ross is trying to crack that shit. And it well, was really difficult. We that the, the context that even when they were able, if they were able to get the blood, it'll be so damn hard to do. But this random idiot, he just gets it and he's got it instantly. It's like, ah, oh, suddenly it's easy. I'm sure they well, could have found Gog's blood somewhere in the battles with the Avengers and everything. Because aren't there times where he actually legitimately bleeds? Or when he's in um, Bruce Banner form? And they, they, if it was this easy, yeah, there would be an army of Hogs already. I can explain that. But they that. don't care about wait, stuff. Wait, 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 wait. His team to of give... sciences are better than their team of sciences. I I gotta I gotta say one this might be internally consistent with the show, even though it's completely inconsistent. Remember, Bruce's blood didn't work that way. Her blood was better blood, and they made oh. a point of it in the first episode. Oh. That's, that's uh but I mean he said it was like a one in a so what do you need to synthesize then if it's that great? I don't know, but if they, I'm just saying that would be the defense to the consistency would be, well, if they took Hulk blood, they weren't able to crack the code, but it was actually something in Jen's blood that allowed them to crack the code because Bruce then used it to fix his own blood. Uh, I mean, that just creates the tons of problems though. Now it means that Jennifer Waltz is just walking around. Like if at any point she's vulnerable and somebody manages to get her blood, it's like, man, this is uh, yeah. a, a Ross He's compared to Hulk to a nuke. You know, yes. Ross compared him to a uh, like a like a nuclear weapon in in Civil War, rightly so. Like the amount of yeah. damage that one Hulk deadly, can do deadly, yeah. is crazy. Like the implication, but but it's never going to get addressed. It's over. Like it's over. This particular plot line, you know, it's not going to be like a thing yeah. anymore going forward. Maybe it will, but I doubt that it will be handled particularly uh well if they do decide to pursue it in the future. But I don't think they will. Then it's the purpose I have, yeah. Titania shows up. She just shows up, just because. What's the point of that character? Now she's there. I why don't know. I have no idea why, why she was even part of this show. I think that's part of the meme. I guess is it that there's like now. Is Titania it the meme? I thought you well, isn't like Titania like She Hulk's arch nemesis. Oh, obviously in the comics maybe, but in this show, <laughs> this show has been. Pain. She's a jerk. Uh, she's a retarded jerk. Yeah, I mean, her whole and thing is, I'm really strong place. for some reason, also I'm an idiot. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's great. Yeah, Another here. idiot character, we need more of them. Remember, yeah. because Jennifer acknowledges that it's stupid, that's okay. Well, they're, they're trying to lean into it, because this is where Jen starts to say, oh, what, are we really doing this? And then they're like, oh, 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 let's try and make the joke to pretend to build up to a Marvel stupid kind of spectacle ending. Wow. Uh, and so they throw in they throw in her, they'll throw in Bruce, they'll throw in hey, Abomination. There's people in chat who haven't seen this, okay? <laughs> so, ah, okay. This is important, Probably right? Todd them. tries to attack Jen, Abomination pulls her out of the way to protect her. And then it gets really weird. Abomination starts just like fighting the guys in the room because Todd commands them to attack She Hulk. I'm sorry, like, but what, what, what universe plan, guys? does yeah. a random sweaty 4chan nerd physically attack Abomination <laughs> and She Hulk? What? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out! Your first reaction to any of this would be like, <laughs> I'm out, away. I'm done. It would, it would, imagine how much funnier it would be if they all ran away, like as soon as this happened. Like, yeah, that would like be this. funnier. <laughs> he's, he's only an 18-foot monster. 
Like when that guy him well, dead. And as Shad mentioned, <laughs> look who it is. Bruce, Bruce is here. Jumped from yep. space, presumably. Man, this is great for marketing <laughs> material. Man, like it's really great to just have like Bruce jumping into action for the marketing material to get people to watch the show. Totally like no adverse sort of um, On, objectives when it came to writing all of this. You see, he's mistook the situation. He believes Abomination is attacking yeah. She-Hulk. Thus, thus we can have footage of Hulk fighting Abomination, the rematch for marketing material. But I mean, the rematch in this case, my goodness, what happened? <laughs> what the fuck happened? What happened? Dude, you used to be as big as him. You were the same height. Like you were. He's a, he's a manlet. He's a manlet well, now. He's dude, a Hulklet. You, you, what you happened? You used to be like the same size, and you had this crazy, massive battle. What happened to you? To be fair, Hulk had he some embraced haikus. His femininity. Haikus were de <laughs> delivered to Hulk, so that's true. Look at the, look at this fight. Look at it. Titania throwing people is, around too. Hulk uh, getting in touch with his like inner Zen and hybridizing the two uh, disparate personalities into one made him into um, a controlled but weaker version of Hulk, right? Abomination just stayed as fucking big as he yeah, was. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this, exactly. this is what I mean. All the, stakes, all the stakes are fucking dead. Bruce is just like, man, you managed to do that? That's amazing. When I did it, I had drawbacks. You seem not to. And he's just like, nope. And he's like, how did you do it? I don't know, Zen. Yoga. Look, all right. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah, The Incredible Hulk, it's not a great movie at all, uh, but like, man, the fight is so cool. It's so intense and violent, like, and raw, it feels like it's two basically unstoppable forces going at each other. Look at this. What? Look at this. What this is, is lame. This is lame. Like, <laughs> yeah, the fact, that, the fact that he's wearing like a, what, like a hoodie and then the Abomination's wearing just like a t-shirt fighting uh, each other. Yeah. It's just lame. It's lame, all right? It and is. and sometimes someone might convince you like the MCU has always been like this. Like it hasn't. <laughs> no one has. Yeah. No. Don't, don't tell that lie. But I mean, it's worth it's worth yeah. Like recapping in terms of what happened here. Jen just decided to go to hang out at Emil's like little compound, which just so happened to be the place where he's doing a speaking engagement with the group that is d specifically targeting her. That just so happens to be run by the dude that she was like that she went on that awkward date with. And also, her friends are there scoping all of this out, and then all of this stuff happens. But, well, what has it all? What has it all led to? Where does this bring us? Can I just say this screenshot's well, pretty great with that subtitle as well? Is this yes. necessary? <laughs> <laughs> like this We're is where Jen, like this is where Jen, she starts to say lines that I think I don't know some Marvel higher up or the people who f saw the first cut of the season said is like, is this 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 is a mess? None of these storylines make any sense. These are lines Jen says, and it feels like this was yeah the higher ups just saying this is dog crap. Get rid and of I, it all I, and they rewrite it. Is this necessary? It's like, yeah, because you used a bunch of footage of fights in the show as part of your marketing material. And, and like, all that. of the yeah. Yeah. several of the plot points paper. did lead to something like this, even though it's you don't get to run away from this in a yeah, a really contrived way. But they did. There are plot points that were building this up, and. So well, I, I would just say it's like, if, if the claim is like, oh man, we don't need to end with a big fight. It's like, sure, but you still use plenty of fights because you knew you needed it for marketing. And you don't get to use it for marketing and then run away from it. Like, I'm sorry. And, and we all know when you have a finale for a TV show, you typically have something large happen. That's big just, happen. Just yeah. It doesn't need to be a fight. That's But Marvel shows tend to have a fight. I mean, and it's it, been pretty consistently well, it reliable in these shows. If they had a cool fight at the end, it still would have been better than with what what they went with. Well, it's it, the problem is not strictly a fight. It's just been every single time. It's been like some stupid fight that is not well informed in terms of character motivations and really stupid, like logistically. Like every single time, like in phase four, for the most part, they've ended with some dumbass fight. But like, there's nothing wrong with a fight in and of itself. And you didn't need yeah. to have a fight. That's fair. But still, you you wrote this. You, you set it up to be this way. And... Uh, and 
I just find it hilarious. Jen literally says none of these storylines make any make sense. Make any sense. The storylines you wrote! By the way, <laughs> my VLC play is glitched to the point where is this necessary will remain as long as I'm hitting the frame <laughs> Milk that I see work. VLC wants to have some commentary on this, but yeah, so <laughs> she questions... Why do you make me play this? She questions it to the point of she decides, fuck this, I'm breaking out of the universe, which, um... That's a thing. This, this is like, there's going off the rails and then going off a cliff. This is where the show just destroys itself completely. The comic, oh, no, the, the they didn't do it to like this extent, oh, where, of course, like, it's, yeah. where it undermines any possible stakes or investment in the show. Because now, if She Hulk has ever done anything in the future, you'll be like, well, if she gets in trouble, she can just rewrite reality, jump out of her show, and and literally like. Oh, it's it's unbelievably retarded. Yeah, because this, this is, I want to watch I Am Groot. Groot takes a bath. That's probably more, wanted... more coherent, yeah. This I never is the wanted most... to oh, punch a writer more. <laughs> I never wanted to punch a writer more since I watched The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, that was another great movie. This was uh, the fine. most overtly disrespectful thing I have seen a writing cast do to say, yeah, all of our show was shit and we know <laughs> it. And everything we wrote is all pointless. And we're acknowledging that it was a complete waste of time. This is the deus ex machina to end all of them. And it's Whoa. because it's self-aware deus ex machina. They're like, yeah, no, we know it was all worthless. All these plot lines, none of them made sense. None of them mattered. There was no cohesive story. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Here you go. See, Fuck because you. they did it on purpose, it's fine. Which I'm, I don't even I, know if they did, but yeah, if they I did don't it on think purpose, they did. It's even the meme. then, you wrote something bad, and you know it's bad, therefore it's fine? Hmm. Crap. I this shot right here where she followed. lands, that's a trailer shot. That was in it the trailer, trailer and they were using it as like this big reveal of her costume and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's her breaking out to go to the real world, to go talk to the writers of the show. Yes. Uh, and, and it's such a like, it gets way worse once we understand the full nature of what happens here. But like, you know, some people will be like, so you can never do a fourth wall break? And it's like, there are so many ways to break the fourth oh, yeah. wall. I mean, I think of the Deadpool uh, video game. He gets to a part in the thing where suddenly the quality drops and there's yeah, the just like, 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 like it's, yeah, they've run out of money. Like, it's got in, in place, you know, um, assets and stuff that are there. He's like, what the, what the hell? And he calls up his agent and he says, all right, well, this is not good enough. Wire them some money and tell them to fix this crap. And then the, the, suddenly the game repairs itself. But the thing is, the thing why that works, it puts the game back on track in the storyline and you can pretend that that was just this funny little thing side thing but the stakes are still in place the story where it was going is still in place this literally use it uses this fourth wall break to destroy everything mm -hmm. okay yep it's like integral to the plot right and once you do yes. that you're starting to walk a fine line because nothing matters it, now because like I, I don't know if the She-Hulk fourth wall breaks where she jumps out of the panel, she literally rewrites reality, because if it happened in the comic book, I would criticize that as well, okay? Because she just, like, literally, why like she could have jumped out of her reality and, and removed Thanos because she didn't like it. It's like, this is insane. Nothing matters now. Like, like you thought you could have topped Loki with removing free will from the universe, but yeah. this is just insane. <laughs> Well, this we removes removes the almost, uh, I was going to wait until we get to the Kevin scene, right? And we're almost there. A little bit more time. Yeah, but that's, we, got some more, we got some more cringe to go through. Yeah, there's a couple that. little bits before oh. that. So, um, he walks in on the writers for She-Hulk. And one of them is saying, like, what if the entirety of season two is just a dream sequence? And it's almost like, I'm just sitting here like, so you're writing it as though you guys are airheaded idiots that come up with really bad ideas, huh? And right, be like, but in reality, you think what you've written is actually like brilliant. <laughs> but so they're real kind of like, Yeah. Um, I found this really bizarre because when she comes in, they don't seem that shocked. They're mm. kind of like, oh, there she is. And then She Hulk's like, what's going on? Why is this the finale? And I thought when she said that, she was referring to her being here because they'd written her to come talk to him. 
because they no, don't seem they surprised. This, they is, no, they see, is, they, this makes I guess sense it depends on what layer we're at. Very, very high. Mm. They're so high. I, <laughs> and drunk. Also, this is fiction because I'm pretty sure there's no men in this writer's room. Yeah. <laughs> like, like in actuality, because these are actors for the most part. Yeah. Um, oh, but you I mean, see, is it gal there? there? She's a, yeah, like, yeah. they're that narcissistic and um, uh, insecure that they had to what validate write on those and notes? check them into the story. We can't see what those notes board. say, really. What did they write on those notes? Like, what did you actually write down, like, when you were mapping out this story? What all I can read write? is totally do it. That's the only one I can make out. Uh, all right. <laughs> I guess it's just like, this is more fiction than all reality. Right. It feels like planning out um, the, the story from beginning yeah. to end. Just to clarify, right, because someone might say, what do you mean they're not shocked? They're clearly shocked. I'm like, right, so maybe I should contextualize this a little bit better. If my fictional character walked into my room, you can guarantee, you can guarantee goddamn fucking tea that my reaction is going to be, huh. It feels like you missed an <laughs> opportunity for a joke where, like, one of them Sorry. scrambles for, like, a shotgun or something. <laughs> like, like, seriously, you know, like... People have actually asked me what I would do if I met what my character I wrote, Dalen, and I'd crap my decks because I think you'd want to kill me for the crap I put him through. I'd like, I, I'd run for the hills. I'll be this like, is oh, this is terrifying oh. in so many ways, but they they all yeah. get over it really quickly. They're just like, well, because well, yeah. it's funny. We got we got jokes, some really high caliber. Also, well, that's why I was confused. I thought I thought for a moment that they were talking about how they'd written her into this room. Um, but no, they they are, they are, so this is, she has, the second she broke out of the show was the second that she went off their rails, correct? Yeah, I think so. Okay. At least that's yeah. what we have to believe. So they say- I also want to point out- oh, Yeah? I was just going to say, I want to point out the hilarity that in the entire show, every man who looks at her for one second, she immediately has sex with. There is no danger of sex with either of the men in this room. <laughs> they, um- it's pretty fucking embarrassing. I don't even know if these people are well, real. Uh, it, it feels it's difficult for them to write any humans, you know. There's no chance on that. I wish but we could read those stick notes. I wish like we could too. Yeah. I'm sure they're. Oh, wait, a feeling that I get, like in this scene. I mean, dialogue's been pretty persistently bad in this show, but like this scene feels very first draft. Feels like every line of dialogue is like the worst. It's like the first one you would come up with when you were writing the script. Like it's just not punchy. It's not very refined. Like, um, cause there's a part where it's like, oh, you know, like fights the bad guy at the end. Where'd you get that from? Every other superhero movie ever. It's like, oh, that's, uh, it's really weak. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's, there's no, like, it's, it's too it vulgar really and unrefined. Come. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it, like it's, it's it writes, the first version you wrote. Yeah. It reads like the first notes it. you took. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That guy in and the then, back is then, the most relatable one. He well, looks just standing like he's there about awkwardly. to have a mental breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like he's actually seeing what they're seeing. Um, but yeah, they, they say uh, we're, we're, we're doing it our way. No, yeah, she said let's do it our way instead of... Because um, they say certain things are supposed to happen in a superhero story. And she says... That's oh, another let's just... line that's very first draft. I just, I don't know, it feels that way. Yeah, and she says let's do it our way. And then they go, no, Kevin wants this. And it's like, wait, so does Kevin write it or do you write it? Because you just said like... Well what's supposed to happen and they've all got their pads and stuff and it's just like yeah but kevin wants this and you're like wait and then of course later on we actually see like with kevin directly rewriting so i don't know what they do yeah i have no I idea don't... what they even do that's true they exist just to pretend there's writers maybe which is actually more accurate to how marvel functions these days than they realize yeah right <laughs> um so yeah she says fuck it i'm gonna talk to kevin then so it takes us yeah. to the scene um, well, after, of course, she... Uh, fuck, yeah, I forgot about this. Well, she, she skims through an NDA that's like 50 pages long and doesn't read she it just because she's it. a very good lawyer. That's consistent with a character yeah. bringing you know it at this point. Mm. <laughs> she, don't, she don't read she it. She doesn't read anything. She doesn't read anything, ever. Nope. Also, you don't look either. like you're here. You really don't look like you are in this scene right now. Get like away from the Iron Man suits. Ooh, that looks bad in particular. Still, yeah. that looks like one of the best attempts at their CGI of this character. No, yeah. I, no, 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 no. This, this is definitely, like, one of the weaker ones. Like, really? Oh, I think there are so much worse than this one. Um, there are, make, like, make... she she looks super non-integrated in this one. Um, Like, it really doesn't look like she's there. 
Oh, look, it's the first legal documents in the entire show, and she doesn't read a single word of them. She's done oh, this no, before. She, no, she missed the uh, before, like in the, when the, she went to the prison. She didn't read anything. The one about, yeah. like, liability for her own injuries slash death, and she didn't read it. This is unreal, but yeah. that's, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, um, yeah, anyway, she says, why'd you make security. me sign this if you were just going to, like, raise the alarm? And then he's like, everybody has to sign the NDA. When it, when it, it's funny to me because it'd be like, well, he distracted you with it, right? That's the point. And it's like, no, it's just a joke about how everyone has to sign an NDA. It's like, oh, mm. okay. Mm. But anyway, so um, the security guard. Yeah, she beats the smart. piss out of everybody. Which, what does it look? If you are Hulk strong, how do you like have fights with regular people that are anything? With Disney like, how staff. is it that she can even attempt to restrain you? Well, especially if you kick him in the chest and send him flying, you kill him. You're and you're a Hulk powered individual. Try to remember but... what's happening here. What are the motivations here? We got people here who are doing their job as security yep. guards versus a person because who you wants want to rewrite to... your story. Yeah. Well, she wants to escape the responsibility that she's come across, which we've yeah. seen this before. <laughs> In other mm -hmm. characters in Phase Four, who also happen to be a female, happening. <laughs> running away from your fucking response. Stop writing them this way, and you're like, oh, well, it's not so bad. Me... It's like he's she's killing people to do it now. She's just like wonder. <laughs> Look at that. You throw she's a guy killing so Disney hard employees. Into the wall, like, like, <laughs> I like I humans. He's got a brain hemorrhage now, or something like that. Yeah. Why did you do this again? Yeah. This was. This is one of the oh most offensive God. scenes in the show from for all the reasons you guys are saying. Like, this is this that, not like, in control. the show anymore. This is reality. Like, that's the joke is that she's in real life destroying real people uh, physically. You might because... like her show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are, and again, not, these, are, these are all Let's... Disney employees. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. just straight up. Near kills it. them because, well, I don't like the way my story is going in the show that you have. Mm. Which, by the I way, I'm pretty sure the, <laughs> she would have defended of my actions. It's not, the, and I want to be specific. Some people might be like, it's not the consequences. They wrote everything right. And it's like, no, 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 no. She feels her reaction was on the level for who she is and what had happened to her. It's the consequences she hates. It's the fact that she's being stopped from being She Hulk, the fact that she has any punishments at all. That's what she wants to change. She doesn't feel she's a yep. a person that made a mistake. This is important. No, <laughs> like this is, this no, is... she she doesn't feel that. That's mm. the whole show. I mean, the entire character, and it, this is what makes the show even worse. She's a static character. She learned nothing and changed nothing from the very first moments when she becomes She Hulk. She's like. No, I don't have any separate voices. I'm a woman. I did it better. I did all this stuff, and I, I deserve all of this, and I don't have to worry about that responsibility. I'll just walk away from it. And she's like, yeah, no. Uh, all the responsibility comes crashing down. No, I'm going to run away from it. And it's like, so what about this character is Empowering. interesting? Why did this story happen? Stories are what uh, who ch stories are how someone changes, typically speaking. If you have any sort of character-driven narrative, and there's none, her character's a fucking prop. It's well, not I, even a good prop. And I would say the closer you can get to fully having a coherent character, it's an awful person. But hey, I think that's most actually uh, shown in this scene. So. <laughs> This scene, she mm -hmm. sees her whole room filled with TVs, showing Marvel movies, and there's a couple of stands for the comic books, I think. Um, and then this robot Things greets like her. Later, yeah. Hello, I'm Osimo 4000. <laughs> like, it's Osimo. It, it actually is. The Ke Kevin stands for a Knowledge Enhanced Visual Interconnectivity Nexus. Stole the joke from South Park. Yeah. And, uh, and look, he's got a little hat too, like a little robot hat. Kevin, Kevin Feige wears a cap like all the time, always. So look, he's Lame. got a little robot hat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, look, all right. They, I saw that uh, there was like concept art where he had like an actual cap on. I will commend them a little bit for trying to integrate the cap as like a robotic part. All yeah, right. Yeah. That, I that's that's a little I, I, a I find that mild. I find that mildly amusing. I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering. All right, who's laughing at this 
supposed joke. It's like, he's really a robot. Is it a fun? It's like, but well, I feel should... the writers think this is hilarious. They're like, oh. <laughs> we're making our boss into a robot. And they're laughing their heads off. And the reality is most people are just like, ah, oh, is this it? Okay. Well, I guess the thing that's amusing is like your stuff basically is made by algorithm at this yeah, point. Yeah, that's like, been the criticism for a few formula, years now. The formula is so apparent in everything that you've made. And it exists in this show too, as much as it believes that it doesn't. Um, which makes a lot of the subsequent conversation really feel hollow. Yeah. So, first thing that I think is highlightable just to talk about is uh, Kevin says, do you mind turning back into Jen? And she's like, why? <sighs> like, uh, you're expensive. Now, she that on its own, expensive. I think, <laughs> that on its own would be <laughs> probably okay, but then he says, uh, wait, don't do it until the camera turns away from you. Because our special effects team uh, is currently working on something else, which is and it plays the like sort of drum like motif from Black Panther. Yes, and then they, and then movie. the only thing in the room that they can turn to that's not her is still special effects, specifically it's still a CGI. Special effect. So yeah. nice, but also just man, you could have cut that. You could have changed it. You could have done anything after all the controversy that came out. And Taika Waititi yeah. already shitting on the CGI artist, so maybe don't. A little bit. Yeah, it feels a little hollow. Feels a little tone deaf. Oh, just deaf, it's a bit. Deaf. Yeah, tone deaf would deaf. be the way to describe it. Like, ah, uh, yeah, you're expensive. Hey, turn off. Like, that's too much. They're already onto the next project. Can't whip the slaves too hard, or they'll die. Pretty much. <laughs> and also, uh, just okay. like sort of pointing out something that is actually persistent in this show is so many attempts that they make to like reduce as much as possible like even as as much as they can like the amount of money that they have to spend on these effects or like it's just because you had to get it done like at a certain time and you didn't it didn't matter how long it actually would have needed to take to like fully I, I, execute all of this this is the criticism people have had since the trailers is like there's so many cheaper ways that would have looked better by using a body double and just f f deep fake the face or something like that it's uh, they wasted so much money to make it look so worse and then they're gonna try and oh make a joke it's like no you don't well, get away with it it's it's lame right your lampshading that the show that you made is beyond the scope that was even achievable while also recognizing that part of what that means for it to be beyond the scope of what was achievable is that there were people who had to work really hard in a short amount of time with not enough money to like create this as like, ah, well, yeah, but they're moving on to the next project. Ha <laughs> ha, lol. Yeah, they did here. it. What is that? They've done it like I would want to say sixty percent of the time, something maybe higher. At least that form of uh, she's it goes, and then like maybe you see a shade of green or something, and then the camera turns away and you hear, bleh, 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 and then it cuts back. Yeah, and it's like it's yeah, persistent, like um, persistent in the show. And all of us are old enough to know it's like ah, because because yeah, it's cheap. Yep. Yeah, that's um, more. Yeah, that's cheaper that way. And so it's just just pointing it out is not cool, because uh, it's your fault that your guys don't have enough time to make this shit. Mm hmm you didn't, yay. So yeah, and now how she's come, in this very her, real so place. Her suit, her suit changes color when she transforms? Does it? I think yeah, it does, right? It's, it's a lot more it's pink. It's not purple anymore. It's, yeah, or purple. It's it's black <laughs> and it's black and white now. There's no purple anymore. Oh, that's a cool thing that <laughs> oh Jacobson goodness. put in there. I'm sure it's not a continuity error. It's just a real cool nature of the thing. You stretch it. Oh it wow, he yeah. he has a lot of talent. That guy. It's really important that that is a thing that the suit does. Yes. Well, when the when the suit changes color, that's what lets you know whether it's Jin or She Hulk. You could tell by the yeah. colors on the outfit. Yeah, well, I'm glad they now, did. I wouldn't have been able to yeah. tell otherwise. Yeah. 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 Um, Hard to keep the two, you know, separated. The the Kevin robot then says, "I have the like perfect algorithm." And he says, "I have the algorithm for perfect entertainment or something." And I just remember being like, <laughs> "Fuck, I hate Marvel." Like what they've become because it's not even a lie. And, and, and like it, obviously perfect in this case meaning we we keep it making is, money it's like you do I don't you balls, yeah. I'm sure more is on the way but um he also says uh, some are better than others but I leave that to the internet like yeah uh, this one is just, you know it'll be tough to figure out if this is the best one you've made I'm not sure um and then Jen says like the MCU is known for high stakes and oh, sorry the way she introduces this is uh, this is a law show so it's time I make my closing argument and then he's like oh nice <laughs> uh, uh, like, oh, <laughs> oh my god will you shut the fuck up <laughs> you know it's you know it is doubly bad 
uh, so there's this, uh, there's this idea in writing called book ending. And if you remember the show started with a closing argument, uh-huh. um, that she was rehearsing. So ignored, the, yeah. the writers complete, like they, this was their clever thing to, to bookend the whole season is, well, we started with her rehearsing a closing argument. Now she's finally delivering one. Uh, and, and to the <laughs> ultimate authority and she's going to convince him. Like I took, I took uh, about nine different writers' workshops in college because I was a literature creative writing major, and um, and those are the easiest classes on the planet. And this is the what? most bargain basement tactics <laughs> of everybody who like didn't write, like me mostly, who didn't have like take the time to actually write uh, critically. So they're just like, oh shit, I have class in two hours. Let me hammer out a short story. Like all the stuff is wrapped up in this series. It's so fucking bad. Oh, I agree. He says the MCU is known for high stakes, but it's often said Marvel movies end the same way and all uh, have to have loads of plot and blood and plot lines and stuff at the end. And it's super close to the super soldier serum, by the way. And it's just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. And you're not going to stop though, are you? (laughs) You're not going to stop. So what's that worth? And also you wrote it again. And then she says, because he's remember algorithmically come up with it. This is the perfect ending. He says, I propose we don't have to do that. It distracts from the story of me realizing what it means to live as both She-Hulk and Jen. And he's like, hmm. Hang on, hang on. Distract from the story of her realizing that? Actually needing to use her powers as a superhero would be the thing that would make her realize she needs to live as She-Hulk and Jen. And taking that away defeats that very purpose. So she's contradicting herself in her own argument. I just, I don't She's know, just comments not- on how shitty the writers are that they can't actually have a plot line that involves Bruce at the end, the stupid guy with the blood, blah, 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 but also having this subtextual storyline running through that allows her to integrate both sides of her life together. Like, if that was what your yeah, goal like, was, what you could still do it. Yeah. The implication yeah, when- was being, like, that you can't write a plot-heavy story that leads to, like, a dramatic conclusion that's satisfying. The The other part of this is them just completely ignoring the fact that they are the ones who have been writing the show and the entire show. She's been running away from that and has never taken a single step towards developing that aspect of her character. She has the exactly. exact same yeah. energy in this scene and every other scene that she had in the very beginning when Bruce was like, you need to, you need to balance these two parts of yourself. Nope. They're the same part. It's all the same. Everything's the same. I'm just me, blah, 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 blah. And then it, it's, it's constantly why well, I, I'm not two parts. I'm just me. Well, but you are two parts and you never learn that you and the story doesn't even hint at going that way. It's yeah, like, if they had try, if they had pre done five seasons of this show and I watched this first season, I would be under no illusion that in season five, she would be no closer to that goal than she is now. I hate it. <laughs> Cause the show just isn't about that. It might it say it here, never was, yeah, but it, it's never been about that. Oh, to I be mean, fair, what is this show hilarious. about? It's like it's about <laughs> her living her insanely narcissistic life. That's about it. Yes, it needs to be about her. But I'm reading the subtitles again to get exactly what she says. She says the big Marvel fight and spectacle would distract uh, the show from what it's meant to be about, which is her learning to balance both she and Jen. Um, uh, right when I, I so let me, I, I've lost my point. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Okay. Distract from the story, which is that my life fell apart right when I was learning to be with Jen and, Sh- and she. Oh, okay, so her point is that th- the story is uh, her life is now like falling apart. But hang on, a really great way to d- to-, to show the the conflict of her life falling apart right when she's learning to be a she or Jen is perhaps a fight and conflict of villains and stuff. And so once again, the thing that she's saying is distracting from the story she wants it to be is the very thing that would complement that story. She's a moron. And alternatively, if that was the story that you wanted to write, you could have done away with some of those scenes that were building up to this particular like payoff to then focus in more on your actual objective. But that would have been harder than just having her say that that's what it should be, jumping out, yeah, like in the fourth wall breaking section. Like that's easier than actually writing it that way consistently throughout the season. It also ignores that literally every superhero story is that. 
And every superhero story has the sort of climactic scene at the end with all of the distracting side plots because the reality of, of the human condition that is explored by the superhero story is the fact that life doesn't stop for you to figure out the two, two facets of yourself and reconcile them. You have to do that while dealing with all the other bullshit that you deal with every single day. Yet she again is demanding special treatment from every other, from the tropes of the show and also from the tropes of the show that mirror real life that they're trying to explore through the genre. It's insane. Again, did any of these people learn anything about literature ever? I'm not like a great literature student. I'm just, I have a basic grasp of common fucking sense. And they got nothing. And it I have no idea where they where, where they get their education skill set or how that. It, it kind of boggles the mind. How do people this untalented get given mm -hmm. this amount of money to make TV shows? You do kind of fucking nuts. If you have to explain all this I to do. an alien. You, you would be like struggling because the alien would be like, why would you give this much like storytelling visibility to storytellers that are really shit at it? And you're like, I don't know, alien. The, I don't know. It costs less money to pay more. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I actually did a research, did um, a research. on uh, Jessica Gao. I was interested, um, not too much. I just searched her up and I think I came up with this, some sort of, um, she was on, um, some interview, some podcast, maybe. I don't know. Like, it was a few years back. I don't think she was on MCU yet. And she was basically talking about her, like, how she got into the industry and stuff. And it was, that's what I was searching for, basically. And if I remember it correctly, the way she, the way she would talk about writing itself, she said, I don't remember what she was studying exactly, but she said that she didn't know anything about writing or she was not. It was never her passion, basically. I think that's how she worded it. Oh, and she was like, I didn't know writing. I read comics. I liked comics. And I went to university, didn't like anything there. I thought everyone else was so phony. And uh, this sort of like job thing came up where I had to uh, send in a script or something for Nickelodeon. I don't remember the specifics of it, but I do think that she said that basically the day before or like right before she had to write it, she googled or searched up how to write a script. And that's how she applied for that job. And then, you know, that somehow turned, um, turned out in her getting the job, or at least getting the start in the industry. A lot it was of these. really fascinating for me writer origin stories are fascinating in terms of how they get to where they are um as we know michael waldron will now be in charge potentially of the newest star wars movie that's not the taika waititi one the first part of the two avengers films as well as probably the next doctor strange film whenever they make that too why well because he was successful with doctor strange why why was he given that well because he was successful with loki why was he given that oh, uh, rick and morty episode <laughs> you're like oh I see. I feel like there's a leap there that happened. <laughs> Did anyone else see it? I don't know. What happens? Yeah, what happens behind closed doors? And to be fair, it's like, how would Loki earn you another slot in something? It's like, because it made money, apparently. I'll never know the actual view counts, obviously. Or I don't think we'll ever know the actual view counts, but they seem to be celebratory of Loki's success, and they've already done a season two, so. Yep. That's going to be great, by the way. Looking forward to that. Definitely. So, um, like I said, that was as far as the convincing of Kevin goes. He just says, the story should be about me. And, and he's like, yeah. So she just yeah, says, yeah. Todd shouldn't have Hulk powers. Like, okay, but <laughs> the whole season has been leading through to something like that. No, we're just going to get rid of him? No, nope. okay. screw it all. Breaks the reality of the previous episodes completely, but now that plot line oh. goes nowhere. It's just he even says yeah, I the, guess. the powers aren't the villain he is, and it's like, wouldn't like, that remain whether you... or not he has powers? What What does that even mean? It's like, ah, so he got my powers, and means... that's like the bad part. It's like, I thought the bad part was his motivations to do it, yeah. and what he intends It means they don't know how to get power. rid of a Hulk. What are they going to do? How is he going to... Now, he's a Hulk now, so that's a thing that they wrote to happen. So how are they going to mm. get rid of him? Well, they can just write it out. That's easier. Yeah, yeah he, they unwrote it to happen. 
but they also unwrote everything that they would have to necessarily unwrite every aspect of the story that brought her to now. Mm -hmm. I was just and talking about this with someone when you, uh, like there's this deep desire to go back to like some prior point in your life where things seemed easier or simpler, or less complicated, whatever. But you forget that like all of those complications and troubles that you're either in or faced from then to now are made you what you are. You can't just undo all that shit. And so like to undo this is to undo the entire like plot that got her to the ability to come here in the first place. It's paradoxical and stupid. I hate it. And mm -hmm. it's indicative of where it bides out because her second change, Bruce swooping down from literally out of space to save the day in my story. My story. This so, is narcissistic <laughs> friggin' I mean, I want to use stronger words, but mm, <laughs> I know. she's such but, I hate her. It's oh. not at all it's just, it, this infuriates me. It's not about the fact that her family has arrived to help save her from what's happening here. It's that he's ruining her story by arriving. Yeah. It gotta be about her. And to be fair, he's already, he's already been kind of humiliated here in that he's misunderstood the situation entirely and he's trying to attack someone who's saving her. It's not like Hulk right now is saving the day. If anything, he's making it worse. Yep. What are you gonna say, Frankie? Uh, what? Oh, damn. It's gone. No, no, no. <laughs> and yeah, um, as she's describing this stuff, Kevin just agrees and blips them out. He's just, boop, gone. Like, oh. Okay. Um, so that's pretty annoying. And then the, she's asked what she thinks should happen with Emil. And I think she just says he needs to take account for his actions. Whatever. He needs to be accountable. Mm. The actions that you, that were written. What? Yes. Uh, well, so this is there's, a there's thing. There's that, but also just like but not you, though. If you can... Well, we'll get there, too. I think the best time to highlight that will be literally the last moment of the season. Yeah. It's so perfect. Um, when you say Emil needs to take like responsibility for his actions or accountability, it's like, you've just discovered, seemingly without giving a shit, that all of these people are at the whim of Kevin, including yourself, except for right now, where you can control it, too. Nobody is now accountable for anything they've done. They're all forced to do it by Kevin. Like, exactly. What and now you have the chance... To make them anything you want, and you've now decided Emil should be accountable. We'll dis we'll discover what that means soon enough. But um, <laughs> yeah, well, rewrite rewrite Todd to not be a misogynist. Re you know? Rewrite like, Emil to just be like, "Yep, I'm under house arrest. I'm not going to be breaking out of it." But to be honest with you, rewrite all the way back to when he was fucking bored and make him a nice guy. Just you could have just done that, but no. She his scope is minuscule. She's only going to do it as far as it benefits her right now. Mm -hmm. It's uh, frustrating. Like basically, the... the big problem that you're going to have is that the only way that you can basically defend her character going forward, like that she, like you would have to basically treat this as non-canonical, like all of this, the fourth wall breaks and everything, you would have to treat as like not like anything to do with her or her character or like her capacity to do this. Well, or that the thing is, like, that, that could only work if you erase the entire She-Hulk show from canon because the thing is you you can't erase this scene this scene literally affects what happened in the canon right. of this it's, season yeah exactly. and so it it's a step and if so, therefore if she hulk the show is canon her ability to rewrite reality is canon because it literally happens and so <laughs> It, it I don't know, man. Deadpool two, Deadpool two was smart to put it in the post credit scene, like after the whole yeah. story had run its course. The whole story plays out without him using the fourth wall to change the sakes of the story, and then he starts going back in time to start fucking with Mainly X Men Origins Wolverine. Too. Like it's, well, it's a meme, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't yeah. mean anything. And exactly, like in those contexts, you can actually understand without needing being told, this isn't really canon. It's just stuff that's happening in other universes for the gags. Where mm -hmm. the how it is, She Hulk is, I know this is canon. This is affecting also, what happens. Also, when we talk about humor, it is very funny to see Deadpool shoot Ryan Reynolds in the head before he accepts <laughs> Green Lantern. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> that's really funny. Very, very meta. The way, that, the way that it's framed as well. God damn, that's yeah. beautiful. And then the script and then blood just sprays all over it. <laughs> I, um, I had You're to step out Canada. for a moment. Uh, so maybe we covered this, but 
there is an element here of if we have her doing all these things and being aware of all these things, imagine you were in Jennifer's position and you go back to your story. What even are all of these people around you? Are they yeah. real? What are you? Are what are yeah exactly what I say? There's an existential crisis here that Jen needs to like struggle with because they're trying to break the fourth wall, but they're still doing it in a way that is contextualized within a show that we all of us are watching, and it doesn't seem to recognize that. If you're her and you realize that all of this stuff is you're essentially changing the reality of all of these characters and their positions and everything like that. Once you go back there and that's the world, they don't have any, they don't know any of that stuff happened. They don't know that you've essentially take, taken away what, I um, mean, if they, they didn't even have agency in the, I mean, none of them have agency because we've contextualized them as characters in a story, not as characters in a world that's supposed to be, you know, a, a real one. This is they're interesting they're because. Fucking touch that. Jen effectively realizes in this moment that she's God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so, and, and all of her all narcissistic that, this fantasies is, become true. Yes. Dude, this is the all primary the, criticism. All the changes. Well, oh, is this? A, oh, I wonder if you're going to say the same thing. This is the Kang. Time. This is Kang version well, two. This actually, is Kang, the completion. Sorry, I was going to say primary in the context of criticizing her character. When she is given this level of power, all she does is change everything to yes. benefit her. It's all but about only... her. She... This is this is Bruce Almighty. If anyone hasn't seen the movie, this is the like first half or first two thirds where yeah, he does everything to benefit arc. himself. Except the lesson of the story is that when you have that kind of power, it's difficult to be fair and balanced and just and to look after people, and that you definitely shouldn't be using it just to benefit your fucking self. But that's all she does, and she's rewarded for it. The the funny yeah. thing is also like how pathetic her character is. Is that. Yeah, it's all to benefit herself, but it's literally all to benefit herself within the next hour. Like, yeah. she could make so many changes that would be wildly beneficial for her entire life, for all of humanity, sure. But even if we're just going with the selfish thing, a mild, just a modicum of foresight uh, and self-reflection would go... Oh, okay. I could make it so I have my job back. I could make it so that there aren't these complications here. I can make it so all sorts of these things work out for a positive for me. But she's like, no, I just, I'm really just stressed out about this situation right now. And I need to get out of it. And I, yeah. I have the power of God for one second. And I'm going to stop now and worry about nothing else. It's like, oh my, well, come on. And you just Kevin, opened up as well. Did you the... get rid of cancer? Yeah, I know, right? And she's got nothing to ask of the robot god of why he's made any of these choices. But simultaneously, she's too stupid to realize that he could just be placating her until they get her back in the system, and then he can change it all back. She doesn't even know. Yeah, which, we, which he can do, I suppose. I can't see what it's still a race. Okay. <laughs> like, everything can be rewound <laughs> back to what Kevin wanted, and he's just trying yeah. to get her to shut the fuck up because they're trying to fix a glitch or whatever. But she doesn't even think about that for a second. She's like, well, no, all the changes I've made are permanent, just like the changes you made earlier, which oh, are totally not permanent. Well, you're taking you can undo with a snap of your fingers. Okay. I'm doing you're what? Just taking well, it too seriously. Oh, I'm taking it too seriously. I I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, no, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for caring. I'm sorry I took your show seriously. Would you prefer it if I didn't? Like, if I just treated yeah, it like tell it me what matters, bullshit. so that when I finally get some kind of emotional payoff, I can know whether or not yeah, I'm supposed to care. When, did it matter when like Jen's life was falling apart because she helped save people? So, like, she lost a job. Presumably, everybody was supposed to care then. Or like in episode eight when she got um all of that stuff happened at, at when she was at her award thing like selectively asking people to care about like, your story just seems a bit weird you know so presumably it's all meant to be taken somewhat mm. seriously so yeah and and i guess when i say primary criticism uh as i think shad's alluded to it a little bit earlier and, and again but loki destroyed it in universe this has destroyed it now out of universe too. Like there's an implication of where this exists and it's like you found another way to annihilate everything. A good job. I didn't see that coming. And uh, she's an awful person as well as your protagonist. So, you know, people were like, oh, She-Hulk really going to be the, one of the worst of the phase four things? It's like, yes. It seems to Not be Not even that difficult. This is like, yes, again. I can't believe they did it. They found another format in which to destroy everything. Is that none of this fucking matters? Everything is built by some robot on an algorithm, which is almost as bad as Kang. But at least he was a person. <laughs> I don't know if that counts for anything. At least he was but... in. 
at least he was in the universe he was ruining. Yeah. There's something, that, I guess, about that compared to this. Whatever the hell this is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Was that close to what you were thinking about Shadow or is it something else? Uh, there was that. There, um, there was another thing that I was going to talk about. Yeah, that it's all serving herself and it's all selfish and things. But I also realized that the context of what she's trying to achieve here, it's another selfish thing and it doesn't fully answer it, is that her... Her goal here is to make a better ending for her show, not to make her life better or to like her goal is to make the show better and more popular, which doesn't achieve that. This ruins the show so much. Mm. And also it doesn't undermine the fact that she actually does have the power to affect anything that she wants by just convincing Kevin to do anything. And so the fact that her goal is, I want my show to be best to sever and not help. It, 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 it makes her look bad as a character. It ruins things on so many levels and layers. You can just keep unpacking layers about how awful this is. Um, speaking of which, because uh, I'll try and get us to the end of the scene in a summary, but it's hard not to stop every time you read a sentence. When she says, oh, and I wouldn't mind seeing Daredevil again. A woman has needs. I have problems oh, with this. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Fucking creepy. Just, just reverse, reverse the gender, okay? <laughs> I mean, you could even, you wouldn't even necessarily you could just go as far as saying, "Man, Daredevil's not a sex toy, okay? He's like a person." Yeah, like you, you escape the confines of your show to wield him around like a prop. Say it's a sex benefit. toy. It's exactly what what like the idea is here. She wants to fuck him again, and she can do that because she's God now, and she can move a person wherever she wants. A little bit Creep. weird, and and I think yeah, just to, to like add it back on if this was wouldn't mind seeing black widow again a man has needs holy shit That's like how creepy is that it's like yeah. she is full on rape like you know take away person's freedom just to pleasure myself I'm like holy crap i thought <laughs> wonder <laughs> woman was bad this is <laughs> insane but hear me out on the black widow thing <laughs> <Just stop. laughs> Here we go. Black Widow Defense Squad, all along. So, uh, yeah, I think he then says, "Oh well, no." Now she starts just ranting about random meta shit, like, um, "While you're here, why is it that you have so many daddy issue characters like Tony, Loki, Thor, Star Lord?" And it's like you've out named... of all the questions she could have asked, that's what she chose. Yeah, am I real? <laughs> <laughs> Am I real? Would have been a start of one, yeah. But she just says they got daddy. I, I just, I was just surprised that like, is there any others? It's just four out of all but the also, characters. You got four. It, I don't think that's very true either. Like, um, Tony was more inspired by his dad, and and he had a more complex relationship. But I wouldn't really go full on daddy issues with Tony Stark. If, uh, if we're broad enough to characterize sorry, that as daddy issues, then I think there's a reasonable amount of characters with what she's calling daddy issues, considering how many there are. Like. Yeah, okay. Because she says Thor, Loki, same dad, same issues. Like, well, that's not true. Like, there's a lot of complicated I remember things Thor's... going on with that. Yeah, especially with how, you know, Thor sort of closed things with his dad before his dad became a star or how he, or died or whatever they're saying that was. It's uh, as someone who's supposed to be taking over a kingdom that his dad led, there's of course going to be things going on. I, I don't know. It's just weird. It, it's as if to point out, like, they've got a shitty formula for that, when it's like, well, got so many characters that don't have anything like, to, their drama isn't to do with their parents necessarily. Like, I, I don't know. This is just a weird also, comment. No, ha having a conflicted relationship with your parents, it, it can be a very satisfying plotline. She's just trying to say, she's crapping on far better shows and characters than her own, saying, oh, those shows are awful. Why are you doing this? Like, no, if you were even half as good as those shows, you would be tremendously better than what you got. You got nothing to try. Like, again, Stone's Glass Houses and all that crap. She just yeah, makes it, it look like oh, so awful. The, uh, they were relatively estranged and they didn't necessarily want to be. That was like Tony and his dad. Uh, Star-Lord mm -hmm. and his dad is, you left me and you killed my mum. Like... He's like, yeah, well, I, I, you know, I wanted power, and now you can join me in that. It's very, it's like that's a very different uh, thing going on there. Yeah. And it's like, what about Loki and Thor? It's like, well, it's about the transition of power from the previous king, and then whether or not they they deserve it. And one of them goes fucking crazy villain mode. Like th these are all very different things. Whatever, it's fine. And, and 
there's satisfying elements to those storylines. It's like trying to dismiss the whole plot between Luke and Darth Vader as daddy issues when it's one of the more fundamental, important, and uplifting parts of the story. It's like, why are we doing all these daddy issues? Because maybe it freaking works and it could be good storytelling, you stupid gal. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, uh, she's pointing out that it happens too much, Chad, even though what was the last daddy issue character thing that even happened? Would the, I guess Ragnarok would be, like, the closest thing? Because... Yeah. Yeah, or Guardians 2. It's one of those two, I guess, whichever one counts. Because in Moon Knight, it was issues with his mum. Yep. Um, right. And I don't know that, like, Thor Love and Thunder was devoid of that. Multiverse didn't have any of that. Um, who were other America new characters? Doesn't well, come none, up I guess none of the Eternals John really have Chi. dad Winter issues. Soldier doesn't... Oh, I guess, yeah, oh, yeah Shang-Chi Shang does. Has that's she weird that they has didn't... major dad issues. That's, that's weird they didn't mention that, actually. Oh, maybe they're, they're not going to criticize Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi's oh, a perfect it's... movie, you remember? <laughs> well, maybe it's just like they straight up didn't even know like what was going they on. They don't there. remember Nobody what's in. Them. Oh, you're right. This may have been written before Shang-Chi even got released. Yeah. So you <laughs> not even know that. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, well. Why is um, she sitting down on the floor? Because she's a child. She's a bit of a child, yeah. Um, Literally, it's a child position. Uh, she's, she's the kid in kindergarten sitting on the rug. Uh, the teacher, Kevin is again, again, like they take this character who is supposed to be empowered and, and, and seriously taking, okay, let's, let's give them the benefit of the metaphor. She has okay. come to take control out of her out of control life with everything she's got with her superpowers, with her training, with her lawyer skills, with every bit of personality. And she's putting it right here on the line, talking to God himself to change the universe in her better way. And then she sits down and disempowers herself completely because these people are children and they have no idea how to be just adults. They have no idea how to deal with life because they've been coddled into a writer's room from a roach riddled apartment. And they're going to go back and eat leftover ramen from their roommate. God, I hate, oh, I hate these people. I hate this show so much. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like you're enjoying it. these really <laughs> annoying, petulant characters. Yeah, this is how I would be. I well, tell and it was Kevin it was by do. accident. Like this wasn't intentional. Yeah, this is a rewrite. This is uh, the show was so bad. Oh, I, like... I guess I just mean like the character in general, right? Like it wasn't mm. intentional to create a character who was like incredibly narcissistic. Like. It's it it it's obviously the no, goal no. that like Tony has narcissism, like that there's a problem there that needs to be resolved here. Whereas here it feels unrecognized. Well, well, they honestly think Jen's character is wonderful. It was intentional in the in the fact in the way that they didn't see a problem with her behavior because they're projecting their own behavior on her. So they intentionally wrote her like them without realizing how awful these character traits are because they probably don't see themselves as pretty awful people. Well, someone, Super Chat just highlighted. What about Gam Gamora and Nebula? They didn't mention them. And they've got serious daddy That's issues. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might just be because they legitimately forgot that those characters exist. Both Gamoras. Oh, no, they're women, yeah. you see. Women can't have daddy issues, only the men. No, I, I think it's That's just more likely that they... Type. I think it's more likely mm -hmm. they forgot those characters exist, that, like, when it Lame comes to their the... list of people that they know... They went Tony... Right, like, in the MCU. Tony, Thor, uh, Loki... Loki. And Star-Lord. It feels like... Much more... Earlier on oh, in the if... phases. Mm. It know. is, yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um, also, she asks about X-Men, and he's like, I can't tell you about that. And it's like, ugh... <laughs> ah, see, it's clever. She acknowledges that there's rights and legal and everything and, and acquisitions and stuff. It is self-referential, therefore it is clever. Um, if I refer to myself, yeah. Um, so as she's leaving, she's <laughs> like, Bruce smashes buildings, I smash well, the well, fourth wall, and bad endings. Before we get there... Before we get there, they tried to salvage the implications of this by uh, the Kevin saying, you will not be able to access the Kevin again. That floor in our programming has done. And so they try to say, oh, yeah, this is a one-off thing. Bull crap. It doesn't mean it just we'll means do it that you don't take anything yeah. seriously. Yeah. And oh, yeah. you can just screw anything would, dude, in, the, in the universe. I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls her out of the show himself and asks her for help writing something else. Yeah. <laughs> be like, you did such an amazing you. job with She-Hulk that I need your help writing the new Avengers. God, it would be really gay if they um, had this... 
<laughs> if they had a scene where they had to pull her out to deal with someone else who had figured out how to escape the the MCU into the real world and they did this stupid meta like thing that you know Arnold did with um last action hero but like stupider mm -hmm. and not not self-referential and, and self-deprecating. God, that would be terrible. If they make a season two of this, um, I won't even make a joke about what should happen. Never mind. Well, she says <laughs> the famous line that uh, sounds like the, that everybody's on board with. She, Bruce smashes buildings, I smash the fourth wall and bad endings, and sometimes Matt Murdock. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know why anyone goes near your sourdough gooch. <laughs> Fucking bitch. Well, uh, Shut up. Uh, she can force them to with like so. <laughs> with reality uh, bending. Oh, rape. <laughs> I don't uh, even know if it's rape. I don't is know what Matt it is. You, even a person? Yeah, she's she would have crafted an AI that wants to sex her, I guess. It's just embarrassing. Yeah, she's in like a little pocket dimension where everything's being controlled by something else. And she doesn't by care about any of it God. as long as it benefits her. She's like, sure, fine. Yeah, it's it's like, like, aren't you... She's Cypher. She wants to go back into the Matrix as long as it's good for her. <laughs> it's fine. I don't care about the fact that a robot controls everything. Whatever. I bet she makes fun of dudes who buy sex dolls, though. Oh, I'm sure. God, Even so though they were, how weird would that she be? She knows though, they were it? written to do that. Like, how weird is it to know like that robot has been crafting your sex life? By the way, just, just he's, he's <laughs> behind it all. It's like okay. So yeah, how does that play out in reality? Um, and she says, "What's the most budget-friendly way when for us to do this?" When you say reality, oh yeah, fuck it, whatever, whatever word you want to use. Um, so they make another joke about the CG, and it just hard cuts to them back in in the world. Uh. That, like, yeah. uh, that's nice and neat because we don't have to show how that happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess <coughs> uh, she she's <coughs> wow, throwing her throat. Hulk's gone, and uh, Bro Hulk is no longer Bro Hulk. Titania's still here. So what happened? happened? Everything's done. They, they, yeah, what happened? It's over. What happened? Uh, what do you mean? What's Reality we got rewritten. What's that? Yeah. So he, yeah, like the. Because this is the the first question. It's like, so what what's happened? Like, what happened in the story that we are here now? What was the sequence that led to this? Yeah, if yeah, I ask one of those people, arrested? what happened while yeah, I was gone? That's, that's the big what question. They what exactly is he being arrested for? Well, so, like, right there's now? two ways to answer this question. I need to know what ways you're looking for. On one hand, she simply wrote it so that he's arrested. Isn't that enough? Because she's in control of everything. <laughs> Well, yeah, right, because it raises the question, is there such a thing as a plot hole anymore when you can just write anything ever and there's always the rationalization? She, she's got it so they're all arrested. Like, okay, but if you need a justification, it could be that they hacked her stuff and that she's written it so they're being punished for that, I guess. Maybe. Would they get arrested or just well, in charge? What happened, though? Was it like, I'm court. calling the... I'm well, so the, calling the police the, on you. Stay it, there, Todd. The better while question the is like, come here. you wouldn't what be able Todd to arrest them do? until you have like the evidence, right? Because just calling the police on they hacked my stuff. It's like who them? I did, they did. It's like yes. You know, like, all of you them. Know? All of them were participants in that and did. Yeah, it? just it, it seems unlikely the police would just arrest them for that. So again, my assumption is she she simply wrote it so that they're arrested. And the, how come there's the a strong breeze, but it's only affecting the black guy? <laughs> <laughs> the air hates hates Negroes. <laughs> the white guy's got a hat on; it protects him from the wind. The clever, uh, clever white people. Yeah. So the the interesting <laughs> thing, I guess, you get there through a, a a criminal conspiracy to hack her phone. If that's what happened, but she'd have to prove I'm it, not, right? She'd have to prove that somehow what happened to her phone was a criminal well i guess the state would have to prove that what they did was actually a crime and i'm trying to figure out exactly what the criminal act is here no yeah i know it's, it's got to be complicated and probably take ages to gather all the evidence you need to be able to make the case as opposed to just they're arresting now and so best faith in interpretation for me is just she just writes it so they're going to jail fuck them she hates yeah, because, them she can't uh, be asked to deal with this they're going to jail fuck them I'm, I'm just trying to think, like, because I'm, I'm not saying anyone should do it. 
I'm curious what specific oh, law there is there. from one private person to quote unquote hack or obtain entry into another private person's phone. Now, if it, if there's a government official on either side of this equation, obviously that's a problem. But just like I'm going to gain entry into your phone, is it a, is it a specific criminal act? I, I'm just not sure. I guess maybe there is one. You don't need oh, one. Don't she can make it in her universe that doing that to mm. Jennifer Walters specifically is a crime. Yeah. And, you know, you're right. But it's just because she wants it. Because still, ridiculous things that break reality are happening. Daredevil literally falling from the sky from nowhere well, she just appears. And so we're still in ludicrous world, even though we're supposed to be back in the universe. Just stupid, random reality Excuse breaking crap. you. A woman has needs, Shad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her sex That's toys right, so arrived, take advantage people. of this blind man. <laughs> yeah, and, she, and she's even like, you missed it. It's like, you control when he gets here. What do you mean, missed it? I don't understand. Is she, you know? It's like, what? How do, I, how do I coherently judge anything that's happening anymore? What even is this? And um, yeah, Daredevil's just like, oh man, I'm sorry that I missed it. Oh well. But I, I just want to get to the part that annoys me way more. She... Uh, walks over to Emil and she says, if you sign this, you go back to prison for 10 years for parole violation. Like, well, yeah, that's what I deserve for what I've done. Okay. She's written it so that he goes back to jail now. For 10 years. When, as was said, he was using Abomination for speaking arrangements so that he could earn some money. Uh, and as much and as that is true, that she violated... positive messages. Oh, well, I think someone would argue the otherwise giving a speech to intelligentsia the all crazy sweaty nerds hate women or whatever but i don't even know like we don't know the nature of that connection but point being, it doesn't matter none of it yeah, matters knows. she can change it all at a whim and she decided not to she's decided to condemn him to prison is, is, is that yeah, what the sentence would be for a parole violation like that well, um, I don't know. I guess it would have been serious because he is abomination. But the fact is, like, the nature of it is he was doing a speaking thing. He didn't hurt anyone. That's got to that's got to factor into how you violate it, right? I assume yeah, so. I so yeah, ten years. The question is, why? Why was he I going as abomination to speak anyway? Like, what? What is the character's motivation? Money. for turning into abomination to do the speaking event. But I I know, but like. He's speaking as a meal as abomination. So, like, the only um, effect is this visual enhancement. That that's honestly that's all that. he gets out of this. But I could also see the people organizing the events to be like, if you don't speak as abomination, we're gonna pay you less. I could see them being like, if you do it as abomination, we'll pay you more. Yeah, I could see it too. But it didn't seem like he was in need of any money. No, I don't know. I, this is something they totally tacked on. Um, I imagine they were originally gonna write it so that he was evil. And they were like, I don't fucking know anymore. I have a theory. It doesn't seem um, to be evil. This at happens all. so abruptly that um, I can believe the original story. Uh, this is probably how it started out. It was like, can we use Abomination in She Hulk? And then they were like, yes, but you need to get him back to where he was once you're done with him. And they're like, what, in prison? It's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Just as long as you get him back in there. However, you want to use him between the time, that's fine. And then they may have thought, like, well, have him being nice. You'll get on the parole, and then you'll turn out to be evil. He'll fight She Hulk, Hulk, whatever, and then you'll go back in prison. That sounds good enough. Cool. And then they were like, we're busy with the blood plot, though. I don't know how to get a meal into that. And it's like, oh, we're going to break the fourth wall and talk to Kevin as well. It's like, so how does a meal fit into all this? It's like, uh, speaking arrangement as abomination, and that violates the parole back to prison. There you go. Like, I could totally see it being that kind of nonsense that they didn't know what they were doing with all these disparate pieces, which is funny because you could have had the season focus on his trial or his uh, parole hearing, whatever. It could have, it could have been all about yeah. him and what... Yeah. He, like he's like the dark shadow version of of She Hulk, a, a, a life not taken, sort of the path not taken, and you can even have Hulk cameos then for what he what he means to him and what what all that past that's that's between them, and then throw in the dating stuff and make it nice and coherent in terms of the Josh guy. As other suggestions we've had, you could have had a season of TV. Is my point? Crazy as that. You could sound. have. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's something you could do here, absolutely. Um, but yeah, this just pisses me off. Okay. You have full control of this guy, and you're like, I'm gonna put you in prison because you need to be accountable for your actions, which is just comes across as spiteful. Yep, and super authoritarian because he doesn't really seem like a bad guy at all. No, and she could have written it in any other way that she wants. She could have written it so that he's just a fucking great guy. Next to and her, he looked like an angel. 
So. Yeah. And the 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 really interesting thing is, I I guess his his in universe crime. Uh, our transgression is that he was speaking to this group. No, it's the breach of parole. Uh, the parole things. That's what she says. It's got nothing I mean, to do with this necessarily. Yeah, I mean that that would be the criminal act. But uh, but I'm trying to figure out if there is some sort of transgression because like he seemed to like not really know who they were. Uh, like the group, he's just there to talk and give a motivational speech, and then he's everything else he's doing is good. He even if, rescues her the moment he finds out that I know that he none of it counts. Accidentally put him in danger. If and you every it's from, like, well, you violated this rule. Yeah, that's this is why it's so bad. She's only getting after him for a book violation, if you will. It's got nothing to do with him as a character, him as a person. I mean, the character of him, you know. Like it's uh, yeah. she recognizes. If you remember, her main issue was I vouched that you wouldn't go into abomination mode, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, your feelings are hurt." So it has nothing to do with who he's speaking to or for. She's specifically on him for transforming into Abomination. God. He's that angry at him. Does and it's, it's just like, it, dude, there's a person there. And there's another whole fucking point of this season? Yeah, like, he, I, I guess he lives a life, and I guess he doesn't really make decisions or anything, but I don't... It, again, it, it kind of mars everything. It's that, it's that film, that, that oily film that's on top of stuff. It, it just, you can't not see it. Just nice that there's a character who's willing to accept the responsibility that he had a role to play, and that by not doing so, he's going to have comp uh, consequences from it. Our main character isn't really into that. Ends that annoying. No. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's a big old family meal to celebrate. We're doing great now. Everything's so wonderful. And hooray! Um, the whole Shoot. family are like, wow, dear devil, you're great, you're awesome. Do you, are you stable? Do you have money? Can you take care of our insane daughter for us, please? Like, nah. He's like, no, I'm get just gonna come in once here. a week and fuck her and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> he just flat out says it. <laughs> she, she brought her sex toy to her family dinner. Yep. Oh, God. And then, it happens. Uh, Hulk is here. He's like, hey guys. Oh, nice. He's here. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Everybody great? That's cool. And then, uh, you see, the, the plot line of, because you might have thought, like, we're near the end of the episode. So you're like, what the fuck? We we are there's the so end. much stuff we haven't done. Do you remember the pilot where a Sakarian ship made them crash in the first place? What was that about? It's like, well, Hulk went back to Sakar, presumably. I guess uh, this because the I don't know familiar enough with the comics to know, but is it World War Hulk people were expecting to come from this storyline? Yeah, pretty much. But we didn't see anything. We just saw that that portion of a phone call, and uh, he apparently went there and he's come back. And Kevin actually says like, "We need Hulk in that finale. You can't blip him out because he's got to introduce a new character." Like, okay, that character. And again, I'm not a. Um, I'm just I'm not as familiar with the comics, so some of the stuff is new. But for those who are Hulk fans, he has a son in the comics, correct? If anyone yeah. can verify, I don't know. <laughs> I, would, I, <laughs> I got no clue. I don't read uh, comics. No, there, there, he, there is a comic book version that his son and this is they're ver introducing him. He looks, he does not look this bad in the comic books, and <laughs> I think it's part of the World yeah, War Hulk storyline. Scar, this is Scar. This is Scar. And this oh. is this is not what he people aren't happy about this. No. Um, that looks like nobody likes time, this. The first time I saw this, I I could not understand what was going on with his head. <laughs> what? But why did he like, his what, ears what is that block? Like the first half and then tied up at the back. Is that like the must be a there must be a name for that kind of hairstyle. I don't know. I didn't yeah, it's get called it. the Viola well, Davis. I think <laughs> nevertheless, people sabotaged. This is not the show well, for a this reason. was their final act of revenge. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really funny, actually. Like they submitted it on the day that it had to go out, and it's like, oh crap! <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, yes, this is going out. Yeah, this is uh, not what he looks like, apparently. And no. I think people are a lot more invested in the Hulk Scar like storyline than She Hulk. Like that's where people's investment lay. At the moment, and uh, you're probably never going to get anything particularly worthwhile on that front. Sorry, guys. But yeah, like all we have to do is Google Hulk Sun Scar to get some of these images, and uh, and yeah, he looks so much cooler 
in in the comics. Like, uh, yeah, the guy oh, yeah. has been left to toil in the shadows for a very long time, and that will probably continue. So sorry, Big Hulk fans. Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. You're not gonna get what you wanted. Not anytime soon, no. Um, because yeah, I saw him holding like an axe and a sword in kind of like desert landscape, and I was like, oh, he's probably like a full-on champion warrior type. And uh, they, they've 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 gone for this instead. You know, that's that's what they wanted to do. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> What do you do with this? You're just like, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, all right. And I think the implication is that when he was in Hulk form on that planet in Ragnarok, he was uh, he was smashing more things than just uh, people. Buildings. Well, yeah, buildings. Yes. That's what we've come to. Like robots. Hey, and... Jen, you got to be really careful, you know, passing our blood around because if our blood just gets anywhere and any, we just create more Hulks willy-nilly, uh, you know, that's really a big problem. Oh, but I, I also raw dog it. Uh, but that apparently. was Hulk, not Bruce. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hulk, not Bruce. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. There's the other guy. But you'd Hulk think... does not use condoms. You'd think maybe there's a story there. Hulk finding his son. But yeah, whatever. No, but that's something that can happen off screen. We were this riveting drama. Yeah. That what 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 are priorities like? Huh? Wow. <laughs> now, you might be Jeez. thinking, all right, this is a great story that's wrapped up all of those threads. That is beautiful. <laughs> but the one question I have is, wasn't wasn't she, like, she, they put an inhibitor on her and she had charges against her from the state about all the things she's yeah, done? Yeah, they're like, going so to have to... What happened with that? Hmm. Yeah, that was a big well, deal. Absolutely. We got this friendly reporter here who's delivering a little, little segment, and he says, She-Hulk has been cleared of her previous convictions. Oh. It's just like Titania. It's just that happens oh. just off screen. It's done. That's it. Yep. That's she, that's and so the only thing that makes sense oh. is she wrote it so that she has to, she gets to escape any convictions. Yeah. Done. Um, this is the most blatant example of someone fucking up and then avoiding the repercussions. This is worse than Wanda because she wrote it so the universe no longer cares. So she can just mm -hmm. do whatever the fuck she wants. At least Wanda actually had to run. <laughs> she had to go somewhere else. That's but, right. Uh, no, She-Hulk was like, no, fuck you. I should be able to do whatever I want. Now, yeah, whatever I want. With that in mind, he asks her, like, what are you going to be doing? You know, She-Hulk superhero stuff or Jen lawyer stuff? And she says, well, you know, both. Because you need to be... If, if you harm someone or harass someone, I'm coming for you. Because you need to be held accountable. And uh, they'll be coming for them as both. So it's just like, so... Is this on purpose, or are they this stupid? Um, I think they, at this point, I think they're just in fuck it territory. They didn't even care. I, cannot, I can't believe like, Sam, Sam Hyde said the same thing and got in trouble for it. Well, the, either they're stupid or... No, <laughs> I'm coming for oh, you right. in real life. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> no, no, in real life. Oh. Oh, no, no, in real life. life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wear this she, shit like a suit. She just basically <laughs> said that. It's like, wait, you're gonna go after them in court or is she Hulk? It's like, yes. Oh, the one of them will put them in jail and the other one will cripple or murder them. Perfect. This is fine. <laughs> just in real life. Also, harassment. She said, if you do that, but if you just even harass people, I will come after you as a superhero. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my so, God. It's funny because there's that, but I just I just cannot get over that they have the main character explain that she has written herself out of any responsibility for any of her actions to then say that my primary goal is to make sure people uh, are accountable for the reactions they take. I just, I cannot, like, the, it's the most destructive I, thing you could have her say the entire I, show. I, it's not it's not on purpose. This was a mistake. They don't realize. That's it. They don't realize what they've written. <laughs> that, that that's it. There's there's no way that that was on purpose. Got to be. Yeah. That there's well, yeah. I, mean, I know but, but and just, I just want people to know that's that's the benefit of like, you know, it, hopefully you're ignorant of that because if you wrote that on purpose, I don't even know what to say at that point. Like well, isn't it great that our character doesn't have to follow the same principles that she's invested in? It's like oh. Okay, that's an interesting direction to take a superhero story. 
Um, Rules for thee and not for me. That's yes, and the then, theme of Chi Hulk Italian just, Law. As if this hasn't been made clear, everything's fucked. Again. How uh, the hell is yes. anything supposed to make Again. any yeah. sense? How are we supposed to care about anything? It's, you could just, it is, whatever. The, it, it, the phase four of the MCU has like been remarkable in the consistency with which everything has been destroyed. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of incredible. No, it's not even kind of, it is. It's, it's like every time that you think that they can't screw it up, there's like they find a new and creative way to dismantle everything. I can't believe it. Like, I think from, it's from like the TV, now. from the TVA controlling absolutely everything in existence in terms of a timeline that there was no free will on every single choice was determinant on Kang until that ended. And then when you go into like multiverse of madness with all of the incredible like implications that stem from the way that the multiverse works or like um, how like characters are connected in the multiverse, how to travel the multiverse, like all of the stakes and consequences of that. So in Thor Love and Thunder, it was what? Like in the center of the universe, there's like this entity that people are aware of that they've just ignored that can that you can use to make any wish that you want. Um, Moon Knight, like reversing the stars, like reversing all of space and time in order to use like a, a star chart to find like a temple. It's, it's, it's remarkable. <laughs> it's remarkable. And now there's this, right? Breaking out of the confines of, of like the universe that you're even in to rewrite it to your whims. What? What, what more? Oh, and Alan, of course, like, Eternals, like, completely changed all of the rules for, like, how space formation works of, like, stars and planets. And th th there's a giant celestial poking out of Earth, like, in the middle of the ocean. Every time there's, like, a new way that they find it. Oh, oh man. <laughs> the destruction yeah. is complete, isn't it? Yeah. It, what will they I've, do next? We've gone out of the, the universe now. We, it's yeah, like everything's you, either in or out of the universe. You know, we, we finally have done it. I don't know where else they could go. Everywhere is covered now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, what, what more can you do? We've done time, we've done space, and this is beyond that as well. Yeah. It, um, who'd have who'd yeah. thought it that She-Hulk attorney at law would be, the, like, She-Hulk as an entity is the most powerful, like, agent in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. More powerful than, is going to be more powerful than Kang could be. Or, uh, or Galactus, or any of those guys. She can escape the universe and rewrite the story so that she wins. That's going to be my question. Any conflict that goes in the future that has any mild connection to She-Hulk, but I guess it's in the universe, She-Hulk exists. My answer will be, well, uh, why doesn't She-Hulk just jump out of the universe and erase the bad thing now? She could tell yeah, that. And the real difficult part as well is that the moral implications will always hang over each of those times. Like, why didn't you escape the confines of the universe and rewrite things to be better for these people, like, yeah. in every and, possible turn? Except at every answer they give is either going to screw themselves over, be arbitrary, because the answer will be, oh, she could only do it once. That's just you saying it. Like, she ha she could do whatever I, she wants as the character. I, the the I context say. that she can break reality and literally affect real things in the universe. And it's like, well, no, we wouldn't do that for she, this story because that would be silly. Well, guess what? It was retarded when you did it the first time. <laughs> well, it's funny, Shad, that you assume that it will even be, it will just be ignored. That's yeah, like, I, know, but... I mean, we, we saw what happened, right? With the, like, every time that the accords would have been awkward, they were ignored until they didn't exist anymore. Um, and it will probably be the same for this, right? It will well, be ignored. It won't be recognized is like the most important part. It won't be recognized that there is a problem here, that there's this there was a, looming question. Yeah, there was a throwaway, a throwaway line in She-Hulk. I think it was Matt Murdock that said it in the thing. Yeah, he said like yeah. the, the Sokovia Accords are now um, discontinued. Have been repealed. Like, yeah, they've been repealed. That's the only reference we've had to them, really. And it's like, oh, they just yeah. disappeared. I remember, okay. Chad, before before it came out, the writer said that the show was going to address them. That address. was the addressing of it. Well, that was a meme. Addressing was they don't exist. It's it's um they do a little man, it's and... not fair. It's it's actually not fair. Like if you get given this much money and like all of this resources and seemingly like the ability to pull characters, some of whom well, in fact, like many of whom have existed in better stories that weren't created by you. And you get all the opportunities to, like, leverage these things. And this is what it was for. That's not fair. Oh, yeah. gosh. No justice in this world. Like oh, yeah, right. Way. And then you got to show Wong uh, breaking, fucking breaking him out of prison again, Emil. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say, it was funny listening to you say 
they broke space and time that they went beyond that. I just feel like anybody who is unfamiliar with this stuff would be like, what do you mean they went beyond breaking it for space and time? <laughs> You're like, they found a way, dude. What else do you want me to say? They like, did, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so that's She-Hulk. It took fucking ages, just like the Rings of Power, to break this one down. Uh, all the basics getting it wrong for just, like, why would you even make this show? What is the point of it? And they have it overtly explaining what this show is, and they couldn't nail it in either department, being law and comedy. I guess... Yeah, it's neither funny nor a compelling legal show. And, like, good god, they're awful at writing human beings. Uh, just in general. Mm -hmm. Every, every person's a cartoon... Every interaction, yeah. Um, and the best part is is that Jen is clearly a self-insert of the entire writing staff. Like, that is... Because oh, yeah. the whole thing... The, the whole thing is a personal power fantasy. And that manifests in this last episode, but it's present throughout. They're completely disappointed with all of their lives. They overblow their accomplishments. And the funny thing is, they can't actually write what an actually accomplished person has because they have no idea what it is like they don't understand how much money she would be making we talked about that earlier they don't know what a successful life is all they know is she sits around all day in a shitty apartment drinking boxed wine until her friend comes over uh who's somehow makes like uh, is less successful than her but is more knowledge about her than any ab about anything on the planet like they, they completely hate everything about themselves and when they get the opportunity to fix it all they don't fix anything that is the source of the problem mm -hmm. And it's entirely self empowerment. This is quintessentially yep. self insert. And it, oh, oh, God. And it, the, the awfulness doesn't even, uh, I, it goes so much further because she is incredibly vain, narcissistic, but also yeah. like shallow, where she is desperate to have a guy, but has to be the most shallow, good looking guy. She's not looking after anything deep, who she will just bang if they offer her some chips. Like, that's I remember how the doctor guy, the, doc the doctor guy doesn't even have a name. Uh, he's only ever referred to as the handsome doctor man, while also simultaneously condemning him for being vacuous. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah. The, 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 it's, she's, she's literally a, an example of the I'm a I'm the feminist and all the men but toxic masculinity things are bad while she is actually doing all those toxic things in reverse. You know, she's objectifying men, having the butt on the things, looking for you know guys just based on looks and, and all that stuff, getting into quick relationships and and not caring about. Ah, oh, she's awful on every level, and it just shows the hypocrisy of so many of these ideologies, right? They, they're not actually after proper equality. They just want to do all the bad things that uh, they feel were, has been done to them. I think it would be fair to say that this is the most sexist thing I've seen in a while. Like, the amount of hate and just uh, that fuels this whole show is incredible. <clears throat> It's a, it, yeah, it, it does it feel like a bit of a, it's a it's quite a spiteful show. Yeah, um, it is. It, it oozes with it. It oozes which, with resent and entitlement and uh, insecurity. It's just uh, overflowing with that. The best part is knowing that I hate this show and this character with everything in my soul. <laughs> Every aspect of it drips with hatred for She Hulk. And it pales in comparison to how much the writing women hate themselves. <laughs> yeah, and I think the thing is with uh, when they used to hire, you know, writers, you know, real writers, and you know, more specifically male writers, like ma guys would write characters like, you know, what traits do I find admirable in people that I could put in this character, or some it, traits I can find interest, I find interesting. And they used to, like, that's how you make a character that you like in this type of genre. And then you hire, and now they're hiring these female writers who can't write. <laughs> and it's, like, they follow, like, the, I think it's about culture that women are, we're, we're raised a little differently. I think we're more accustomed to writing characters who are just like us instead of just, a character it's always it's got well, like it was, 
like we have to write someone who's well i'm not gonna write someone better than me because that's just that would lower my self-esteem so i'm gonna write someone who's exactly <laughs> like me yeah they got if the if i'm shitty at writing law the person the character i write has to be shitty at law if i'm shitty at so like if i'm bad at something the character has to be bad at something but since i'm a narcissist they have to be praised for being for how shitty they are um what's that like i I'd say I'm, like, really not interested, I guess, in, like, comparison of, like, male or female writers and what they would tend to, like, write if we went by broad groups. I just think, like, the writing in this show sucks. Like, in this particular case, this show is just... Well, I, I was gonna like, say, pretty, the, the writer, is, I think, is the worst the right now. Is, Michael Waldron well, is still, like, pretty... Yeah, Michael active. Waldron is the worst. It's, like, he is, like, the worst writer, I think. Is he... Is he? Did he write She Hulk? Because the, no. whenever there's like a a, a whole an all female writing team, they're the ones who make a big deal out of it. Uh, like, isn't this great that it's all female writing team? And it should be like it just, that shouldn't matter. It should be just be, they're writers. Let's get, but they're like, no, it's it's better because they're all female. And so if they're the ones who go there, it's like, well, you know what that's implying? You've written a crap show. You're the one who said it's distinctive because of the all female writing class. Uh, sorry, writing crew. What are you actually saying then? If you're the one who is wanting to make the thing out of it, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. I just think that Michael was responsible for Loki and uh, multiverse he wrote of madness. Loki, not multiverse like, of madness. Yeah. There's no, and he's writing Secret Wars. Oh and that's yeah, absolutely. Be a this piece of shit. Well, like, that, yeah, that, that is the reality. reality. I would say, there's well, awful with men and women. I, yeah. Well, I think I think that like fundamentally the approach that is taken like in Marvel projects at the moment to write stories is just not conducive to like consistently writing good stories. Whatever I, I like whether it's I guess adverse objectives like narratively, you know, versus like what kind of story like, you know, p pursuing like telling a specific story with uh, thematic uh through lines versus like I guess, you know, projecting or self-inserting or whatever or like um the projects precede the ideas for the stories nobody talks to each other there are like mandates for the things that need to happen in these stories i mean even if you're like a really good writer i don't know how you survive the mcu unfortunately it seems like at this point it is like sort of this um cavalcade of of um people who just want to write their own story with very little regard for how well it's going to slot into this broader universe. And maybe even no consideration for what people after them are going to have to try and deal with, you know? Like, if you want to come in and write a story now, how the fuck are you going to deal with all of this shit? Well, and like, has been, has been think left here idiot, for if, you. if you went up to them and said, right, so you know the world you kind of created with Falcon the Winter Soldier's TV show, is that in the same world as She-Hulk with the whole fourth wall stuff? And then also the Multiverse mm -hmm. of Madness one where all the sorcerers are doing all kinds of things with the multiverse. This is all the same thing, right? I could totally see them being like so lost at this point. They'd be like, "Yes." I don't think that they could give you a good answer. Which you know, like this is your no job, and you got paid a lot of money for it. Like to not, you know. And I get the impression, like, yeah, you can't. It's it's like when you see in interviews where they say, like, "Oh, I think that's what happened," or "Yeah, I'm pretty sure." It's like you're pretty sure. You don't know. You don't know for sure. You don't know, like, writer, god universe. of that universe. Yeah, you don't know. The reason why that's so funny is like I'm asking if there's continuity between your sequels, and it's like. Pretty sure there is. <laughs> like, I'm pretty I'm... sure there is, but but who cares? Like you can, it's it's like the fun thing with the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that you have a bunch of these crazy characters. It's like, well, ideally, the cool part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that you're leveraging the advantage of of long form storytelling in a format that has more focused resources. Like you get to do what television does, but with way more money than television gets. And now that you have like films and television, best of both worlds, right? But nobody talks to each other, and nobody cares. And it's so lame because you got so much money. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. All of yeah. this and, and it produces project. just this tier of content. They could have been making so, so much more careless. money. They could be. Um, they they really could be. Uh, and I, I mean, we we've, we've seen it, right? Like the reception to Phase Four has not been good, and that is known because like Phase Four was meant to continue past Black Panther two. But they cut it off and now like there's this multiverse saga that even that's starting to like projects are getting delayed like blade isn't even like i don't even know if that's like if that's still coming out um like projects keep getting shifted back because it's like whatever whatever process you thought you had to make this work is not working and i think they realized that it's not working what kind of changes that would actually manifest in who knows i don't really expect no, like the writing no. to improve um no. because i don't i think that there is 
writing is just not valued as much as it should be uh, at the moment. I think that a lot mm -hmm. of other aspects of like filmmaking are respected, like cinematography, acting, um, like uh, comp uh, like yeah, music composition, um, like a lot of the other aspects of it. Uh, are, are, like there's recognized good and bad, but like for some reason with writing, it gets like a lot. I don't know. People just don't value it as much. Um, this is They'll the consequence of that attitude. Yeah, they they will continue to write poorly just about different things than they would have. Well, and and of, and of course, like um, it it's maybe it's it's sustainable for a while, but yeah, I guess it remains somewhat sustainable if the if the way that these projects are responded to remains as it has been for a while, which is everybody watches it and thinks it's great, and then give them a couple of months and they turn on it. I guess this is kind of a turning point, right? Because Thor was not received well as soon as it came out. And of course, She-Hulk as well has not been received well as it comes out. I guess Black Panther 2 might be like sort of a litmus test for whether that's going to be a trend or if, if like it was only going to occur this time around. I don't know. Like, um, maybe it's just a matter of complacency, right? Your Marvel. Everybody will watch your Marvel stuff. If that's assumed, there's not much pressure on you to be trying to do new things or be innovative in the way that the Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of used to be, at least like conceptually. You know, Marvel Cinematic Universe was like a unique and original idea at the time. It wasn't a sure thing. But now that it is, and it's just a consistent stream of content to be delivered for Disney+, Plus, like, to make sure that people are constantly engaged, talking about it on social media, and, like, retained in that, in that like, network of content, then, you know, it, it just continues. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. I don't really disagree with you. And that's how I base apologies. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's She-Hulk, unless there's anything else in closing people want to add to that, because there's so much yeah, to say. It's terrible. It's horrible. The destruction's complete, and I'm yeah. getting well, pretty numb to it, thank goodness. Where does it sit, if we were to try and figure out, like, in, in this particular phase, where I think it's does similar it similar to Loki, I, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I think it has to I think, be. Yeah. I think the finale was probably the thing to push in that direction, for sure. I think it's sure. worse yeah. than Loki, because there's just uh, so much pointless episodes that are such crap that... It, all right, all right. What's worse, to utterly not caring about something because it's so pointless, or something that's really bad that enrages you? Um, I, I guess the thing is, it's like it's worth not underestimating how much damage Loki does to absolutely everything. So we've this. just covered, right? Well, no, that's what I'm saying, right? No. That's fresh that's in our think mind. It's, um, I think it's on par with Loki. It has to be. If it, it kind of breaks the it, same thing. And then, and then uh, I might the be able to way. inch She Hulk I, I, I as feel worse the ex because there's more I things she in it that are bad. Yeah, I feel She Hulk's be worse close. because they, they fail execution so, so much. Like, just this, look at the CGI it is atrociously bad. But it's so like Loki was bad, right? But I, I was still watching it without thinking, oh, this is utterly, uh, like, completely pointless. And that's my, my impression with She Hulk. I was just like, what is even the point of anything I, happening here? I think I agree, right? Like, at the end of She-Hulk, what was achieved? It's like, I don't know, really. <laughs> like, no, the, yeah, and the show didn't oh. know. And the biggest thing I think we could take away from it was the final message of the show, and the main character contradicts it in her old journey. So... Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, right? Character theme, plot, and world is all pretty catastrophic in this show, too. Yeah. Um... I was not expecting it to be co competitive with, like, Loki and Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> when it started at, at the very least right and at least loki took itself seriously and ended up ruining everything i don't even think the show that no one took like the show isn't a serious show but they then crap on everything and ruin everything because they're not taking it seriously they don't care about the consequences of the implications I guess that's the question, right? oh, is, oh um, also loki had a uh, classic loki in it it did have uh yes richard e grant uh loki well, well I mean, I guess that. I guess then really it's because multiverse is like like right at the bottom. I guess if we're comparing to everything, not just the shows. Yeah. How yeah. Me, it, how do how do you think uh She Hulk compares to like multiverse? Uh, to me it's worse. Um I I'm still it's... I'm gonna make I think multiverse of Manus has to be the, the grim bottom of the barrel, even with I think the so breaches too. that yeah. we've had because he wrote yeah. it within its own universal rules to just have everything destroy itself with all the different things he said. It's so... I have a video <laughs> that tries to explain <laughs> just how poorly written that film is. It blows my mind. It's so bad. So, 
It's going to be hard so, to be convinced that anything is worse than Multiverse of Madness at this point. Are we saying <laughs> that, so She-Hulk is a 1 out of 10? Pretty much for say? me, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think after that finale, it's basically yeah. there. Yeah. Make sure that I think the, the finale, finale really, does lower yeah. it to a 1 out of 10. The finale was the thing that kind of ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah, like in Loki, it's, like it's a show where it nothing works and it and it has errors that are that grievous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess in terms of uh, but how do people feel about it? I guess when it comes to just their emotional response to it, <laughs> Overall, oh, where would it sit by that metric? Well, enough, I still don't think I was made as angry by watching Shield as I was with Falcon the Winter Soldier. I'm curious if anything has made me as angry as Falcon the Winter Soldier did. It Falcon really pissed me and off. The Winter that Soldier, one. yeah, and it might be because think... my investment in the MCU was still. You know, intact, some it, somewhat intact. Yeah, at that point. Well, that was before. That was before uh, Loki and Black Widow would come out, right? We only had one division as a uh, yes, as which was still wonky, like, but what? still, yeah. Well, you know, quite interestingly, wonky. I wonder if it's affecting my uh, scale because look, look, the it, Marvel's M sorry, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been right almost dead for me for a while because of how bad they were, but so much things and. Uh, but there were still some properties that I thought maybe there's a slight hope it could might not be awful, right? Mm -hmm. She Hulk, like I felt, could have had dream. potential. Yeah, it could have had potential, and it's destroyed it now. It is like this has killed the MCU for me in such a complete way. Like Wakanda Forever coming out, I could not care less. Uh, like I really don't want to watch that film. Yeah. The MCU left is, is Guardians dead. Three. Guardians and whatever happens with Spider Man, we'll see. Um, yeah, and who knows what happens? Because there. like I have no hope for Blade. That's not happening. In a good not way. anymore. No, I, no. I can only uh, hope that it's funny. Well, I mean, yeah. You look to the future, right? It's like Black Panther two. It's like, well, it's going to introduce an underwater kingdom that was there the whole time and didn't get involved in anything. That's going to be a tough one to. We're finishing get Phase by. Four with this movie. It's so weird. It is bizarre, because it wasn't the plan originally. Um, like, Fantastic Four was meant to be part of this phase, now it's in phase six. <laughs> you know, like, something's something's gone awry. And I guess, yeah, like, looking towards- I mean, for me, I'll probably- like, Daredevil, I guess, I wonder what's gonna happen. But I'm not optimistic. It's gonna be so weird when we're like, which do you think was better, uh, phase 13 or 17? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Gosh, I have no hope for the X-Men coming in. I, I don't know when they'll come in either. Well, Gosh. that's a while away, but I mean... Deadpool with oh, Wolverine. Deadpool, right? Deadpool 3. I, well, I will have some level of investment in that, naturally, but I'm scared. It's on life support. It's on li like they managed to just get a slight heartbeat by bringing back Hugh Jackman, but it's like... <laughs> I just... Yeah. It's but just I mean, funny that's because where the, the MC big was at now, right? The big weight that tied Lo uh, Logan was the it was the last before was both those legacy characters from those great actors that it's just like not mm. really though. And I know nah, that everybody, nobody's like, ever really different gone. different universe, baby. And it's like nobody knew what the fucking universe was in Fox anyway. It was much more yeah. of a meta comment. And here it's going to be even more confusing. But I mean, that's kind of shows like the nature of our. Uh... I mean, DC, well, I guess we don't know yet until what we see, like, next year, but, like, Marvel is very much now in the era of milking nostalgia for stuff they didn't even, like, Marvel Studios weren't even involved in, um, like, and other universes that have nothing to do with them. It's kind of, it's kind of fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sad. <laughs> don't be. Are you, uh, Shad, you check sad. it out, Wakanda Forever? You gonna go see it? Who, me? Yeah, review it for Night's Watch, I assume. I don't want to, but I I will f just for the sake of the review and also to talk about anyone else who's reviewing it and just to... It's a job now for, in that regard and, uh, oh man, yeah, so... I know I'll that force feel. Myself. <laughs> um, well, uh, I feel like that about does it. I think so. I don't know if I could take any more. Like you're at, my, I'm at my limit. It is amazing. My brain so, is at its limit. It needs to rest. So, uh, EFAP is a legendarily long show. Uh -huh. Yeah, well. And yeah. you guys take, uh, you guys go through some, you know, like hour and a half, two hour movies, two and a half hour movies, and it could take 12 hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's three can. episodes it of She Hulk. And, it, and you just, there's just not much to say. It's <laughs> just not interesting 
Well, now that we've so said everything, so, so, we've <laughs> also, seven hours uh, or whatever. The show, the episodes are very short on She-Hulk. They're like what twenty oh, minutes. At yeah, the they're most, kind of twenty minutes. Less. You cut out the intros, God, intros and fluff, and still you still nothing. Ready. They're still empty. <laughs> I mean, it's episode seven true. was empty as fuck, but I think when they literally climbed out of their own universe, there was something to talk about. <laughs> <You know? sighs> oh, God, I hate it. Yeah. Um, I, just, I can't summarize it more than I just fucking hate this show. Yeah, I think from here, since we're nearing seven hours, I'm going to have to say that we'll, uh, we'll have to sort out once again. We're going to sort the Super Chats out, me, uh, yeah. Rags and Free, in some form of a catch-up. With, those are still releasing and coming out. It's just obviously, if you're a fan of EFAP right now, you've been you've been running out of time to be able to watch all this stuff. We just been, been firing. How much up. coverage, guys? The scorn, the scorn EFAP just came out. It's over there if you want to go see it. <laughs> we just break down the scorn. Uh, meanwhile, I'm trying to get all the catch-ups out and record them. I and me, Rags, Fringy, and many others, including possibly people here, recorded our Halloween arc for next year already. That was um. That's right. That was a bit old, bit of fun. You guys can speculate on what franchise that may be. I feel like that's more fun than telling you. And then, but you know, give it a few months. I probably will just accidentally say it. You never. Know? It's a it's a horror franchise for sure. And I say this as if you got not got the hype of the fourth Final Destination movie coming out a week from now or a week from yesterday. Um, by the way, Final Destination three that was so close. I I got it out just in time, and four is still giving me some trouble as well. So I'm trying to. We got some suggestions here. Scary movie, Freddy, Halloween, Resident Medieval. <laughs> Resident Medieval, I think you might have made a mistake there. Piranha Resident Double Medieval? D. You gave it away. That was the one. Resident Medieval. Damn it. What? There's no... Or Medieval, the video game with the skeleton man. Hmm. Ah, yes. The Trinity of Wenches. Oh, God. That's a good <laughs> reference. I like it. Piranha Double D, the greatest horror movie of all time. Oh, yeah. I think, I feel like, I'm pretty sure Rags mentioned that so, at some stage. It's so good. It was, it was yeah. there's like, there's Piranha, Python, Anaconda. There's probably like mech versions of each Shock one of them. I, yeah. Exactly. No, but see, Shock Piranha, Nado. Piranha Double D was, was pure. 72 <laughs> minutes and it knew exactly what it was. And it was fantastic. It was so much fun to watch. Um. So yeah, what I want to start doing is... Even a big old spotlight for a moment on our our guests for the day. So we'll just go one by one, and we'll start with why not, Mister Rakita Law, Mister Lawyer, Mister I only watch shows to hate on them. Who who exactly <laughs> forced you to watch She Hulk? Why did you do it if you hate it so much, asshole? You, oh. it's you. I learned it <laughs> oh, from <mother>. watching you. <laughs> I learned it from oh, you. No. <laughs> I'm so sad, dude. Uh... No, despite all of the intense suffering of sitting there watching this show, it is actually a lot of fun to talk to you guys about it uh, and huh. and to tell people just how fucking terrible it was. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm Ricada Law, recently banned and unbanned from YouTube, and oh, I yeah. finally just got off my suspension yesterday, so I can actually post content now. I'm really happy Yay. about that. I imagine your fans are ecstatic about you coming back, but you've got uh, yes. backup plans, right? In case this is to happen yeah. again and stuff. Um, well, your, and, and your streams are taking off on Rumble. Like, holy crap, dude. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to say. I mean, it's not really a backup plan anymore. It's the, it's the real plan. YouTube is not going to be my streaming platform. Uh, I've been streaming to five-digit streams rather frequently on Rumble and uh, plan to make oh, that hey. bigger. So um, if you want to follow me, you can, the best place to do it though, is ricadalaw.locals.com. And then that's where I announce every stream and guest appearance and, and everything. And I have a 24 seven live chat going where the community can hang out, but they also can talk about whatever, uh, whatever I'm participating in because I'm the most, most important thing, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Uh, so you can also, you can of course follow me on YouTube. I will still be posting content on there, but my live streams are on rumble and Odyssey, and, uh, it's, it's a blast. We have a ton of fun. Wow. Um, yeah. And, uh, I was going to say like, you've been a riot avenue on. We, I still regret how oh. long it took us to get you on, but I'm very glad we brought you on for something law related. We got plenty of law insight yeah. from you as well as just, I, I, yeah, that was really great to company. get good stuff. Thank you. Uh, one, one more thing. I do have to give a shout out, of course, to my companion in pain and suffering. Uh, the real Lady Rackets, my wife, 
suffered through every episode of this with me. You can tell her every I said single... sorry about that if you want. <laughs> the chat right now. So she's been watching and listening. But uh, yeah, so she she sat there. Uh, her my favorite line she said was, "Watching this show makes me embarrassed to be a woman." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm this, sorry this, on behalf this, of all women. <laughs> this show made me proud to be a misogynist. Yeah. It had the, it had the opposite effect. For it has solidified who, uh, my position. Uh, for anybody who wants to check her out, too, she is just starting a YouTube channel and uh, she's doing really well. She's got 11,000 subscribers. It's the real Lady Rackets on YouTube. So, uh, completely different content from mine, but uh, I like the heck out of her. So, go give her yeah. a check. Uh, Jay Longbone, always wonderful to have you here as part of our little selection. You were obviously here to defend She-Hulk. I think you did a decent job of it, but I'm gonna have to say we weren't very convinced. Um, so people can find you on your channel to, making reviews that are very positive about it, right? That's what you're up to, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I um, I I want to marry this show. It's so <laughs> fabulous. Um, I think the big thing that people need to know about, if we haven't told them already, the the Gotham High readings are all completed, right? You released the last yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, finally. Fucking, are you gonna make like a supercut of them all together, or are you just gonna let people figure that out with the parts? You know, some humans are just not capable, as we've seen from this show. No, we're gonna make a full version. It's gonna be like over two hours because which is a uh, shit each, well, ton of editing. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually, uh, most of them are like twenty minutes, but uh, the last two are like four well, one is 40 minutes and one is over 30 so yeah it's gonna be about two hours it's gonna be a pill i don't think it's gonna be that hard to really edit because i'm just gonna connect them and make sure they're make sure it's cohesive that's about it but yeah that's out uh i still have more chi hulk reactions to release because i did <laughs> i did a one through four and then the finale made me stop and just do a video on that because it was so horrible. Yeah. But I still have, yeah, I still have five, uh, five, seven, uh, five, seven, and eight coming out. Six, I'm going to kind of do like a quick summary of in episode seven because I didn't really get that. That episode was nothing to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got that. And I might, I might have a better, uh, like, a, like a actual review of She Hulk that I might work on. Uh, my thoughts will be a lot well uh, better thought out than it were that they were today. <laughs> oh, I was yeah, that's the way it works with videos, but um, yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see, and of course, more collaborations both on our end and your end for up to right movies being watched, reviews, reactions, what not, plenty to be excited about. World of the internet, especially if they bring up more shows like this. Yeah. That's inevitable. Mm -hmm. Um. All righty then. Uh, Nutsa. Hey, cool to have you back to talk <laughs> about these awesome things that are happening with the world. What are you? Uh, what are you up to? What you? What's what's going on your channel? Why should people subscribe? <laughs> so much for talking. Oh my god. <laughs> Ever since She Hulk walked out of the writing room, my brain was like, eh, no, 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 we're not doing. That. I'm awake, but my brain is gone. Um, anyway. So that I... summarizes the channel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, sometimes I get drunk, I get bored, I spit out a verbal diarrhea onto a page, and then somehow, by the time I sober up, the video is up on my YouTube channel. So if you want to see it, see stuff, I guess. Hmm. You can check my channel out, I guess. <laughs> What's your latest video? What's it about? Um, my latest video. Mm. Well, I'm working on a video that's gonna probably come out next week that I don't even have a name for, so <laughs> it's you know, let's I don't even it. think about names for videos until they're like uploading. <laughs> oh yeah. That's... The names are the hardest part. The names of the thumbnails yeah. deceptively difficult. Oh yeah. Well, um, it's pretty vague, so I don't think I can describe it, so let's leave it as a mystery. It's gonna be up next week, basically, and I'm going to make a video about- I've made a, a video about feminist Hollywood before, and I'm probably gonna m make 
Uh, ne- the second one, the next month, I'm planning to. And She Hulk is going to be featured. Definitely. <laughs> oh, wow. It earned the spot, eh? Yeah. <laughs> what an upgrade. Well, yeah. Um, the links for all those channels are in the description. You should check them all out. Uh, Mr. Shadowversity, how you doing there, sir? I'm good, mate. How are you guys? <laughs> it's just funny because I'll be like, give it a few hours, I'll be back again reviewing a different TV show with Shad. And hopefully, we won't we'll be, be as upset yeah, this time course, around. Yeah. We'll uh, be hanging out talking about uh, House of the Dragon. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, We've done it now. Rings uh, and She-Hulk are done. They're dead. They're buried. <laughs> yes. <Come on. laughs> um, hey, guys. Guys, check it out. Get look. Have a look at how the graphic novel is going. <gasps> we have... We're up to 362,000 on this wow. bad boy. That's great like, British pounds. Good God. That, wow. That's, that's, that's how phenomenal is that, right? Hell yeah. That's fantastic, that man. Congrats. That's the, so that's the US amount. Um, so it looks really nice when it's converted into the Australian dollar he does. Um, but now I'm, I'm, I mean, it has made me so friggin' excited. Uh, with the success of this one, Volume two is going to be so big and insane and like just awesome, awesome, right? Uh, I don't have to hold back anything. Uh, and of course, Enemy Self is great, but now with the volume two, we can do bigger. Uh, it's going to have uh, like we can dedicate full page spreads and things. Not only that, I've got new projects that I'm working on to develop in graphic novel format as well. I, I did like a five hour stream on Night's Watch, breaking down my plan of attack on making a new Star Wars, essentially. Mm. And the excitement that that has gained has really surprised me. People are really on board with that. And now I'm just wondering, all right, let's see where, where we can push this um, graphic novel to. I think we might be able to hit 400K, uh, and that's just crazy. So everyone, grab a copy if you haven't already. Uh, t- seriously, this is better than what Marvel and DC are making. It's got better art, better coloring. I think I'm a little biased when I say I think the story is not bad, uh, but uh, there's a lot of lot of reviews that uh, kind of confirm that. And so it's a great entry point for the story. And even if you have got the book, man, graphic novels are awesome. Like, like the visual aspect is so great. It's another way to enjoy it. So do grab it if you haven't already, and we can really, really push this thing far, which is just awesome, man. Oh, yeah. No, I've already got you linked up in the description. Oh, uh, it'll legend. It'll be on the as well. Just congratulations, man job thanks big accomplishment yeah very cool i'm excited like i said all all the profits uh, i'm like i'm blessed enough that you know uh, my life is covered i don't need to live off of the money that's made on this so i'm reinvesting all of it i'm just going to be using it to make more content good content because i think there is a way for us to push back against this crap and that's by making our own independent media that is better than what this sludge Disney is making and uh, and the mainstream and so begins here. Yeah, and uh, who knows what you'll be generating in the future then, judging from those ideas. You'll be expecting well, a whole shad universe, yeah. perhaps. That's what I want. I, my full intent is to expand this, right? So the space opera uh, that's kind of based on Star Wars. My intention after I get those graphic novels out is to expand it, get other writers on board to write their own stories in this universe, and just expand it outwards. I'm going to use the graphic novels that I uh, um, oversee as the primary kind of core story, and after they're done, I'm going to be trying to you know, find studios and see about the possibility of turning them into film. I, I'm I'm committed. I want to really go all the way with this stuff. So. Oh yeah. It's awesome. Well, hey, I heard you guys referring to it as the Iron Age, so you'll be curious. That's, we that's, enter... the, that's the tag. I wonder what will be happening could... when we hit the Golden Age. <laughs> Who knows? I love it. Who knows, man? Uh, seriously, the thing is, though, right, the, the market is still there. The people who love comic books are still there. They haven't been buying Marvel and DC because they've been making utter crap. And the success of like this graphic novel, then you see Eric July and all these other people making great comic books and stuff. Uh, and so Eric July with the Ripperverse shows that people are still hungry for this medium. They love comic books still. They just want good stuff. And when they're offered it, look at the success of it. It's amazing. And so yeah, because you DC um, and Marvel. It's you Ripper. Uh... 
Clownfish, right? Um, Clownfish have made their own book. Um, and then Razor Fist has his kind of pulp novel, which is doing really, really well. Then, of course, you got uh, Will Jordan, er, uh, um, Critical Jink. Yeah, guys, have you seen yeah. his Kickstarter? Like, holy crap. And Dude, it again, blew up while we do an open bar. It went from like 3K to 300K <laughs> or something stupid. It's like, you just see, you see. That's insane. <laughs> But again, it shows you how hungry people are for good content still and how willing yeah, they are they to they back it. Like The market is there. Yeah, the, and yeah. so it's just waiting for people to offer them what they want. And it's like, we can do it. Let's do it. The fans are ready. Uh, mm -hmm. Disney has primed them. <laughs> like they've got them ready for <laughs> yes. this stuff, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and as for your, your channel, you've got your main channel still talking about swords, armor, and that. And then Absolutely. you've got your Night's Watch, which. To be fair, at this point, is uh, I wouldn't hope I'm not hoping to insult, but it's similar to EFAB, right? We got uh, all a little bit. I like down. I focus deep dive reviews and breakdowns very much in kind of the spirit of EFAB. Um, and so you'll find generally more longer form content on Night's Watch. And one of the things that I love about Night's Watch, and this is my intent in going into it, it wasn't going to be like Shadowversity number two. No, this is a dedicated channel that I'm devoting as much time into yeah. Shadowversity, my main channels. Uh, and its growth has been great. The, uh, the, um, uh, the fan base has been growing there and it's its own kind of fan base. And I've abandoned Shadowversity. I put out a uh, really fun video on the medieval war wagon just the other day and uh and <laughs> I, I don't know how but anyway i'm managing <laughs> it's all <laughs> the content's still flowing so no it's just uh. it's great news and like i said links all available uh rags free was there anything you guys wanted to mention i already know the answer technically but i was just going to prompt you for it instead rags <laughs> um two things mm -hmm. one as I've said, I do have a plushie campaign that is out. I'd love for you guys to take a look at it. It should be the top link in the description. And uh, Thunder has been very kindly putting it in the chat during uh, this episode. But please go over there. Take a look. They did a really I, great job with that, it. it. Seriously, is, that's one of the best plushies I've seen, Rags. Though. They do that great. Is, that is, is awesome, man. They, um, it took a little bit to get mine done, but... I think it really shows. It's distinctly different enough from the first one, and and, and it's enough to be its own thing, like the the posing and everything. And they they just do a really really good job. And of course, Smaller and Fringy's plushes, uh, their campaign is over, so those will get shipped out. Uh, I'm looks to be soonish. Pretty I'm not even soon. Sure. Pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty soonish. But of course, and with mine, it helps us a great deal for you guys to pick those up. I appreciate every single one. And, you know, just take a look about it. Take a look at it. Think about it. I think there's a, about two weeks left on the campaign. Yes. And it is gone. After that is done, it is out of here and it will never return. Uh, the second thing is that uh, after this, I'm sleeping because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. But the plan is to tomorrow and if not tomorrow, Monday, because I want to kind of hit around the noonish to two-ish sort of sort of efapish uh uh time i will have a video out on the rags channel it's looking to be two and a half hours it's pretty much finished i got the copyright cleared on it as far as i know you know how tis me though could those can be but it should be finished so look for it either tomorrow or um on da -da 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 monday all right. And then hopefully another one shortly after that. So, I uh, yeah, that's what I've got going on. That's the haps. Um, what about you, Fringy? Uh, I don't have anything right now. I'm just working away on the next big work project. Um, yep. Yeah, and then as for myself, you can catch me tomorrow with Gary and, well, and Fringy, I think. Uh, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Shad. We're going to be talking about the finale <laughs> for House of the Dragon, and uh, there's plans to do a season oh. coverage of sorts next week on EFAP for House of the Dragon. We thought, you know I what? So, I, I'm Hold just on, worried. Man. I'm so hope they don't screw this up. <laughs> like, the ending of last episode has made me worried, guys. Sorry to yeah, cut off. Good job. So, uh, luckily... I'm glad there's a show that I look forwards to watching. Yes. Um, as for Dad of Boy, people wondering when I'm going to stream more of that. Um, I was going to yesterday, and then uh, I had an opportunity to go see Black Adam. I was like, oh yeah, I guess I could. And then I ended up <laughs> hacking out with people a little longer than I expected. And that film wasn't painful. 
I was like, okay, you know, and, and, yeah, and I'll I was probably like, check it out in the next couple of days. So uh, you might see coverage for that at some point too. Unclear right now. I mean, at the very least, we'll probably discuss casually on like uh, Real BBC or whatever, which you can expect on Tuesday. But um, yeah, and we are we are just crazy far ahead on EFAB episodes right now. If anyone keeps track of the rate that we're supposed to be putting these out, we we just had so many topics, so many things to do. Um, and of course, the EFAP movies are still pumping out too. It's just it's been a hectic past month yeah. and a half, maybe two, uh, for EFAP. We're trying to get everything in order, and we shall. So don't worry about it. Um, but that yes, it's kind of cool. We managed to get all of Rings of Power covered, all of She-Hulk covered. We've even thrown in some extra bits here and there. For those who didn't know, like I said, the Scorn EFAP is out there. It's uh, me, Metal, and Rags talking about completing the game and what we thought of it. Yes. Yep. Um, I, we talked about Scorn has really uh, yeah. interested me, and so I didn't even know you guys covered that. I'm totally going to check Dad, it out. I'm going to be honest with you. Scorn. Please don't spend your money and just listen to that podcast. Yes, do not <laughs> spend your money. I, I'm not kidding when I say that the game can be completed sooner than our EFAP about it can finish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> and it is a three hour EFAP, so. Yes. People were saying, it like, wow, right. short, bad, bad. It's, a lot, it's, it's shorter than the actual thing. And I was like, I don't think they caught the fact that you could beat this game in, like, an hour if you really wanted to. I mean, we, the the <laughs> wow. fact that we were using, uh, I think Shiroku was the guy's name. We were playing his long play of it. His long play was, like, two hours and 47 minutes for the whole thing. Yeah, which, that's not a speed run. That's playing the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you, if you have, I will say, Shad, if you have Game Pass, it is on Game Pass. If you're just Oh, that. hey, okay to play it which you shouldn't be but i, I don't blame you well I, I it's funny i wasn't interested in playing but what interests me about it was actually the visual uh style that they did with it i found that really oh, yeah, intriguing yeah. definitely draw. Uh, very mm -hmm. good visuals very mm. interesting visuals that is certainly something that it has Isn't does it have a good story to justify it or do uh, you don't spoil it don't spoil it for uh, breath uh, uh, all right, I'll watch. I'll watch your coverage. Yeah, know. I'd be curious to know what your thoughts on the story are as we explain it to you uh, in the yeah. stream. Because we make sure to do it piece by piece, so you can understand it perfectly. All the awesome. choice. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So obviously, thank you all so much for joining us, uh, Castaru. Like I said, links all in the description for these guys' channels. Fully recommend. Check them out. You'll you'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll experience. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us. Um, and thank you, chat, for your generous donations, of which shall be accounted for. Everything will be. I'm saving it all. Don't worry. And we get all sessions. To fill up, fill up. Um, and, of course, your very interesting interactions and keeping us company. Appreciate it. So, until next time, and I say that because I genuinely don't know if it's going to be in the form of possibly a mini getting released or the final destination. The final destination. That's the next one we're covering. And... All the comments are like, wow, they thought the third one was the worst. It's like, yes, don't worry. We're about to watch the fourth one. <laughs> you guys will be in for some laughs with that one. Yeah, and then you'll see us again on Saturday, more than likely, for an update on whatever the hell else is happening, because in a week's time, we'll probably have figured some more of it out. But anyway, thank you all so much. Have yourselves a fine evening. We shall see you next time. Yeah, ah. goodbye, everyone. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. 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 Oh my goodness. Yeah, I told you how. <laughs>